Sega. All right, let's do it. So this is, of course, the Sega CD version. Um, the only version, I believe, that's officially released in the West with English, VA, and everything. Uh, let's do it. A cyberpunk adventure. This intro is the best. Lucifer Alpha, a powerful biological weapon under secret development there, is released into the atmosphere, creating a deadly biohazard. Carried by the trade winds, Lucifer Alpha spreads throughout Eastern Europe and Eurasia, destroying 80% of the populace. Half of the world's people die. The greatest biohazard in history later becomes known simply as the Catastrophe. But at this time, who could have possibly imagined that the ultimate biohazard wouldn't occur for another half century? Fifty years later, mankind faces its greatest crisis. The appearance of a mysterious android life form. Its purpose and origin are unknown. Is it a new form of weapon? Or perhaps an invasion from some other world? They appear during winter, killing humans and infiltrating society by taking the place of their victims. Employing an artificial skin, they can sweat and even bleed. Part organic, part machine, they're almost impossible to distinguish from those they kill. As they steal their victims' bodies in order to take their place, these mysterious invaders become known as Snatchers. The cheese, so delicious. <laughs> Colonel, with the five gifted subs, thank you. Japan.
how's work? Everything okay? Mm. Gillian, what is it? What's wrong? Jamie, I've become a junker. A junker? Gillian, but why? Jamie, you know why. It's the only way we can regain our lost memories. Snatcher is the only word that keeps coming back every time we try to remember our past. I have to face them to find out why. Yes, but I can sense that there is something terrible hidden in our past. And if we remember it, it will destroy us. <laughs> Jamie! Oh, shit! I'm going now. Jamie! What? I can't hear you! What? You're breaking up, Jamie! Gotta go! Peace! This next part is the best. This transition. Gillian Seed. Estimated age, 31. Oh! Three years ago, he and his wife, Jamie Seed, are taken into protective custody in the Siberian neutral zone by the 17th Siberian Investigative Force. Both Gillian and Jamie suffer from severe amnesia. Their memories of events prior to being picked up in Siberia lost in a mysterious mental fog. Two years ago, after a vain attempt to rebuild their marriage, Jamie and Gillian separate. Following extensive special military training, Gillian is ordered to report to Neo Kobe City as a junker, effective today. All right. Intros don't get much better than that, I don't think. Konami Omni Building, Junker Headquarters. Gramaj, thank you for the five gifted subs. Act one, snatch. Um, guys, should I turn down? Should I turn down the game audio a little bit? Is it drowning out my voice a bit? Because I'd like to be a little bit louder than the game. Just a bit, okay. Okay, hopefully that's a little bit better. We good? We good? Sub alerts are a bit loud. We good? We good? Okay. All right, just give me a sec. Game audio is still drowning me out. Yeah. I could turn it down a little bit more. I do want to be louder than the game. It's okay. It's okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. Hold on. Now, before we get into this, let me just thank some people again. Ramaj with the five gifted subs. Uh, Colonel with the five gifted subs. Monkey Mafia. Thank you for gifting a sub to KDL. Mortal Max with the 17. I think that was probably during DRK's stream. So I think we're probably good to go. All right. <laughs> Snatcher, more like Kojima snatched Blade Runner and made a copy. And Terminator. Yeah, like this game is a huge Terminator and... Blade Runner ripoff. But it has its own charms as well. Like, e even during the opening scene, you can see uh, What's His Face's pyramid from Blade Runner. Like, it's pretty much the exact same. <laughs> uh, the Slam Hammer, thank you for the five gifted subs. Cheers. Yeah, it's kind of like Terminator meets, meets Blade Runner. Uh, let's see. 
all these gifted subs. Thanks a lot, guys. Tyrell, that's the name I was looking for. Uh, let's see. Mika, only authorized personnel are allowed beyond this point. I'm Gillian Seed. I've been assigned to Junker Headquarters effective today. Oh, you're Mr. Seed. Please forgive me. My name is Mika Slayton. I'm the administrative assistant and operator here at Junker Headquarters. Very pleased to meet you. Uh, let's see. I've been assigned to Junker Operations effective today. You just told me that, Gillian. I have a pretty good memory, Mr. Seed, especially if it's concerning an, an attractive man like you. Could you tell me a little about Junker Operations? The Junkers are a special task force put together to combat the Bioroid Snatcher Menace. It's overseen by government intelligence agencies. This is my first time in town. Oh, you'll get used to it right away. Everybody's pretty welcome. There are many different ethnic groups and types of people here. It's Japan, but it's not Japan, if you know what I mean. Tell me a little bit about yourself. About me? Isn't that a bit forward, Mr. Seed? Let me tell you about myself first. Maybe then you'll tell me. I can tell you're very smooth with the ladies. Mr. Seed? Gillian's fine. You can call me Gillian, Mika. Okay, Gillian. I'll open the main door and show you around headquarters. Ooh. Okay, Mika. Where shall I show you first? Um... You might recognize Gillian Seed's outfit. In MGS4, you know, Act 3 in MGS4. Snake is doing his best uh, Gillian Seed cosplay. And obviously in this, he's supposed to uh, look a lot like Deckard as well from Blade Runner. Uh, let's see... Let's check out the engineering oh, room. Oh, that's right. The Chief told me to bring you down as soon as you showed up. The Chief? Yes, our big boss here at Junker Headquarters. That's his office right over there. Chief Cunningham, Gillian Seed is here. I brought him in as you requested. Thanks for coming, Seed. I'm Benson Cunningham, the Chief of Junker Operations. Gillian Seed, I've been transferred here from the 17th Special Forces Division. I've heard all about your special training in the military, Seed. I hope you'll put it to good use on your new assignment here. By the way, I understand you're suffering from amnesia. Any sign yet that your memory's coming back? I'm afraid not. I still can't remember a thing from before the army picked me up three years ago. You're married, aren't you? Yes, but we're separated now. She has amnesia as well, and without any memories between the two of us, I'm afraid there was very little to base a good relationship on. I can see your point there. <laughs> I can see your point there, Seed. Those junkers, Seed. Seed. Uh, hold on. I love this guy's voice. Let's see. Junker headquarters was set up a year ago by the police as a special task force to combat the snatcher problem. Junker operations were officially started in August of this year. We answered directly to the government's intelligence agencies. Uh, Junker's authority? Sure. A Junker operates with certain rules and privileges different from regular police officers. Those are... I love the couch as well, the banana couch. The purpose of the Junker force is to eliminate bioroid snatchers. Two, a Junker, even in the course of carrying out one, must not harm innocent civilians. Three, a subject may not be physically investigated or restrained unless irrefutable evidence exists that indicates the subject is indeed a snatcher. Four, a Junker is required to assist and support civilian bounty hunters. In order to carry out one, a Junker is allowed the use of a blaster and a navigator and a turbo cycle. Those are the five rules. Okay, what about a uh, Junker's duties? A 
Junker's job is to figure out who the Snatchers are and to eliminate them. I want you to put your special training in the military to good use and investigate those points about Snatchers that we don't yet understand. We've got to put a stop to them. A Junker's job is highly specialized and extremely dangerous. That's why there are so few of us. XO Chaos with the 11 months, thank you. I'm the chief, Harry's the engineer, then there's Mika. Gibson and you are our are, are runners. It's just the five of us. Yes, three years ago, the Snatchers suddenly appeared here in Neokobe. We have no idea where they come from or what they want. We do know that they kill, copy the appearance of their victims, and take their place in society, and that their numbers are increasing. That should be enough to make your duties as a Junker quite clear. This is your Junker ID card. It will identify you as a Junker. Carrying it allows you to exercise your special authority. I see. Sort of like a police officer's badge, huh? And, uh, here's some money. It's not much, but you'll need it to carry out your investigation. Cash? Credit cards aren't accepted in some regions of the city. You'll need this sooner or later. Sounds like it's a rough place out there. Go see Harry, the engineer. He's got your equipment ready for you. Let's pay a visit to Harry then. This is engineering. All the junkers, all the junkers, that is the runner's equipment is made here. Hmm, doesn't look like Harry's around at the moment. All right, maybe we'll come back here a bit later. Let's check out the detective's room. This is the detective's room. It's the office for our runners. That's what we call junker investigators like you. You'll be using that desk in the back. What about this desk near the door here? That's Jean's desk, John Jack Gibson. He's our ace runner. Even so, Jean's got an 18 year old daughter. A daughter, eh? Her name's Katrina. <laughs> A daughter, eh? All right. This is Junker Headquarters' computer room. It's linked to databases throughout the country, so you can find almost any information you might need. All right. I'll come back there later, if needs be. What about the shooting range? This is the shooting range. Junkers come here to improve their marksmanship. Alright. We might come back here a bit later. Now all we need to do is find Harry. Well, how about we check the engineering room again? Harry should be back by now. I don't know, he's quite the freewheeling type. Oh good, Harry's back. Great to meet you. You're a uh, Gillian Seed, right? Haven't we met somewhere before? No, I don't believe so. Really? Well, I guess I must be imagining things. All Kojima's, all Kojima's games are inspired or ripped off from films? Well, I feel like Snatcher is quite different. Snatcher is heavily rooted in its inspirations. Like Blade Runner and Terminator, specifically Blade Runner. Metal Gear has the Escape from New York influence but I still feel like it has much more of an identity of its own when compared to something like Snatcher. It's hard to, it's like, you, you can't stop thinking of Blade Runner when you're playing this, um, or Terminator, because the influences are so heavy. But um, I don't really feel that way about Metal Gear, especially as you get further into the series. Um, but yeah, obviously he does take lots of influence from many, many different films. Police Knots is, is uh, very much inspired by um, Lethal Weapon. Like the two main characters are just like the two main characters from, from Lethal Weapon. But even Police Knots, I feel, has, has, has more of an original identity than Snatcher. Just the world and the way the story is told and everything. Um, a more unique world, I guess. Yeah. 
Uh, let's see. Let's ask this fool about stuff. I know, I know. All right, allow me to introduce the Navigator, which I designed especially for you. Hey, Metal Gear, get out here. Oh! Metal, introduce yourself. Yes, sir. Pleased to meet you, Gillian. I am Metal Gear Mach 2. I am programmed to be your personal assistant. Metal Gear? That's a pretty weird name. Oh, he's cute. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I think he's turning red. I took his basic design and his name from the Metal Gear Menace of the late 20th century. But uh, quite unlike that Metal Gear, this one was designed for peaceful purposes. So here's Metal Gear Mark II. Of course, MGS4 references this, brings back the Metal Gear Mark II. Uh, but in this game, it's obviously referencing the very first Metal Gear. The original Metal Gear on MSX released before this game. This was Kojimbo's second game after Metal Gear. So when Otacon says, you know, just like Rex in MGS4, he's talking shit. It's just like TX-55, not Rex. Fucking moron, Otacon. Uh, let's see. Let's ask about the blaster. Oh, that's right. Uh, don't panic yourself. I got it right over here. This is your blaster, the official weapon of a junker. It's got full user feedback circuitry, adjusting itself to your reaction time. In other words, it's just as good as you are. What do you think? Here, see how she feels. It's unbelievably light. <laughs> you bet it is. This ain't one of those ray guns the army uses. She's put together with the latest carbon polymers and ceramics, not affected by heat one bit. And her ergonomic design optimizes both functionality and firepower. Well, what do you think, Gillian? I'll take it. All right. What else? You're an engineer. Tell me about how the snatchers are built. It's odd, but we've never been uh, but we've never been able to get a specimen. They're always stolen or have self-destructed. They have any weaknesses? They're built really well, so it's tough to destroy them outright. Try to immobilize them. They've got these slits on their head for some reason. A well-placed shot there will often destroy their control functions. That's why it's important to practice your marksmanship. Navigators are designed from the start as a Junker's investigative assistant. On-site detection, analysis, recording, communications, you name it. They're packed with features. A Metal Gear here is the latest model. What about, uh, what about an attack system? Don't they carry any weapons? Trade not. They're unarmed. After all, the main idea behind a Navigator is to assist in an, invest in an investigation's data management. But they do have a save function. Just choose the Use Metal Gear command and then the save command. You can record the exact status of your investigation that way. In the same way, you can use the use light command to help you when it's too dark to see. I told you they were nice to have around, didn't I? How about communications? Does he have some kind of radio? Yep, there's a video phone installed. A video phone? That's right. Just select use Metal Gear and then use video phone to access it. In theory, you can use it anywhere, but you have to watch out for interference. Sometimes the signal just can't get through. I have a video phone call from Jean-Jacques Gibson coming in. Connecting. Junker HQ, this is Gibson. I've cornered a probable male snatcher. I'm in the abandoned factory in the M district. Request immediate backup. Gillian, that means you. You better head out right away. Jean needs your help. We must hurry. We'll use a turbo cycle to travel to the scene. Be careful, Gillian. This is a turbo cycle, specially designed for junker use. In addition to three-wheeled ground travel, it is capable of hovering and high-speed flight. The vehicle is also VTOL capable, so takeoffs and landings in narrow areas present no difficulty. A flying tricycle, huh? I just came in on one of these things. We have been assigned this vehicle for use in our investigations. 
the tunes. Love it. All right, let's save Metal Gear before we do anything. All right, I'll save everything that has happened up until now. Which file number would you like to save it in? Let's save it in file number one. Is it okay for me to overwrite it with the new data? Of course, Metal Gear, go ahead. Save completed. Would you like to continue play? Uh, I am actually not. All right, that's enough for now. Gillian, I hope we can continue the investigation together soon. So now I'm gonna reload the game. Actually, how about we just stop playing Snatcher? Yeah, I think we'll do that. Let's play something else. No, no. Uh, this is just to avoid uh, getting into trouble later. Because last time I played this, I had a weird crash happen. And um, if you don't, if you don't finish, if you don't exit out to the main menu, you lose your save. If the game crashes. So let's go back in. So I'm going to do that every now and then. Whenever I finish a main area, I'll save, exit, and come back in. Just so we don't lose everything. Because if you don't exit, it doesn't save. I guess I could use save states as well, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll do this as well, though. Uh, just to be extra careful. Yeah, I prefer using legit saves anyway. We're in the turbo cycle. Uh, operation is computer controlled. Where would you like to go? Factory ruins. Let's do it. Now departing for the abandoned factory. Junes! First day on the job, and now this. Ace Junker Gibson is corner of the suspected snatcher. I wonder if this guy really is a snatcher. Guess I'll find out now if all that training really paid off. Uh, someone asked, will I be doing many extras? For the most part, I'll just be going through the mandatory story, but I will do a few extras, yeah. We've arrived at the abandoned factory. What would you like to do? Let's exit. Man. These visuals, the sound gives me all... Even though I never played this as a kid, um... Still very nostalgic for games like Streets of Rage and uh, Golden Axe and things like that that I used to play. It's a battered old factory. Judging from its design, I'd say it dates from the period when man production techniques were still used. It appears abandoned. The sky is getting quite dark. It looks like a storm may be coming in. Hey, how's it going, Laguna? This playthrough will probably take around eight hours, I would say. Slice jam with the sub. Thank you. This place is quite run down. It looks deserted, too. The building is heavily damaged. Probably been abandoned since the last century. There's no sign that anybody's around. Metal, are you reading anything? I can't tell from here. We'll have to move inside. There's nothing unusual here. Oh no! What was that? A male scream. Perhaps something has happened to Jean-Jacques. Oh, God. Gillian, please use extreme caution. 
I read multiple moving objects within the factory. This could indicate the presence of snatchers or insectors. Insectors? What in the world's that? A spider-like robot used by snatchers as security devices. Though compact in size, they are armed with needle guns. Use extreme caution. Let's go inside. Alright, we're going in. Keep your blaster ready. Push the A button to draw your blaster. Anything could happen in here. You might want to save frequently just in case disaster strikes. Love the music, the sound effects. We've entered the factory. This is the spot where we placed that video phone call. Okay. It's uncomfortably quiet here. Can we move ahead? All right, now moving ahead. Uh-oh. What the? Little John? Yes, jean jacques Gibson's personal navigator. Oh my, Little John's been demolished. There's no way to repair damage this bad. Is this what they named Raiden's son after? Little John, MGS4? That's what they call him, Little John. This charring indicates he was hit by fire from a laser cannon. Nearly all his circuits are burned completely through. His functions have been completely terminated. Get it? Terminated? Uh, nevertheless, his memory uh, may be all or partially intact. Where's Gibson? A navigator never leaves his runner's side unless there's a very serious reason. We have to hurry. Gibson is in trouble. Metal Gear to get some analysis. I'm afraid I cannot analyze another navigator's memory. We'll have to go back to headquarters to process it. Let's just hope there's something left. Okay, let's move ahead. Alright, now moving ahead. I'm not picking up any sounds. Alright, now moving ahead. Wait. There's a figure on the floor. Alright, now moving ahead. It's a dead end. Dear God! John! Gibson! It's Gibson! My God, his head's been twisted completely off! Jeez, I wish I didn't have to meet him like this. Tuho, thank you for gifting a sub to Clement. Let me just check subs as well, make sure I'm up to date. Uh, Slice, Zinchok, Chaos, Tuho. Thanks a lot, guys. I can't believe they killed Jean. Sheik with the four months as well. Thank you. He's still warm. That scream we heard was no doubt his. What killed him? His head has been twisted off. He died instantly. It would take incredible strength to do this. Look, 
Jan's holding something in his right hand. It's hair. He's holding several strands of hair. I think that was a typo, actually. He said stands. In addition, there is skin tissue under his nails, probably from him scratching his attacker. clothing. Ah, there was a key in one of his pockets. Wait, there's a scrap of paper in one of the pockets. It's written on ordinary paper. Search the house. There's some kind of symbol, some kind of exclamation mark. Broken exclamation mark. Uh, I don't think I'll have time to do police knots, B Fox. Hey, what's up, Storm? What is this key for? I don't know of anywhere where old keys like this are still used. Uh. Now analyzing recovered hair sample. Analysis complete. Results on the display. One. Chromosomal analysis of cells from the papilla and root reveal 46XY. Subject is male. Two. Hair color brown. Hair structure reading of 65 indicates European subject. Metal Gear. What about the skin sample? Now analyzing recovered tissue sample. Analysis complete. Results on the display. One. Enzyme antibody analysis indicates subject is blood type O, RH factor negative. Two. Chromosomal analysis of cells in the sample reveal 46XX. Subject is female. Three. Cell component distribution indicates presence of artificial protein compounds. of the analysis strongly suggest that the tissue sample of the cluster of skin cells was scraped from the subject during the struggle with John. These skin cells almost certainly came from a female European blood type O negative snatcher. Maybe there's more than one snatcher involved. Gibson said I've cornered a probable male snatcher. What's this key for? I don't know of anywhere where old keys like this are still used. Huh.
We should search John's personal belongings. Something may turn up. You're right. We might find some kind of a clue. I thought we did everything. Search the house. What is that supposed to mean? Who knows? These could be Jean's last words. Metal, keep this as evidence, will you? Ah, here we go. Alright, now storing paper scrap in my internal chamber. This item is quite an antique. Metal, hang on to this key as evidence, okay? All right, I'll store it. I'm reading movement. Something just ran across that doorway. Snatchers. Unable to confirm. I suggest we investigate. Oh boy. This theme. All right, now moving ahead. It's a dead end. A dead end. And where did the Snatchers go? I'm not picking up any sounds. It's blocked by a cave-in. We can't go any farther. I don't see any way out from here. Metal, anything on your sensors? No, I'm not getting any reading. <laughs> Are you okay, Gillian? That's weird. I was fine until a moment ago. Please, stay quiet. What's wrong, Metal? Maybe it's a sensor defect, but I think I'm picking a sound off in the distance. Can you hear it, Gillian? That's odd. Seems like my ears are going out on me. Maybe it's due to a change in air pressure. Hold on a second. All right, now moving back. Wait, I can hear something. I can't hear a thing. Try turning up the volume on the TV. All right, now moving back. Wait, I can hear something. I can't hear a thing! All right, now moving back. Wait, I can hear something! I can't hear a thing! Hmm, I'm picking something up from the direction of Little John. I thought Little John's functions were totally dead. I can only find Little John's memory chip. Uh oh. Whoa! A time bomb! Evacuate immediately! There is little time! Anything could happen. You should probably save frequently just to be safe. Now that you mention it, I haven't saved even once since arriving at the factory. Uh, let's live dangerously. All right, now moving back. In sectors, use your blaster, Gillian. Come at me. Ha! If we don't take any damage here, we get some extra dialogue, I think. Motion reading has vanished. We're getting out of here! Sorry, I cannot go with you! What's wrong with you? Hurry it up! I am incapable of locomotion! 
What on earth are you blabbering about? Let's go! It's gonna blow! Please save yourself! I am paralyzed with fear! Oh, I can't believe this stupid robot! Come on! <laughs> you left the volume turned up. Damn snatchers. There is no need for concern. I have stored all the information about the evidence and the area in my memory. We should return to Junker headquarters. Damn snatchers. Making me turn my volume up. Snatcher scum. We've returned to Junker headquarters. Ooh, that was some first day. Now entering the building. We've entered the lobby. Gillian, I heard about Jean. I'm sorry. I wish I could have done more. You performed your duties quite satisfactorily. That's right. It's not your fault, Gillian. Don't worry about it. By the way, the chief is waiting for you. This is the chief's office. Well, see, that was a pretty rough first assignment to draw. You made a great effort, though. I've studied the data transmitted back by Metal Gear, so I know all about what happened out there. It's too bad about Gibson. He was a great junker. Seed, I need you to take over for him. You're the only one I've got left who can battle this Snatcher menace. Stop staring at me. Stop staring at me. Come on, man. All right. Uh, Molmoy with the five months. Thank you. All right, let's have a save. Which file number would you like to save it in? Number one, of course. Save completed. Let's finish. Reload. We should get a Snatcher emote. I'm not sure what, what I'd pick from the game, though. Okay. Uh, let's go back to engineering. Give Harry that chip. This is engineering. Well. So our new junker has returned. <laughs> I register high alcohol levels. Harry is intoxicated. I really... You know, I really thought you were better than that. <laughs> Harry, what kind of backup was that supposed to be? If you were a better junker than that, Jean... Sean wouldn't have had to die out there. <laughs> Harry, that statement is incorrect. Don't worry about it, Metal. Harry's right. Sean... <laughs> Sorry, it's... it's not your fault. <laughs> Metal, would you give Harry the memory chip we pulled out of Little John? Of course. Harry, this is Little John's memory chip. <laughs> Poor Harry. I can't check that link at the moment, but I'll take a look later. He has been drinking heavily. I register large concentrations of synthethol or synthahol in the air here. Synthol? Synthol? Synthahol? Uh, let's see. Yeah, the big Madonna poster. 20th century brandy. It's Napoleon. This is odd. I thought that Harry only drank Japanese sake. What's this? Brandy, huh? What's this? 
There are numbers written on the label. It says 395644. It does not appear to be a date of any kind. Let's check the poster. Who's this? Some late 20th century pop star? Young kid says I'm just stuck in the past, but your memories of childhood tend to stay with you. Oh, that was Harry's dialogue. I didn't even notice. Yes, but she was a pop star from well before you were born, right? Yeah, but there was this boom in the popularity of old of, uh, popularity of old stars when I was a kid. We investigate the poster. Judging from the chemical structure of the inks used in the printing process, I would estimate this poster dates from at least one half century ago. It must be really special to him. He's repaired it in several spots. All right, all right, all right. Let's head to the detective's room. All right, let's check out Gibson's room. We should investigate John's personal items. We must learn what he was doing before he was killed. I see. Basic detective work. Okay, let's check out this locker over here. All right, let's let's investigate the locker. There's a coat hanging inside the locker. Check the pockets of the coat for me, will you? All right. A chess piece was in the coat. A chess piece, eh? It's a chess piece made of wood. This could mean something, Metal. Let's hang on to it as evidence. I'm sure it must mean something. Let's check the code again. There's nothing else in the code. Let's check the desk. Hey, Ananananas. With the three gifted subs, thank you very much. Much appreciated. Yeah, we're getting pretty close to the goal. Uh, let's see. I'm afraid it's locked. I cannot open it. A key. Nobody uses keys anymore. Well, what did we find in Gibson's pocket? As I recall, Jeanne had a key. Let's check our possessions. All right, I will try the key. There's something in the drawer. Capsules. And a disc. Okay. Some kind of capsule medication. It's a floppy disk for a personal computer. Mr. Stringer. With the two years as well. Thank you. It's a five inch floppy disk. A five inch disk. Nobody uses those things anymore. This disk must have something to do with John's investigation. Alright, I'll store this disk as evidence. Is this? I'll perform an analysis. Acid inhibitors, membrane protecting agents, H2 blockers. This is medication for an ulcer. Jeez, it looks like Jean's stomach was really in terrible shape. And what was he doing eating buffalo? That seems a little unusual. Perhaps there was some reason that he had to eat buffalo. The sub counter is stuck. Well, if it's stuck, I have no idea how to fix it. Um, but yeah, like uh, Jupig said, maybe it just takes a, a while to update. Uh, these capsules may have something to do with all this. Let's keep them. 
hasn't been updating uh, automatically or immediately. Okay. Uh, that will not be necessary. I've recorded the results of the analysis of their chemical composition. Buffalo meat. I think in uh, in the Japanese version it's whale whale meat. Where shall we go? Hakora, thank you for gifting a sub to Cheezer Boy. I like how you just spelled out the word, Pydol. <laughs> it's pronounced the way it's spelled. Thanks. Thanks for that. Uh, let's see. I'm all right now, Gillian. You can't stay depressed over these things forever. Mm. Lay Android. Thank you for gifting a sub to Zach. Cheers. Buffalo. I've never even heard of any places that serve that. Oh, that's right. Napoleon might know something. Oh, yeah? That Chinese informant Jean was using. He's known him ever since he was a science cop. A science cop, eh? Well, I've heard about him, but I've never met him. Why don't you track him down? After, after all, it is about Jean. He must have left some kind of clue, a video phone number or something. Well, well, there was that brandy. Mm, okay, Metal Gear. All right, let's use the video phone. What was that again? Three nine five six four four. I'm an acquaintance of Gibson. I need some information. You an investigator too, huh? Can't trust them. All right, let's have the password. <laughs> the password? All right. So if you want to legitimately learn the password here, you have to go to the computer room and look up Napoleon. And uh, the answer will be revealed there. But I know what it is. It's it's rain. The 100 day rain. Okay, you seem pretty real to me. Meet me at Alton Plaza in the EXG district. I'll see you there. All right. Still, how did you figure it out? Hey, I guess I just know my stuff. Someone must have told you. Come on, Metal, it really doesn't matter, does it? Now what are you gonna do? Let's see... Okay, I think we can leave now and head for Alton Plaza. Although we might stop off at Gillian's apartment first. Mika, I'm heading out to check on a few things. I've got a couple of leads. Really? Don't don't worry yourself over Jean, okay? Thanks, Mika. Gillian? Yes, Mika? How are you and your wife doing? I haven't talked to her in a while. Not even on the video phone? No. You shouldn't leave her alone like that. That's right. Come to think of it, I have her number written down at home. I bet she's pretty lonely. I'm sure you're right. Thanks. Be careful, Gillian.
We've boarded the turbo cycle. Where would you like to go? We'll go to Gillian's apartment. All right, now heading to your apartment. One sec, guys. I just wanted to check what the shortcut was for um, save states. This is your apartment building, Gilly. It was like that for me, sto uh, Storm, yesterday. But uh, I can't hear any fireworks at the moment, thankfully. Wow, you mean I have a place to live too? Please tone it down, Gillian. I know you've lost your memory, but isn't that carrying the act a bit too far? Just trying to make things a little more fun for the folks playing the game. Let's see. The cheeky little fourth wall breaks. There's a particularly good moment later on. Go inside. This is your living room. For a widower, uh, the room seems rather tidy. I'm quite impressed. Don't you ever shut up. Are you programmed to, evalu to evaluate my personal life too? My duty is to support you and observe that you are properly carrying out your responsibilities as a junker. Some observer. You mean informer, right? Well, one could put it that way. Gillian, there's a photograph on the shelf. Yes, that's a very special picture for me. There are numbers written on the back. 393444. It seems to be a video phone number. Yes, that's the number for Jamie's apartment. Why don't you try giving her a call? Would you let me handle my own personal life? Okay, okay, okay. It's an instant photograph of the kind seen in the latter part of the last century. Based on an analysis of the inks and chemical structure of the developers, I would say that it is at least 30 years old. Let's see now. Jamie's number was 393444, I think. Okay. Oh, hey. I was just getting to sleep. Ask out on date. Just go straight for it. Jamie, you should probably stay indoors at night. That's when snatchers are most active. It's dangerous. I'll be fine, Gillian. Why would they ever go after me? They only want VIPs, right? Cheezer boy, thank you for gifting a sub to Dingasaur. Dingasaur Jr. That's quite a name. Thank you. Looks like this junker business is more dangerous than I thought it would be. Gillian? But it's still not as bad as boot camp. I'm a lot more relaxed working like this as a junker. Aren't you pushing yourself too hard? Well, it's pretty scary sometimes, but now I've got a definite goal, something to live for. I was really surprised when I heard you'd become a junker. I'm sorry, it was really hard for me to try to tell you. That's all right. Besides, we live near each other. We can meet any time. Call me if anything comes up, okay? All right. Well, 
What if we show her some cash? Oh, Gillian, I'm not having any money problems now. I've got a good job. Don't worry about me. if I show her a chess piece. That's a chess piece. <laughs> uh, Alright, she knows what chess pieces are. What if we show her a key? Wow, that's a real antique key, isn't it? Search the house. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> I just like the idea of uh, Gillian just holding these items up to the camera. Look at this! What do you have to say about this? Uh... What about a floppy disk? A floppy disk? Jeez, I haven't seen one of those in ages. Look at this photograph! Doesn't it make you laugh? Whatever the lyrics are. Uh, Jamie's condition. So how are you doing? I'm getting by all right. How about you, Gillian? Are you eating properly? Yeah, I'm doing okay. I miss your great Paschetti, though. Paschetti? Oh, that's cute. You still call it that? Alright, let's ask her out on a date. Where do we want to go? Meal, musical, zoo, ocean, amusement park, races, hotel, arcade. The zoo is good. I like zoo dates. Uh, why don't we visit the bio zoo? I heard a baby unicorn's been born over there. Holy shit! The future is bright, all of a sudden. And I hear there's an exhibition of the works by Karl Meisenhofen. I'm sorry, Gillian, I just don't feel like doing that kind of thing yet. What about going? How about we go to the arcade? Why don't we head over to, to uh, Hoverland Arcade? It's a lot bigger than Mindwave, and there's a lot of couples there these days. I'll grab a cute stuffed animal for you with one of those super conducting cranes. I'm good friends with one of the employees over there, so I can always get prizes. <laughs> nice. I'm sorry, Gillian. I just don't feel like doing that kind of thing yet. Damn, he's busting out the big guns there. You know, I'll we'll definitely we'll definitely win a prize if we go there. You won't walk away empty-handed. Uh, what about a meal? Come on, Jamie, talk to me a bit. Over dinner or something. We haven't been out in so long. I'm sorry, Gillian. I just don't feel like doing that kind of thing yet. Uh, how about a musical? Jamie, how about a musical? There's some really interesting robot musicals playing. How about Phantom of the Opera? I'm sorry, Gillian. I just don't feel like doing that kind of thing yet. Lol. Uh, how about we go to the ocean? Jamie, let's go to the beach. Where should we go? How about, uh, how about Ashia Bay or Old Suma? Wait, wait, I know. Let's go to Maiko Park. It's sealed off, but I know a back way in. I'll be okay. I, I'll be okay. I have my Junker Pass. Besides, it's an all-weather type beach. It won't be that cold. I'm sorry, Gillian. But you know, I hate wearing swimsuits. You're scarred from having your appendix out, right? When are you ever going to stop worrying about that? I'm sorry, Gillian. I just don't feel like doing that kind of thing yet. Uh, the amusement park. Let's try out that new anti-gravity ride at Neo Portopia Land. Portopia. We need to relax. That'll really help us forget about work. 
and I hope you'll wear a skirt when we go. <laughs> I'm sorry, Gillian. I just don't feel like doing that kind of thing yet. Uh, how about we rent out a room at a hotel? Why don't we share a quiet drink over in the lounge at the Neo Portopia Hotel? Jamie, you've always liked moon salt, right? I'm sorry, Gillian. I just don't feel like doing that kind of thing yet. Ah! Uh, how about we go to the races? Let's go see dragon horses. You've always liked horses, right? Besides, the Arima Cup is coming up pretty soon. I'm sorry, Gillian. I just don't feel like doing that kind of thing yet. Uh, well, I think that's everything. What kind of dreams have you had lately? Are you still seeing that same one? Yes, it's the same one over and over. That one, huh? Yes, I'm carrying a child and running from a fire. But, not a, but no matter how much I run, the fire doesn't get any farther away. Then what? It gets hotter and hotter until I can't stand it. Then I leave the child and run. You leave the child? And the flames grow brighter and grow and grow. And what about the kid? The child is... The child is as cold as ice. Why don't you record that thing for me with the dream recorder? With the dream recorder. Why? I want to see the same dream as you. No, I hate that dream. I wouldn't want anyone else to see it. Jamie, it might have something to do with our past. Alright, let's go. Jamie, it was good talking to you. Take care. Talk to you later, Gillian. Bye. All right, all right. I think we can head to Alton Plaza. Most of that stuff was optional. Uh, you don't have to uh, talk to her that much. battle -o. We've boarded the turbo cycle. Where would you like to go? Go to Alton Plaza. Am I going to finish this in one sitting? I am, yeah. <laughs> well, that was anticlimactic. Well, it didn't really feel like it was building up to a climax now, did it? We were just having a conversation. We've arrived at Alton Plaza. Let's see... This is Alton Plaza. This place is well known as a rendezvous spot for couples. Is Napoleon here yet? I can't stand waiting unless it's for a woman. Let's see. The whole area is decked out in the Christmas mood. I always like year end. I enjoy the warm atmosphere of the season. You're quite a romantic, aren't you? Well, I guess. Plato's Cavern, 691170, the old Konami logo. It's the holiday season. People are moving busily here and there. Ba -ba -do -ba -do. There are many advertisements. Careful observation of them can reveal interesting things sometimes. That uh, Morrissey reference there, the poster. Hold on. You know, I think we might have been better off going to Gibson's house before this. 
but I don't think it really matters. I think we can still, we can still do it in this order. I don't see anyone around who looks like they might be Napoleon. Oh, the guy who was on the phone is headed this way. Is that him? Well, well. So, you're the new Junker, eh? <laughs> you Napoleon? Well, let's keep this short, okay? The Snatcher sees me here and I'll be the next one eliminated. Okay, okay. Let's show him our ID. Hmm, so you're the real thing, eh? With that little walking trash can with you, you stick out like a sore thumb anyway. Everybody's probably figured it out by now. Hey, watch it! So, what do you want me for? Hmm, let's talk about Gibson. Gibson was killed by Snatcher. Do you know anything about it? What? Gibson got killed? He said something about Snatchers being after him. Hmm, what about this buffalo cuisine? Gibson ate buffalo somewhere just before he was killed. Any ideas? Follow his trail and use a little intuition. Do you know any places that serve buffalo? Hmm, since that prohibition on shooting buffalo went into effect, almost nobody will touch the stuff. Well, I may have a few ideas, but I'm not a charity, you know? Hmm. Here, take it. Well, thank you. It's the only place in Neo Kobe that serves buffalo. Yeah, there's a masquerade club called Outer Heaven. I'm pretty sure they serve buffalo. Outer Heaven? Hey! Chat, I... Th Is that us? Is he talking about us? I think he's... I think that's us. Hey, that's us! It's quite a famous hangout in that particular industry. It's like a big masquerade party. Customers have to wear masks or whatever or they can't get in. Just like our usernames. That makes the place pretty popular with a lot of VIPs in a lot of high places. Get in there, you gotta have a mask from over at Plato's Cavern or they won't let you in. Hmm, what about the location? I'm not doing this for fun, you know. I'm gonna need a little something to get me talking. Okay. I'll cough it up then. You've really got nerve. Take it. As always, thanks so much. You'll be a good junker one of these days. It's on 17th Street in the HS District. Okay. Thank you. What about Plato's Cavern? It's a black market where you can buy without a permit. They've got absolutely everything there. I think Gibson stopped by there quite a bit himself. Why don't you visit the place? You might find some leads. Where is it? Uh, oh, oh, he's saying that. Where is it? Uh, there's a sign right over there. Check it out yourself. Why don't you ever tell me anything straight out? Hmm, why don't you take a good look around the area? Okay, I think we have everything we need from him now. Ha 
<laughs> what a pain. Why don't we just arrest this guy? <laughs> Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think we're good. We'll send him home. See ya. Hold on, guys. Let me just look up something real quick. wait for that number to come up again because that's the Plato's Cavern number here it is now Plato's Cavern 691170 <laughs> Calling Plato's Cavern, the store with everything. May I help you? Huh? Audio only, eh? Love this theme. Very sleazy. And no doubt it's because they're involved in the black market. Ask about location of the store. Where is Plato's Cavern located? We're located on 5th Street in the Sanomia K District. Everything in that area is part of our organization. Okay. Everything available at the best prices anywhere. And no ID required. That's our motto here at Plato's Cavern. And there's none of that dark atmosphere that you find at so many other black market shops. Okay, okay, okay. We look forward to serving you. Uh, there are some other Easter egg numbers as well that we can try. I think all threes is one. Mr. Kushibuchi, I'm now in Honolulu for the marathon. Please leave a message. Oh, he's watching the marathon. And he even went to Honolulu to watch it. Damn, a few cocktails on the beach. OHN marathon. Nice. Okay. Uh, let's try someone else. Crap. Three. Four. Five, six, seven, eight. The number you have reached is not in service at this time. Please check the number and dial again. This is a recording. JTNT Neo Kobe. Wrong number. I don't know what I did wrong there. I did 8-9 instead of 7-8. Sorry. <laughs> Miss Hayasaka. This is Miss Hayasaka at Konami. Thanks for your continued support. Finally, Konami's famous Snatcher will be released worldwide. We're so happy that Konami fans and, uh, and fanatics will now be able to play this game. Although the characters in this game are all fictitious, after playing the game, I really felt that I knew the characters as real people. Also, this is the first game I've ever played that continually gave me strong feelings just like watching a great movie. Gillian Seed, a man without memories, the romance of all the beautiful women around him. Also, that enigmatic bounty hunter, Random Hajil. Stop spoiling the fucking game, Konami. Uh, and who could ever forget Gillian's sidekick, Metal Gear Mark II? 
I felt sad when things went bad for the characters, and I also learned many things about love and friendship. I'm sure everyone has seen a movie, read a book, or heard music that stays with you that you never forget. Snatcher is that type of work. I hope it's for you too. I'm very grateful that I was able to meet all of you in this game, and I want to continue helping to bring you exciting and moving software, so keep rooting for us. Bye bye now. I'll keep rooting for you, Konami. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> Aren't they so lovely, those Konami folk? Always looking out for the consumer, trying to provide us with exciting experiences. Always pushing the boundaries. Uh, okay. Mr. Inamura, 4 one Six, seven, six, six. The number you have reached what? is not in service at this time. Please check the number and dial again. This is a recording. JTNT Neo Kobe. Nine nine instead of six six. The info I have here is wrong. Then thank you. Uh, four one. Fuck six seven nine nine. The number you have reached hey! is not in service at this time. Please check the number. Why do I trust again. chat? This is a recording. JTNT Neo Kobe. Or hold on. Wait, no, 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 no. I did something else wrong there. I think I think that was my fault. What do you mean nine nine again? I did didn't I do six six the first time? And then someone said it was 9-9. Nine, nine. Oh, I put in 9-9 nine, nine the first time. Okay, okay. Four, so the info I have here is correct. 416766. Okay, here we go. I think I smell a rat in my house. Baby, I believe he's got just two legs. Yeah. Oh, this is Blaustein's. I guess those are some, some lyrics or something. Chi, would you turn that down, please? Okay. Moshi Moshi. Blaustein Desu. Huh? What? Oh, hello. You speak English? No, I live, I live in Japan. I speak Japanese. What language was that? That was Japanese. I don't get it. Well, technically you're speaking Japanese in the world of the game, but it's translated into English so that everyone can understand you. I don't have any idea what the hell you're talking about. By the way, was that Buddy Guy? I guess it was Buddy Guy lyrics. Yeah, that's right. You're into Buddy too, huh? You know, Gillian, you're a lucky guy. You get to do all these exciting things surrounded by beautiful women who flirt with you constantly. Yeah, well, you know how it is. Some people got it. And all I do is sit in front of this terminal writing funny, sexy stuff for you to do. Ow! Kiwi! Don't bite! There! Take that! Wow! Ha! That'll teach you. Don't hurt her! It's amazing she survived this long. I'll say, she should be dead. She's over 55 years old. By the way, she's not, she's not the hurt one. Look, I'm bleeding. What? Ooh, that's a bad one. Yes, it is strange that she's lived this long. I guess it's her positive mental outlook. Look, sorry, I, I gotta run now. I'm conducting, a, I'm conducting an investigation. Yeah, well, I know how it turns out. Huh? What? Forget it. Good luck, Junker. <laughs> so that's Jeremy uh, Blaustein's little Easter egg. Who translated the game? Localizer. Uh, let's try someone else. Mr. Togo. Four. Four. Six. Four. Five. Four.
Hello, this is Mitsuhiro Togo. Hi, nice to meet you. My family is made up of my daughter and my extremely tough wife, who also serves as our bodyguard. Let's see. My hobby is constructing IBM PC AT compatible hardware. Our personal computer is hooked up to a network, but it is not open to the public. I'm an expert in MS DOS and Windows, so if you have any questions, please ask. Well, talk to you later. Bye. Hey, what are you doing hanging up like that? He seems to be rather self-centered. Ever since that jerk got married, he never goes out anymore. What? Who? What? That was Gillian who said that. Who was he talking about? <laughs> Some kind of inside joke, I guess. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Mr. Sasaki. 7966641. I don't think this is Hideki Sasaki. I don't think Hideki Sasaki was working with Kojima at this point. Maybe he was. I don't think so, though. Uh, I will continue trying to make software that will move you, surprise you, delight, and amaze you. Oh, okay. Thanks, man. Uh, let's see. Oh, no, I lost my... I lost my, uh, numbers. Hold on, chat. Yoshinori Sasaki, that's who it's referencing. Uh, hold on. Ba -doodle ba -dum -bum -ba -da. I think there's only one more left. Maybe two. Yeah, Mr. Nakamura. Eight, four. Six seven three six. Hello, this is Nakamura. Huh? You're asking me if I want to buy some Junkers Rush? What the hell are you saying? It's adrenaline gum. You chew it and get an energy boost. Want to try some tonight? Gillian, what are you doing? No, hey, I just want some pocket money. What are you talking about? You can't sell that. Okay, hey, Nakamura, you need some blaster bullets? Gillian, you had better straighten up and fly right. I can't believe you're trying to sell me that stuff. Get the hell off my video phone now. All right, I think that's all of them now. I swear there's another one, though. Isn't there some, like, isn't there, like, a dating hotline or something? I highly disapprove. I thought there was another one. Hold on, hold on, hold on. One second, chat. I think we've... That's all the ones I can see on these lists. Sushi Gucci, Inamura, Togo. Ah, whatever. Okay, so before we head to Plato's Cavern to get ready for our trip to Outer Heaven, I think we'll go to Gibson's house.
It is a rather nice looking early American type home. This is the northern part of the suburbs. There is quite a contrast between this and the southern district. The door on the front is the main entrance. There does not appear to be a doorbell. How about if we try knocking? Oh yeah, this. Katrina, are you in there? Who is it? Uh, we'll show our... Uh, our ID. Oh wait, hold on. You're Katrina, right? I'm a junker. I just started down at, I just started down at Junker headquarters. My name's Gillian C. Really? Are you really a junker? If you are, then show me some proof. Proof? Your junker ID, of course. Well, it looks genuine to me. I can't trust you with just uh, I can't trust you with just that. Tell me how old my father is. If you're a real junker, you'd know that. Okay. Gibson's age. How old is my father? Use the directional pad to input the numbers and press the start button when you're finished. 55, I think. Uh, 55 years old. That's right. That's still not enough to trust you. Now I'm going to ask you something about myself. Okay. What is it with all these questions? She knows that as a junker, you should have access to Alpha 1. So that means that there should be information on her in Jordan, right? She's a very smart girl. I have a unique mark on my body. What type of mark is it? Input your answer and press the start button. Uh, birthmark. Kind of weird that the computer would have all this information. That's easy, a birthmark. That's right, now tell me the shape of that birthmark. Heart shape. Hmm, okay. That's right. And finally, where is this birthmark located? I know that one, on your inner thigh. Well, that's pretty embarrassing, but at least I know you're the real thing. Wait a minute, I'll open the door. I'm very sorry about all of that. I'm Katrina Gibson, Jean's daughter. I'm... I'm so sorry. What's the matter, Mr. Seed? I'm very sorry, Katrina. It's my fault your father's dead. Gillian. No, if I could have gotten there just a little sooner, your father might still be alive. Oh, Mr. Seed, I appreciate your feelings, but I was always ready for the worst with my father. Every day as I watched him leave for work, will it be today, tomorrow, I knew it was a dangerous job. Katrina, that's... Well, I'm a junker's daughter. Do you think you'll be all right by yourself? I'll be fine. Don't worry about me. I can take care of myself. Besides, I don't think I have any tears left. Oh. Are you sure? Okay, Junker, you've got work to do, right? Keep yourself busy. That's the best way to take your mind off of it. Okay, Katrina. You're probably right. I'll appreciate any help you can give me on this investigation. Okay. Hold on, one sec, guys. Uh, let's see. I didn't really talk much with my dad lately. 
He was always so busy investigating stuff, cooped up in that study. I don't think we need to talk to her about very much. Not yet, anyway. Me? I'm just a spoiled brat who never cared about her parents. Have you ever heard of a place called Outer Heaven? Apparently it's the only place in the city that serves buffalo. We found buffalo in your dad's stomach. That's the first I've ever heard of my dad going to a place like that. He must have had some good reason. You mind if I take a look in your study? Go ahead. This is Gibson's study. This is my dad's study. I haven't touched a thing. It's just the way he left it before he died. You can see the garden from here. A garden? Wow, his own house with a garden and everything. Yeah, but it faces north and it's, and it's, uh, and it's really quite small. Like, it looks like the ones my dad always used on the PC-68. Hmm. It should be on the shelf. Why don't you take a look? This is the model PC-68 Genesis. These have not been manufactured for nearly 50 years. My father was always using it. Some junk shop gave it to him and he fixed it up. It has a 5 inch disk drive installed. 5 inch, huh? Well then that disk must be, uh, must be for this machine. Let's try to see if we can read it. All right, let's turn this PC-68 on and see if we can read the disc. So the house in that search the house was referring to Gibson's house. And that exclamation point was not an exclamation point at all. It was a symbol for the five inch floppy disc. Look closely, the pattern matches the read write holes on the disc. He even drew a little dot to represent the index hole. In other words, it meant to put this disc in the PC-68 at his house. No doubt Jean was worried that something might happen to him, and he prepared the disc for just such an emergency. The machine is reading the disc. Here it is. Snatcher investigation file. Why do Snatchers appear in the winter? Why are Snatchers nocturnal? I believe I have found the answer to these questions. Snatchers' vampire-like behavior is due to their desire to avoid exposure to sunlight. This guy's voice. The reason they dislike sunlight is because of their defective artificial skin. Long-term exposure to ultraviolet rays causes overproduction of melanocytes in the epidermis of their artificial skin, leading to a form of skin cancer with the characteristics of melanoma. In other words, what we call simple sunburn is fatal to them. This relationship between ultraviolet rays and their artificial skin should give us a way to track them down. It should take at least six more months before they can develop a form of skin which overcomes this defect. These conclusions suggest several useful methods for locating and identifying snatchers. One, investigate skin condition. Check for any evidence of melanoma. Two, check for odor. Cancer cells secrete a unique foul odor. Three, the presence of pollen. Snatchers are believed to hide in areas plentiful in Snow 9, a snow-like bioengineered pollen crystal. As such, Snow 9 can always be detected in places they appear. Snow 9 is an allergen causing throat pain and sneezing. Four, 
possession of sunscreen. In order to protect their skin from ultraviolet rays, snatchers use sunscreen even in the dead of winter. This is due to sunscreen's ability to block ultraviolet rays. Of these techniques, one in four should prove particularly useful. In addition, besides working to prevent this skin cancer, snatchers maintain facilities for treating artificial skin, which has actually become cancerous. I have succeeded in identifying the hospital where this is performed. P.S. Watch out for a bounty hunter named Random Hajil. Oh shit. It's the guy. It's the guy from the Konami spoiler. Random Hajil, eh? Interesting. So that's it, eh? He found their weak point. And no doubt, John was killed because they learned that he had found their hospital. I see, I see. There is a bottle, a photograph, and a chessboard on the shelf. Still full, it appears to be new. It's a photograph of Jean Jacques Gibson. San Mato with the 45 months. Thank you very much. Cheers. chess set. The pieces are very neatly arranged. My dad really liked chess, but he always seemed disappointed because I couldn't play. Now analyze it. It is a sunscreen. It's the standard type, designed to block ultraviolet rays. There's a sticker on the bottle. This is probably from the place where it was bought. Hmm. It says, the store with everything. Plato's Cavern. Plato's Cavern, eh? Now we know the connection. So this is the sunscreen that Gibson was talking about, eh? Is it okay if we take this? Go right ahead. I've stored the sunscreen. Okay, let's investigate the photo. The picture seems to be a few years old. Jean looks rather young. Katrina, do you mind if I borrow this picture for a few days? No, go right ahead. I've stored John's picture. What's wrong with Alice? Is uh -oh. there something out there? A snatcher, maybe. Oh shit. Katrina, you stay here. This is the garden. She seems frightened of something. Good dog. Good girl. Alice, what's the matter? The thicket over there is moving. I'm not picking anything up from the other side of that ditch. It's not the wind. Something appears to be in the thicket. Stupid bird. I like the lights. Those street lights are pretty funky looking. Okay, I think we can, uh, I think we can leave. The glowing collar, yeah, it's pretty cool. Oh, do you have to leave already? Will you please come back again sometime? I'll be waiting for you. Let me give you my address and video phone number. Now give me a call if anything comes up. Thanks again, Mr. Seed. Take care.
Okay, 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 okay. So now I think we can finally head to Plato's Cavern and the legendary Outer Heaven. Alright, now heading to Plato's Cavern. By the way, um, when we finish up Snatcher, we will probably move on to the MSX game. And I'll likely be doing both of those as well. Metal Gear 1 and Metal Gear 2. And then DRK should be taken over for MGS1. I'll be back for 2. Uh, he'll be doing 4. Etc. Ah, it's that logo. I get it. It's more like a small city than one store. Everything in this area appears to be part of Plato's Cavern. The whole place is crawling with rather questionable types. That's the logo for Plato's Cavern. A black market with billboards. They're pretty daring. It's one of those unwritten understandings. Gillian, try to avoid making eye contact with anybody around here. Okay. Smell. Uh, smells good. That scent is coming from the food vendors. Smells good, doesn't it? I'm getting a little hungry. Hey, get out of the way. Don't just stand there in the middle of the road. Ouch! I'm feeling hungry. Food stand. There are a lot of food stands. Pizza, sushi, hamburgers, hot dogs, Neo Kobe pizza. Neo Kobe pizza? What's that? It's a new type of pizza where you drop your favorite pizza into a special boiling soup. And that's Neo Kobe pizza? I wonder if it's any good. What do you mean? Its appearance has almost put the other food vendors out of business. Oh shit, what was that? What's that vendor selling? Well, uh, you know. Uh, something dangerous? Well... Gillian, tell me. Uh, you see, I just couldn't help but stare at the gorgeous curves on that street vendor's cart over there. Hey, get out of the way! Don't just stand there in the middle of the road. I didn't realize you had a latent appliance fetish, Gillian. There are so many uh, bits of dialogue for food stand here. And this opens up another Easter egg. If you keep going for food stand. <laughs> I didn't realize... Oh, wait. At least I thought it did. Maybe you have to look at something else as well. Sure doesn't seem like Japan. Somebody over there is calling. Can't they move? It's live art. It's really popular at the moment. Live art. It's a form of performance where the artists recreate famous paintings on the street using their bodies. That must be that must be Munches the Scream. Munches, monks, mooks. <laughs> Yo, oh look, you can actually see him at the end there. Munch's Odyssey. Uh, let's see. Is it my imagination, or does that, or does that look something like the Konami logo? They're all probably under the same management. Hey, get out of the way! Don't just stand there in the middle of the road.
Hey, now we can get it if we go back to smell after that. Why don't we try Neo Kobe pizza? Hmm, sounds good. Here we go. All right, let's try one of these floating pizza things. Sounds good to me. Uh, give us two regular Neo Kobe pizzas. Two coming up? You've got to put it in the soup yourself, okay? Okay. Here we go, Metal. Here's yours. Let's put them in on the count of three, okay? They get bland and soggy if they stay in too long. No problem. Ready? One, two, three! Very good! Now in a few seconds, they'll come floating up. When they do, pull yours out right away, okay? Don't mess it up. I'm ready. Come on up, little fellas. Hey, here comes one. Oh, that's mine. Come here, you. Nice snag there, Metal. Hey, where's mine? Oh, this is unusual. Oh. I wonder what the problem is. I want my pizza. Where's my pizza? <laughs> What's the problem? Yours not coming back up? My pizza? Hey, really sorry about that. Happens every now and then. You'll forgive us there, won't you now, buddy? Oh. <sighs> Gillian, perhaps we should go. My Neo Kobe pizza. It sank just like the rest of this city's gonna. Let's get going, Gillian. <laughs> I can't believe that. I'll never waste my money on one of those stupid things again. Alright, alright, alright. I think we can head into Plato's Cavern. Inside Plato's Cavern. May I help you? Okay, okay, okay. Hold on one sec, guys. So, we need a mask. Uh, to get into Outer Heaven. My goodness, they really do have quite a selection. One can probably find anything here. Where'd you get that? Well, you know. Really? Well, you know your stuff. Outer Heaven is that really hot masquerade club. These full face masks of ours are sold under an, ex under an exclusive arrangement with Outer Heaven, you know. During their masquerade time, you have to have one of our masks or you can't get in. Alabama Care Man with the three months. Thank you. Oh my, they have those special full face masks here. Look, they have masks of Egyptian mummies and those Easter Island faces as well. They seem to be very well made. You've got an eye for fine art, my friend. Those are our pride and joy, our special full face masks. I'm afraid that's all we have left. Well, can we get one of those? A full face mask, eh? Which one will it be? They're all so good. Handmade by Rick Bakery himself, you know. Uh, let's go for the mummy. I usually go for the other one. Thanks, that'll be 2,000 credits, please. Okay. Metal, let's head out. Thanks again, come back soon. We've left the store. Uh, okay. To outer heaven we go. Whoosh. 
Love this theme. This is Outer Heaven. Welcome to Outer Heaven. Table for one. <laughs> Welcome to Outer Heaven. Table for one. We really have to make that our sub sound, I think. Or for new subs. Love this theme. He's wearing a wolfman mask. Looks like a movie set or something. It's a 200 degree holographic poster of Isabella Velvet. I would really like to have one. Isabella Velvet? Otherwise known as the Marilyn Monroe of the 21st century? She's here? Wow! I can't believe we can meet her. She's almost never seen in public. Isabella Rossellini, Blue Velvet. Uh, cloudy Clad Strife. Thank you for gifting a sub to Monkey Meatloaf. So many places are so tightly packed in, it's almost difficult to tell the different ones apart. You don't want to bother with those other places. They're sheer boredom compared to Outer Heaven. 31 subs to go. We're getting close. After all, we can offer things that those other places can't. Hey, Karushi, thank you for the kind words. You mean illegal activities? Well, some people may use that terminology, but... Uh, cloudy Clad Strife. Thank you for gifting a sub to Lightmare Live. Cheers. Okay. Uh, let me just think for a second. I think we can just go straight inside. Oh yeah. Ah, wait a moment, please. We're in the middle of our masquerade hour. You'll need some kind of mask or costume if you want to go in. Hobo with the five gifted subs as well. Thank you. An anonymous gifter with the five gifted subs as well. Thank you. 20 more. Thanks a lot, guys. No exceptions. You'll have to wear a mask from Plato Caverns to get in. Plato's Cavern, rather. Uh, let's put it on. Alright, let's try on the mummy mask. Oh, that looks great on you. Adam, with the five gifted subs as well. Thank you. Inside outer heaven. Cloudy with the gifted sub to Never Mac One as well. Cheers. There's Isabella strutting her stuff. Let's take a look around here. Holy shit, Jamaicans. Well, it looks like we've reached our goal. Hold on, hold on, hold on.
Hold up, hold up, hold up. I'm just creating a poll here. Uh, honorable Death as well. Thank you for the sub. Oh shit, Venomous with the five gifted subs as well. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Jamaicans again as well with the big 20. Thank you, Colonel as well with the gifted sub to, to, uh, to Stapman. I'm not sure if I caught that. Cloudy, Adam. Hobo, another anonymous five as well. Thanks a lot, guys. Okay. Holy shit. My god. Guys, guys, the generosity. How do I pronounce this name? Hey, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Or however I pronounce that, thank you for the five gifted subs. Jad Tech with the five gifted subs as well, thank you. Cloudy with the gifted sub as well to Adam Blue. Rocky with the prime sub as well, thank you Rocky. My god, thank you everyone. Holy shit. Hold on. I have this poll ready, but I'm just going to show the emotes as well. One more time so you know what you're voting for. Cruise as well with the sub. Thank you. Oppener. Gifting the sub to Resident Snake as well. Thank you. All right, hold on. So, we have a few choices when it comes to emotes. Number one is Kojima Reedus. We'll be voting for this in a second. I just want to show you the examples before I link the poll. We have Kojima and Reedus. OHN Hug. But I reckon it'll get more use than just for Hug because it's kind of like a smug emote as well. We have The End, which is maybe OHN Excite. I reckon it's going to be between this one and Hug. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but it'll probably be, be between this one and Hug. The other one is just the plain baby with the thumbs up. And the other one is Mads getting a blowjob. Hold on. Click the link in chat now and vote. You have five minutes. Five minutes to vote. Yeah, 
mods, you can keep posting it like every minute or so. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Add. I think more subs are coming in. Hold on, let me check. Cloudy clad with a gifted sub to Mr. President. I guess all the other subs are just delayed coming in from all those gift bombs. Thank you again, everyone. Let me just check um, the emote settings and all that stuff just to get this ready as well. Keep those votes coming in. Check the dashboard as well. See what the next goal is for the next emote. Another five pack. Thank you very much. Our next goal is two thousand eight hundred. One more slot at two thousand eight hundred. I think it's uh, I think it's almost time to close. I think the poll I think the poll is going to close any second. Kojima and Redis wins out. The end is in second place. 234 votes for Kojima Redis. 183 votes for the end. 85 for Mad. 47 for Baby. I had a feeling that's how it was going to work. But if we make it to 2800, we'll be able to get the end in there as well. Cloudy 
as well. Thank you for gifting a sub to Keck Charisma. Much appreciated. Alright, just give me another couple of minutes, guys, while I upload this. Just bear with me while we're getting all this sorted. these subs again i'm not sure who's subbed since but i'll get around to thanking everyone as well thank you so much guys it's crazy 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 generosity thank you Okay, OHN Hug has officially uploaded. Uh, it'll probably take around 10 minutes for it to register. For it to go through. No, it won't be up yet. Just give give it give it like 10 minutes and it should be up for everyone. I might actually have to wait until DRK gets back to do that because he was the one who set up the whole sub goal thing. And I'm not sure if I can change it on my end. Uh, let's see. One second. seems to be pretty easy to change. Hold on. There we go. That should be it. I think we can finally progress. Uh, let me just thank a few more people before we get started. Colonel, with the $5 donation. This tip goes to the dancer on stage. Thank you. <laughs> well, I guess I could also be the dancer on stage, metaphorically. Uh, Cloudy, as well. Oh, wait, no, I already thanked you. Hold on, I'm about to sneeze. Uh, 
Uh, Legacy, I don't think I thanked you for your 30 months. Thank you. Uh, Gurko, again with the five and the fucking massive 20 bomb. Thank you so much for that, Gurko. I just want to make sure I got everyone else as well. I think I did. So many, so many gift packs. Thanks a lot, guys. Okay, I think we can finally move on. Let's see. Okay. One sec. Yeah, just give it a few minutes. Give it like another five or ten minutes. And OHN hug should be up. Everyone is dressed as a character from a classic late 20th century video game. The people who run this place must be really into old time nostalgia. So we have all these Konami characters in here. Sparkster, Goman, Mr. Ueda. Contra and the Castlevania pair. Let's take a look at the Castlevania pair. Those two are pretty suspicious looking. They appear to be dressed as characters from the, uh, from the famous Castlevania series of video games from the late 20th century. Yeah, wow, that really takes me back. I remember spending hours playing. I didn't even take time off to sleep. Wait a minute, what am I talking about? I wasn't even born then. I must be thinking about something else. But I'm sure I remember playing it. I remember I was so pissed because I couldn't jump off the stairs. Everyone felt that way, Gillian. It was very frustrating. <laughs> according, to according to statistical records, the teenage suicide rate increased dramatically in that year. <laughs> Jesus, Metal Gear, way to, way to make it dark. That took a turn. Let's see. The other customers are all dressed up in various blah, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's the guy over behind the counter? He appears to be the manager of the place. Savor the moment, Gillian. Her dancing is really something special. I see. You weren't kidding, were you? That's Simon Belmont and, uh, and the master of evil, Dracula. Sartor, thank you for the 11 months. Cheers. That customer with the spiky haircut is dressed as Gomon, the mystical ninja. I'm not too, I'm not familiar with Gomon. I never played Castlevania as a kid either, unfortunately. I played a little bit of Symphony of the Night, but years after it released. I, I need to go back and play the uh, classic Castlevanias, I think. Goemon. You're right. Boy, that was really a great game. Those designers were really brilliant. The Goemon haircut became a real cultural icon. Japanese motorcycle gangs started to all wear their hair like that. the emote uploaded yet? There's no need to spam it. If it hasn't uploaded, just try it every now and then. You know what, guys? Let me just take a quick break with all this reading. My, uh, my throat is getting very dry. My mouth is very dry. And I'm still recovering from that cold as well, so, yeah. Just give me, uh, just give me a minute or two, chat. I'm just gonna get some water.
Shit, I come back and the emote is live. Nice. <laughs> cool. It was really hard to get the level of detail on two faces. But I think it just about works. You know, oftentimes it's hard enough to get detail on just one face when it's down to when it's down to emote size. Give yourselves a round of applause, chat, or a, a hug. Give, your, give yourselves a, a round of hugs. Thanks again, everyone, for just the crazy generosity. Is this Bud's Fried Chankin? Fried Chankin? I didn't create the emotes, no. Carson drew it, created the emotes, but I worked with him on them. It's a collaborative sort of thing when you work with him. I sort of direct him through it and tell him what I want and we bounce ideas back and forth and things like that. He also did the new splash screens and logos and all of that for us as well. Carson is meta gear. No, no. Meta also does uh, some emotes for us as well. But most of them are done by Carson. Bop, bop, bop. Hold on, chat. Now, I think we're finally good to continue. Other than us, the clientele here looks a little rough. I want to look at some other uh, customers here. How about the Contra guys? That customer is dressed as the Contra character. I'm starting to sense a theme here. How about you, Gillian? Yeah, me too. I guess you and I are pretty out of place among all these Konami characters, huh, Metal Gear? Hmm, I wouldn't say that. As a matter of fact, I suspect that we fit in much better than you realize. What the heck are you talking about, Metal? These are all fictional video game characters. We're the only real ones in here. Anything else from the Contra guys? That's the Contra guy. We shouldn't mess with him too much. Mm, what about Mr. Ueda? That fellow is dressed as a character from the controversial video game, Lethal Enforcers. It's caused quite a stir in the 1990s when two senators from the United States started a two-man crusade against video game violence. 
Those same two senators were later voted out of office in a humiliating landslide, landslide when their constituents decided that they wanted representatives who would do something about real violence on the streets. Oh yeah, I believe that game also spawned a whole generation of imitations, didn't it? Yep, that's true. A lot of companies produced inferior copies, but none matched the success of the original. As a matter of fact, that game was used in the academy for training purposes. It's amazing how people can use a simple video game as an excuse for all of society's problems. It's always easier to point the finger at, 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 at the other guy than it is to point it at yourself. Human nature hasn't changed at all since then, huh? And not much has changed since, sadly, since this game came out. It's still happening. Let me take another drink. Let's investigate some of these guys. Hey, what are you doing? The customer wasn't carrying anything suspicious. Oh yeah, they look at you here when you investigate them as well. So you look now when we investigate the Contra guys, turn around. Watch it. What's your problem? Let's call over Isabella. Hey, Isabella, over here. Uh-oh. Hi there, boys. I'm Isabella Velvet. Is there anything I can do for you? A mummy and a robot? <laughs> Don't lose your November. Oh my god. What a knockout. And that leather outfit. What's wrong? Do you find me attractive? Jeez. Look at the size of those eyes on her. It's amazing what 21st century technology is capable of. What's wrong, Gillian? Gotta love these actresses. Jamie looks like a little boy compared to this woman. <laughs> Gillian, what are you mumbling about? Please don't stare at me like that. I'm shy and you're embarrassing me. You're a pretty good looking guy. <laughs> That's horrendous. It's glorious. Passionate lips. Fair skinned. Uh, I'm wearing a mask. I wouldn't mind letting you take me out for dinner or something. What about after dinner? Well, that all depends on you. Metal, did you hear that? Don't forget that we're in the middle of an investigation. Just relax, Metal. I'll buy you a cute little robot to play with later. So, Isabella, when would you like to go out? What? D did you think I was serious? I was just kidding. What? J just kidding? Come on. With that mummy mask? I can't even tell what you look like. Well, it would appear that she really took you for a ride. Smash! Ouch! Swift wind with the seven months. Thank you. That's about enough, right? Consider yourself lucky for being able to get uh, such a close look at me. I'll investigate her. No, I think it's best if I handle it. I can manage by myself. What's wrong? Aren't you going to investigate me? No, that's all right. Oh shit. I skipped it. Such bad jokes. <laughs> At least they're self-aware here. Let's ask her. Uh, Gibson. Actually, no. Phone number. Isabella, would you mind giving me your phone number? No way. Uh, 
Isabella, would you mind giving me your phone number? I'm afraid I can't tell you. <laughs> I can't believe you would call Jamie a little boy. Yeah, he's a bit of a dick. He's not as bad as, um... What's his face? Jonathan. In police knots, at least. Uh, Isabella, would you mind giving me your phone number? I'm afraid I can't tell you. Okay, I think that's all we're gonna get. Yeah, Jonathan is just an absolute dog. Uh... I mean, obviously, it's Kojima who's the real dog, but, uh... <laughs> Jonathan's definitely a lot worse than Gilead. I don't know who you're talking about. Do you have a picture or something? Uh, well, I think we do have a picture. Gibson's photo. This guy. I might have met him somewhere. No, I can't remember. She seems like she might be able to remember. Let me show it again. Take a careful look, okay? Hmm. Oh, that's right. This was the guy who got sick after eating buffalo. I remember it. Wing Zero. Thank you for gifting a sub to Outer Heavens Community. Uh, why didn't it say the name on the top one there? Okay, whatever. Wing Zero, thank you for gifting a sub to Caro... Caro Suerte? Caro Suerte? However that's pronounced, thank you. See you later, uh, Omaru. Uh, let's ask about Gibson. Well, it was just the other day. It wasn't masquerade hours, so I remember his face pretty clearly. He seemed to be waiting around for one of our regular customers. A regular? He was going out of his way to eat buffalo, then he spat up blood. I was really grossed out. You say he was waiting for someone? Well, I suppose it was more like he was following him. He left as soon as the other guy did. Do you mind telling me a little about him? I don't know his name, but he was in here all the time, especially when we weren't running Masquerade Hour. Outside of Masquerade Hour. So that means you've seen his face then. Do you remember it? I think so. All right, Metal. Let's have her come down to headquarters with us. We need to use Jordan and put together a montage. We can't take her to headquarters. Why not? Since she's a famous star, if the media gets hold of the story and starts a fuss, It'll impede our investigation. If the Snatchers were to learn what we're up to... What are you mumbling about? This is really a delicate issue. Although inconvenient, we should, uh, we should take down her description and then go back to headquarters to build a montage on our own. Okay. Uh... Man's description. Do you try to remember his distinguishing characteristics? Gillian, keep the, keep the description in mind. Afterwards, we can use it to put together a montage. Okay, what about the facial shape? What was the overall shape of his face? He had kind of a bony look. What about the eyes? He had this real piercing gaze, a rather threatening look. And what kind of nose did he have? It was pointy, like mine. How about his mouth? He had thin lips, I think. How was he wearing his hair? It was sort of naturally flowing towards the back of his head. And he had a big widow's peak. About how old would you say he was? He looked like he was in his 30s. Okay, I think we have everything. Thanks very much, you've been quite helpful. I hope you can use this information. Hey, what's up, Dave? How's it going? Uh, what about your taste in men? What kind of men do you like? 
Let's see. Somebody really masculine who you can depend on. You know the kind of guy who grabs you and says, Come on, baby. Follow me. <laughs> Somebody with well-formed opinions. But I hate guys who aren't flexible. Well, that about rules you out, Gillian. You shut up. What about career preferences? Well, investigators are really strong and masculine types. I was always a big fan of crime dramas when I was little. Still, it really doesn't matter as long as you really like the guy. Future projects. That's right. You know I have a new holographic movie that starts shooting next month. And I have to start studying my lines. Hold on. One sec, guys. So... Is that it? And I've got a virtual reality job coming up, too. And a couple of offers for some TV subs. You're quite busy, aren't you? Okay, I think we can leave now. You've been a tremendous help. Thank you very much. I'm glad I could be. Now, if, if you'll excuse me. We should use this information to build a montage of, that, of the suspect and then run it through Jordan to see if there are any matches. You mean like building a composite photograph? It would be nice if Isabella would come back to headquarters with us. Well, I guess we'll just have to have her take a look at it later. Alright. <clears throat> Man, it's harder to read like this when I have this cold still lingering. And I'm going to have to read through Metal Gear and Metal Gear 2 as well. Thankfully, Metal Gear 1 doesn't have much dialogue. Uh, 500. Here you go. 500 credits. Oh, we could have... Uh, we could have ordered food. Uh, we might be able to do that when we come back later. I don't think we'll have time for police knots, uh, Polly. Again, Gilead, take your mask off. You'll be laughed at if you wear that out here. Oh, good point. There we go. It's off. Uh, okay, back to Junker HQ. Does Kojima still have the Snatcher license? No. Konami. Konami owns all the IPs that his name that his name uh, is attached to. <clears throat> okay. How was your day, Gillian? How's your investigation going? Learn anything new? Uh, let's head down to the computer room. If there's any information you wish to study, you can look it up using the Jordan system. Let's do it. I am Jordan, Junker Headquarters host AI computer system. Please insert your ID card. What? Has this thing got a personality? Let's see. Okay, Junker card going in. I guess it should have sounded less robotic. If uh, Gillian was taken aback. Uh, well, at least let me in. Maybe in the future I'll try doing voices for all the characters, like different voices, instead of just narrating. So I think I can do a fairly decent Cunningham. And just that standard robot voice for Metal Gear would be fine. Uh, create montage. One sec, guys. Uh, 
All right, so let's try constructing a montage photograph of the suspect. You can use the scan database command to search for possible matches when completed. Okay, facial shape. Isabella said the guy had sort of a bony look, didn't she? Uh, which one? Five looks pretty bony. Two, three. I think it's two. What was it that Isab Isabella said? The eyes. Piercing gaze. Six, I think. What kind of nose did Isabella say he had? A nose just like hers. Pointy nose, number one. I think the face is wrong. What kind of mouth did Isabella say he had? <laughs> the options you have here. Let's go with six just for the hell of it. To see what it looks like. Nice. Uh, let's go with five. I want to see what it looks like. Ah, I didn't notice the, the mustache. It's uh, three, I think. I think. The Alpha One network will be searched for possible matches. No matches located. Fuck. The facial shape, yeah. Three? Oh shit, we're in. Ba 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 da. All right, we did it. Good work, Gillian. Two possible matches for montage photograph located. Possibility one, probability of match 70%. Ivan Rodriguez, air surfer, amateur, 27 years old. Address, 522 South Itiado SN District. Caution, non-municipal data administration district. Possibility 2, probability of match, 65%, displaying data. Freddie Nielsen, taxi driver, no company affiliation, 29 years old. Address, Dormitor Okamoto Apartments, 202-378, New Okamoto MR District. Family, wife, Lisa, age 25. Now printing montage photograph. Gillian, the montage has been printed. Now we're in business. It's a simple two-dimensional rendering of Jordan's three-dimensional data, but it should prove useful anyway. Well, we've got their addresses. Shall we pay these gentlemen a visit? One of these men is no doubt the snatcher who killed John. We've almost got him now. Let's go investigate the suspects. Cloudy, thank you for gifting a sub to Core416. Cheers. Board of the Turbo Cycle, where would you like to go? 
So... I think we will go to Ivan's apartment first. Very Dave with the 47 months and the 45 month streak. Keep fucking. Thank you. Much appreciated, Dave, as always. We've arrived at Ivan Rodriguez's apartment. Okay. This is Ivan Rodriguez's neighborhood. According to the data in Jordan, this should be his neighborhood. Ugh, this place is a real slum. District data retrieval networks haven't been installed in this area. As such, there is virtually no data on the area in this Alpha 1 network. This region is almost completely isolated. Uh, hold on a second. The place is utterly filthy. There are a few free men here. Free men? What are they? Their actual lifestyle is not unlike that of the homeless. See, they're gathered around a fire. How are they different from the homeless? Unlike the less fortunate, these people have chosen to live like this, often leaving good jobs to do so. It appears to be a form of rebellion to, uh, towards the over-control of information by the central authorities. They are one of Neo Kobe's biggest problems. Maybe they know something. Why don't we ask them? about Ivan. Hey, you guys. What? I need to talk to you. Yeah? Could you tell me anything you know about a man named Ivan Rodriguez? Was there anybody named, uh, was there anybody named that around here? You lied to me and you live to regret it. Now, now, calm yourself. I'm trying to remember. Well, can you recall anything? Not yet. Jumper ID. <laughs> Please give me a job. Give me a job? You don't want a job. I guess I guess that was tongue in cheek. Like give me a break. As in, you know, sarcastic as in he really doesn't want a job. I don't know. I'm gonna guess that he wants a job. I don't think he wants a job though. They, they're, they're choosing to live like this, like we just heard. Like we were just told. Uh, oh wait, no, we have the montage photo, of course. We'll show them the montage photo. Do you know this man? Hmm, that's that idiot, Ivan. Yeah, that's the fool himself. Where does Ivan live? in apartment 301 of this building. That's the kid with that weird board thing, right? You mean the guy who's into Sky, don't you? I hear he's always surfing. Oh, that guy, huh? I'm not sure I understand what you're talking about. Have you heard anything about Snatchers in this area? Snatchers? Don't be stupid. Even if there were any around here, you think they'd come after us? There's nobody around here worth going after. How long have you been living around here? I used to be part of the development team that put together the Alpha 1 network. So you were a programmer, huh? What happened? One day I took a peek at some secret data in Alpha 1. That's impossible. Security on the system is... It was possible for me. Anyhow, I saw enough garbage and scum on people and this society and that file to last me a lifetime. People, they can sink pretty low, you know. You may be right. Why don't you become free too? Join us here. 
You ever get sick of it all, just drop by. I've got to get my pass back before I can become free. Alpha One has data on the development team in there. Take a look at it when you get a chance. Alright, let's head up to room 301. Hey, what's up, Philosophy? How's it going? Third floor, eh? Well, he won't be able to escape out the window. I have my low and high set to zero now, Philosophy. Um, I think maybe I want a little bit more low. Maybe a little, maybe I want it to be a little bit bassier. I'm not sure. Philosophy was a lifesaver, by the way, chat. He helped me set up my new compressor and mic and all of that stuff. So uh, you can thank Philosophy for the new uh, audio setup, the new mic setup. Okay. We're at the door to apartment 301. It says apartment 301, Ivan Rodriguez. It's an old style door with a small peephole viewer installed. There's an, elect there's an electric meter. It appears to be for this apartment. This is definitely Ivan Rodriguez's apartment. Gillian, why don't we try knocking? I love this knocking sound effect. There's no answer. That's an intimidating knock. Let's knock again. Okay. Ba -da -ba -da -da. Wait a minute. Electricity is being used. I read motion. Somebody is in the apartment. Oh boy. Ivan, open up. That's funny. Who's there? The eyes, the shifty eyes. <laughs> Ivan Rodriguez, I'm a junker. Open up. I've got a few questions to ask you. What do you want? First, you open this door. All right, all right, just relax. Sorry it took so long. Oh! Don't even think about it. What a Can shot. He has only lost consciousness. Excellent shot, Gillian, hitting him in the hand like that. That's not exactly how I planned it. He looks just like the montage, but he is quite a suntan. Well then. Without a scanning warrant, I cannot perform a full analysis, but a visual inspection reveals no cancerous skin lesions, despite his deep tan. Hold on, one sec, guys. Hey, what did you come out shooting for? You're a snatcher, aren't you? You got the wrong guy, I swear. He seems to be behaving strangely. Don't let your guard down. Is it possible for a snatcher to get a suntan like this? This room's really dark. I don't see anything suspicious, though. The room is quite filthy. Wait, there's some trophies over there. 
says runner-up, 12th Neo Kobe Air Surfing Championships. I get it, he's an air surfer. It's a cheap ray gun purchased on the black market. Saturday Night RG-11. This is a toy gun that has been modified to fire real shells. A very low-grade weapon. It appears to be a real trophy. It's just plated, so there's no real gold in it. Hmm, okay. option. Threaten with gun. Okay. S stop that, alright? Somebody save me! <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Hey, here's something new. Aged organic materials and typical secretory organisms are all I read. There's no evidence in his garbage that it, uh, that he is a snatcher. All right, buddy, oh, fuck. time to wake up. Well, man, don't shoot, don't shoot! Gillian, while your earlier shot is justifiable as self-defense, killing this suspect would violate Section 5, Article 2 of the Junker Bylaws. You must first have concrete evidence that he is a snatcher. <laughs> Damn! We should search his bathroom. We may find sunscreen there. Good point. Okay, let's move into the bathroom. Snatcher scum! Wait, there's a bottle here. Maybe it's sunscreen. My goodness, this place is just as disgusting as the living room. It really doesn't look that bad. Like, look at the floor. Look at the bathtub. It really it looks quite clean. I'm not seeing any dirt. It's all red. Well, I would think that's the light. <laughs> oh, is it actually different in the other versions? That's a shame. It's it's a Sega CD issue. Uh, Bellex with the sub. Thank you very much. Interesting. So is it? It's just a Sega CD issue. Metal, analyze the contents of this for me, will you? It's not sunscreen, it's suntan oil. It shows no signs of having been used recently. Sunscreen and suntan oil are like day and night. What's so funny? Just check it out for me. Hmm, there's a crack on the bottom of the board. Something seems to be jutting out. It's a plastic bag. Some kind of powder in it. This. These are illegal drugs! And not only that, it looks like Liquid Sky, that powerful stimulant that powerful stimulant that's killing a lot of its addicts. Storm, thank you for gifting a sub to Tommy Potter. Much appreciated. Great timing on the sub alert as well, yeah.
It appears completely unwashed. It's soiled in a striped pattern. Yeah, like we're not seeing any of this. It doesn't look soiled at all. But I guess we can imagine it. Oh my, what's this? What? Did you find a snake scale or something? This filth. I'll be having nightmares about it. Not only is it filthy, but it, is, but it has become discolored. Uh, let's see. Ah, residue in tub. Here we go. I detect numerous organic residue and organisms in the water residue here. There is no evidence that he is a snatcher here. But there is a snatcher here. So that about explains everything, doesn't it? Yes. It appears that Ivan was simply trying to conceal the fact that he is a drug user. An air surfer, huh? Plenty of suntan oil. Out there soaking up lots of ultraviolet rays. And tanned quite brown by those rays as well. But he doesn't have so much as a pimple. Not what I'd call your typical artificial skin user. Ivan is apparently not a snatcher. All right, buddy, get up. Shit! Hey, I only do liquid sky, dude. Just once in a while. I swear, I don't touch anything else. Don't hurt me, man. Come on. Call me an ambulance, will ya? I'm no cop. I'm a junker. I couldn't care less if you're a buyer, a pusher, or what. What I want to know is if you're a snatcher or human. Gillian, Ivan's <laughs> skin is healthy. There is no way he could be a snatcher and tan like that without developing melanoma. Oh shit. However, HQ has just transmitted us a scanning warrant. Therefore, under the provisions of Section 18 of the Civil Code, Snatchers and the Protection of Citizens' Rights, I will hereby commence a full bioscan of Ivan. Analysis complete. Ivan Rodriguez is a completely normal homo sapien. Oh, I keep telling you, dude, I ain't no snatcher or whatever. Now, would you please get me a doctor? Why don't you just put some of your drugs on it? Oh! Hey, I wasn't doing anything wrong, man. <laughs> the friendly boys from Narcotics will be here any time now. Save your breath for them. Come on, dude, I ain't done nothing. I'm just in the air surfing. I just wanted to win the competition, man. <laughs> I needed some money for that, okay? Hey, it's just drugs, man. I just wanted to win the competition, man. Well, Ivan Rodriguez sure wasn't our man. Too bad for him that he happened to look like the snatcher we're after. That leaves Freddy Nielsen. All right. Now for our second suspect. We've boarded the turbo cycle. Where would you like to go? Let's do it. This is Freddie Nielsen's building. According to the data, he lives on the second floor apartment, 202. Well, this is our last suspect. Will he be the one we're looking for? Bada bada now. The second floor, right? Let's head up. I'll be playing Metal Gear 1 and 2, most likely, uh, DX. DRK might be taking over for Metal Gear 2, but it'll probably be me doing both of them. This is it, Apartment 202. Don't forget what happened at Ivan's. Be very careful, Gillian. Alright, I'll knock. 
There's no answer. Maybe no one, maybe no one's home. I wonder if somebody's in there. It says 202, Freddie and Lisa Nielsen. Nielsen appears on the nameplate. The door has a peephole. It's a very well-built metal door. There's no mistake, this is definitely Nielsen's apartment. The door is locked. The nameplate has an IC chip for data confirmation purposes. There's no mistake. I read motion. Someone is inside. Oh shit. Here we go again. Open up, snatcher scum! There's no answer. I wonder if he's really not home. Someone's in there. I definitely picked up motion. There's no answer. Maybe they can't hear us. Hey in there, open up. I'm a junker. I've got a few questions to ask you. There's no answer, is there? I'm a junker. Open the door. Uh. Who is it? I heard a voice. in there. Open up. I'm a junker. I've got a few questions to ask. Huh? I'm a junker. Open the door. A junker? All right. Just a minute. Gillian, please use extreme caution. Huh? A woman? I'm with the junker agency. Is this the home of Freddie Nielsen? Yes, it is. And you are? I'm his wife. Exactly what can I do for you? Mm, that eye looks a little bit suspicious. What are you covering up there? Mm, pretty good looking. Well, investigator, you have good taste in women. What's with that look on your face? You don't believe me, do you? If you want to scan me, you'll have to show me a scanning warrant. Without one of those, junkers can't scan civilians. I know the law. As a matter of fact, we are investigating your husband on the suspicion that he may be a snatcher. Freddy? Freddy a snatcher? That's ridiculous. I can't believe that. What? My husband a snatcher? Where did you get a story like that? I have a montage photo I'd like you I'd like you to look at. Can I take a look at that? That's my husband. I can't believe my husband is a snatcher. There must be some mistake. ask about Freddy. That's why, we, that's why we need you to tell us about your husband. He's out right now. I'm not sure what time he'll be back. Have you noticed anything strange about your husband lately? Well, now that you mention it, lately he hasn't been in the mood to... Well, uh, you know. Could you be more specific? Uh, you see, he drives a man taxi. But lately, he's been taking walks at night without going to work. Walks at night. Okay. Well, now that you mention it, he has been acting a little strange lately. But a snatcher? Don't make me keep repeating myself, I have a terrible toothache.
Have you noticed any changes in your husband's body or health lately? No, his appetite's as big as ever. No, nothing. How about his skin? Anything odd? His skin? Well, I haven't seen much of it lately, but I'm sure it's fine. Your husband is a taxi driver. Is it one of those underground cabs? A black taxi? Are you trying to frighten me? So it is a black taxi, right? Yes, he drives a black taxi. So what? They'll probably be legalized in April, right? So what's the problem? That's not what we're worried about, ma'am. If your husband is a black taxi driver, then there are no records of his working hours, right? In other words, the only way to establish an alibi for him is to use it by the testimony of others. On Thursday around 8 p.m., was your husband at home or working? Uh, Thursday? Oh, that's right. That was one of his days off. He was home. He was watching the launch of the first colonial expedition to Mars, the Beagle Jerusalem, on TV. Are you sure about that? Yes, but that evening I went over to a friend's house. I wasn't with him all night. My friend's brother is the pilot of the Beagle, you know. Okay... What's this? There's some kind of map on the wall. This is a map of the city of Moscow. Moscow, huh? That place has been little more than a ghost town since the catastrophe. Yes, but this map was no doubt produced before the catastrophe. Uh, what is the meaning of this map? What's this map? I don't really know. My husband bought it and stuck it there about four months ago. Uh, I don't know if I'm buying it. Have you experienced any sneezing lately, even though you don't have a cold? Sneezing? I haven't had a cold yet this year. This montage photo was produced using a computer from the testimony of witnesses at a nightclub. Well, it does look like my husband, so... Hmm. This isn't enough to prove that our Freddy Nielsen is a snatcher. True. Without more evidence, we cannot get a scanning warrant. Uh, we'd like to take a look in your bathroom, if you don't mind. Oh, you need to use the bathroom? No, we'd like to investigate your bathroom. Really? Whatever. Please, go right ahead. Okay. This is Freddy's bathroom. Go right ahead. Check anything you want. I'll be out here. Hmm. There's no faucets. This is an unusual bathtub. Rather odd for a system bathtub, isn't it? A very attractive bathroom. Sparkling clean. It's filled with water. Filled with water. Nobody using it and it's filled with water? There are a number of bottles on the shelf. Look, you can see your reflection in the mirror. Jeez, I've always been such a handsome devil. Wait a minute, haven't we seen that bottle someplace before? What is this? That's the same container as the one we found at Jan's. Hold up. Alright, I'll analyze the contents of the bottle. There's no mistake. This is sunscreen. 
Sunscreen in the middle of winter, eh? And it looks like it's been used recently, too. There's no mistake. Freddy Nielsen is a snatcher. Gillian, with this much evidence, there will be no difficulty getting a scanning warrant. We've got you now, snatcher scum. <laughs> so, you figured it out, huh? Oh! Who's that? Know all about us, do you, Junker? That... that wound... Jean did that to her. Die, Junker! Ah! <laughs> oh jeez, those things don't go down easy. So, this is a snatcher, huh? I certainly hope it's dead. Good god. It appears to be dead. Damn, those things are tough as heck. Functions appear to have been completely terminated. So that skin tissue we found under Gibson's nails came from this woman, huh? So it was Lisa and Freddy who killed John. Freddy, that's right. So where's he? We can contact the junk collection team later. Let's get out of this apartment for now. We're outside now. What the? A light just came on. There's not supposed to be anybody in there. Perhaps Freddy has returned. Oh, God. There's only one entrance, and we're standing right next to it. How did he get in there? Shall we investigate? We're going back in, boys. Open up, snatch your scum! Oh, we can't knock. Okay, never mind. Uh, yell. Open up in there! This isn't working. The door is locked. That's funny, I could have sworn it wasn't locked. It's an electronic lock, someone must have activated it. This is a standard electronic lock. I can open, I can open this without too much difficulty. I'm reading motion, someone is in there. This appears to be the only way in or out of the apartment. Metal, open it. Okay, now establishing Alpha 1 link. Link made. Executing search for lock code of apartment 202. Hurry it up. Just a bit longer. I'm in Alpha 1's maintenance records for the MR district. Lock code found. Now opening the door. Good work. We're in the living room. There's no sign of anyone in the room. There's nothing on my infrared sensors either. I don't see Freddy anywhere. He doesn't appear to be in this room. It's in the same condition. I'm not picking up any sounds. Motion. I read motion coming from the bathroom. Metal, you ready? Let's go. This is Freddy's bathroom. Huh? The bathtub is empty. That thing was filled with water just a few minutes ago. I read motion. This room. Damn. Where is he? Oh, shit. Gillian, behind you! I've had it! Gillian! That was close. 
You're lucky I was here to save your skin. Who are you? Me? Random Haji. It's Sting. Bounty Hunter. Bounty Hunter? Yes, Gillian, a bounty hunter. As the Junker profession is so dangerous, their numbers have fallen dramatically over the past few years. As a result, the government decided to put a price on Snatcher's heads in order to encourage private citizens to cooperate in the effort to track them down. Naturally, these bounty hunters must register with the authorities. You said your name's Random, right? Uh, what did you do? Follow me here? Yeah, you got it. Investigations aren't my style. You track them down, I take them out. You have the legal obligation to state your bounty hunter registration number. Please do so now, immediately. <sighs> BH75001 Random Hajil. That's R A N D O M H A J I L E. BH75001 <laughs> Random Hajil. That's confirmed. I officially recognize you as a legal bounty Man, hunter. Man, he's cool. Wow. Gillian, records indicate that he has already disposed of three Snatchers just this month. Oh! Counting Freddy, that makes four. Four? I've been at this a lot longer than you have. Just relax, rookie. So, Junker Boy, let me give you a little tip. You might already know, but Snatchers' weak point is their artificial skin. If they sit out in the sun too long, they get cancer. That's why they set up a hospital to treat this little problem of theirs. You find it, you can take them out, roots and all. Where did you get all your information? Wait a sec, you stole it from Gibson, didn't you? That's not really important. But now that Gibson's out of the picture, I need you to get busy. I track them down and you junk them, is that the idea? Anyhow, it seems Gibson found that hospital. He must have left behind some information about it. What do you mean, seems? Don't you know anything about it? Hey, investigations are your job, right? I owe you one, Random. Yeah, I'll get it out of you later. See ya, Junker Boy. A Snatcher-controlled hospital, eh? There's bound to be more than a few of them in there. All right, that's the end of chapter one. Would you like to save your investigation up to this point? I shall. Now we get a recap, story recap, chapter one recap. For those of you that weren't here at the beginning, now you'll know what's going on. <laughs> okay, let's try to sort all this out. Metal Gear, would you mind helping out? Not at all. Now projecting recorded video images. Gibson calls in and you two immediately head for the abandoned factory in the M District. But when you arrived, Gibson had already been killed by someone or something at the factory. From hair and skin samples recovered from his body, you determined that the perpetrators were two snatchers, one male and one female. In addition, from a floppy disk containing notes from Gibson's investigation, you discovered that snatchers have a crucial defect. Gibson was apparently killed because he had learned about this weak point. And this weak point is a key difference between them and real humans. Their artificial skin cannot tolerate ultraviolet rays. Long-term exposure causes it to become cancerous, a form of melanoma. This severely limits the places and times that they can operate to midwinter, when daylight hours are their shortest, and of course at night. And it looks as if it will take at least six months for them to develop a new skin which overcomes this fault. So their biggest weak point was that they had to keep themselves protected from ultraviolet rays over the past six months. 
Hmm, Gibson really put his earlier training as a science cop to good use in figuring this one out. And that's why they use plenty of sunscreen, even in the middle of the winter. As a result of this, it becomes clear that there is one thing they must have to continue their survival. And that is medical facilities, where they can treat artificial skin which has become cancerous. And it appears that Gibson may have located a hospital used for this very purpose. In an effort to determine where Gibson had been investigating, you analyzed his stomach contents, found buffalo meat, and headed to the only place in the city that serves it, Outer Heaven. Hey! Isabella Chat. Velvet, a dancer at this place, That's us. gives you a description, which allows you to put together a montage of the man Gibson was trying to track down. You then ran this montage through the city's data bank using Jordan. And that gave you two suspects, Ivan Rodriguez and Freddie Nielsen. But from the condition of Ivan's skin, you determined that there was no possibility he could be a snatcher. There was no evidence at all of melanoma. But as he was in possession of Liquid Sky, you turned him over to narcotics. Following that, a search of Freddie Nielsen's home turned up large quantities of sunscreen. Nielsen's wife, Lisa Nielsen, turns out to be a snatcher, and you dispose of her. And you confirm that the skin cells found under Gibson's nails were from Lisa. Freddie Nielsen also turns out to be a snatcher, and you dispose of him as well. The hair sample that was found in Gibson's hand is confirmed as being from Freddie. So you are able to determine that these two snatchers, Freddie and Lisa, were the ones who killed Gibson. But then we have a problem. The bounty hunter who saved you, Seed, Random Hajil. An investigation uncovers that the information he provided when he filled out his bounty hunter registration was completely false. So who is this guy, friend or foe? What about the bank account he was having his bounty deposited into? It was a common account used for paying bounty, and the funds were retransferred from there. We couldn't learn anything from it. Thank you, Metal. And now for the real fun. The hospital that Gibson had tracked down. If we can hit that, we may be able to shut down this snatch operation of theirs. Or if we can find some kind of patient records there, we may be able to find them quite easily. So, Little John's memory might provide us with an important lead. That's right. If we're lucky, there may be something left that we can work with. Navigators record everything their junkers do, just in case. Just in case, huh? Well, this looks like one of those cases. Harry should have recovered it by now. Go see how he's doing. Seed, I'm counting on you to find this hospital. Let's do it. Bona. Bona. Second, making sure I'm up to date on everything. Where would you like to go? I think we need to go to engineering first. I do believe. About time you got here, Gillian. I've got little John's memory all ready for you. Were we able to get anything from it? Just relax. I'll put it on the monitor for you now. I'm afraid it was almost completely destroyed beyond recovery. Those snatchers, they sure do a thorough job. What do you mean? Wasn't there anything left? Like I said, just relax. I was able to get one video image out of it. I don't have the slightest what this is, but it's definitely got something to do with Jean's investigation. This is it. So, Gillian, do you uh, have any idea what this is? 
Hospital Olean? This is almost certainly the snatcher-controlled hospital that Gibson was looking for. You ought to run the name through Jordan, but uh, if that hospital is not legit, the data won't mean anything. This city is packed with unregistered hospitals. The sign in this picture looks curved. This word Olean might continue past the edge of the image. I've stored this image. You can view it at any time. Mm, okay. Just use the graphic memory command on the possessions menu. Interesting. Hospital Olean. How about we go pay another visit to Mr. Napoleon and see what he knows about illicit hospitals. Let's call him up. He might know a thing or two. What? You again? Sorry, you prefer a woman, I suppose. Whatever. Anyway, how about giving me the password? The revolution is ended. Alright, you pass. But we can't talk on the video phone. I'll meet you in the usual place. Okay, back to Alton Plaza. Mm, out to, to the front, I think we can go now. Harry suggested that we check the hospital using the Jordan system, but the Jordan system doesn't offer a hospital search function. Really? We're at the reception area. Hey, what's up, Ed Boss? How's it going? I think there are a few other Easter eggs we can do here. Hey, Sniper Wolf as well. Thank you for gifting a sub to uninstall Dota. Ah, Santa Claus is here this time. American Hero as well with 33 months. Thank you. Hey, I'm glad you're enjoying the marathon. I wonder if Napoleon is here. A few Christmas trees are set up here and there. Yeah, Christmas is just around the corner. What are your plans for Christmas, Gillian? Me? Maybe some time with Jamie? Nah, I don't really know. So you don't have any firm plans yet, do you? Afraid not. Don't worry, I won't let you spend Christmas alone. Gillian, if nobody else is available, let's spend Christmas together. Christmas with you? It'll be my first Christmas. Only in a worst case scenario, you know? Christmas with you is the worst case scenario. Aww. Poor Metal. Come on, Gillian. Crowds of busy year end shoppers are milling about everywhere. Doesn't appear that they are too worried about the snatcher problem. Everybody appears to be minding their own business. Nothing suspicious at all. Yeah, but there could be a snatcher among them, you know? That's true, but it's too frightening to think about. Huh, I thought I remembered there being... 
some kind of Easter egg here. Like if you keep looking around at something, you'll open up something new. Maybe that's later on though. appears to be minding their own business. It's Christmas everywhere you look. Even Santa Claus is here. A man dressed as Santa Claus is handing out tissues as an advertisement. Huh? That's Santa Claus. What's wrong? Nothing. Probably just my imagination. Shall we check him out? Let's check out this Santa. Let's go. Wait a minute. You're no Santa. Uh, how'd you guess? What are you doing in that outfit? What are you talking about? That's it! Ugh, I'm quitting this job. It's too dangerous. Somebody's after me. I'm gonna end up dead, just like, like Gibson. <laughs> Let's ask him about this hospital, shall we? I need some information about underground hospitals. Besides all, uh, besides all of the legit hospitals, there are scores of those underground places all over the city. You'll never be able to find them all. Wait a second. You might be able to learn something about those illicit operations by checking up on pharmaceutical orders. After all, almost all of the drugs used on the island are manufactured here as well. That's right. All of the pharmaceuticals on the island are distributed or manufactured by Kobe Pharmaceuticals. Kobe Pharmaceuticals, eh? That's where Jamie works. Jamie keeps track of records of shipments of pharmaceuticals throughout the island. She might be able to find something out. That's right, let's call her and ask later on. Hmm. Olean Hospital? did I see that? Now, oh yeah, now we can ask about Olean from this menu, right. Before that, why don't we take care of business, right? And he's looking for more cash. You got a cold there, Napoleon? Some kind of allergy, I guess. I always get this way in the winter. An allergen that only operates in the winter. That could be Snow 9, you know. One can always pick up traces of Snow Nine wherever Snatchers appear. It's this sneezing, it just goes on and on. Alright, I'll give him the cash. Damn, take it. <laughs> Thanks a bundle. It may not be the one you're looking for, but I know an Olean hospital. Hey, I'm not doing this for fun, you know. You're gonna have to do a little better than that. I just gave you cash for information on Olean Hospital. What the hell, man? Oh my god. Getting scammed. Just as greedy as ever, eh? Here, take it. I don't know too much about it, but it's over in the RF district. Why don't you go check it out? Okay, thank you. 
What about Snow 9? It's a man-made strain that was developed by the military years ago as a defensive weapon to help protect bases and the like. Wasn't all of it disposed of long ago? Yes, but I hear talk that somebody started cultivating it again about three years ago. Three years ago. That's about the same time the Snatchers first appeared. Alright, I've had it. Don't call me anymore, okay? Wait a minute, Napoleon. I'll keep any Snatchers off your back. They're after both of us. You better worry about watching your own back. Oh, by the way, here. A little Christmas present for you. What? Tissues? See ya. Merry Christmas. <laughs> well, now he's gone. No surprise there. He's got plenty of reason to be scared. Besides, I got the information I needed. There's an advertisement on the back of that pack of tissues. This is an ad for Outer Heaven. Just how many different jobs does that guy have? Chat! He's talking about us. That's us. Was, it, was that us? I think that was us. Napoleon has gone home. Let's get over to Olean Hospital. Alright. Let's head over to Olean. Um, this is the Olean hospital that Napoleon told us about. There's a neon sign on the roof of the building. The entrance appears to be at the front. I wonder what they specialize in. There are no signs or anything. That's because it's one of the illicit places. Okay, okay, okay. The lights are on and there are signs of people inside. It looks like they're open. It says Hospital Olean. Is this really the place we're looking for? It's an automatically opening double door. Strange cries can be heard coming from the building. It's covered with heavy metal screening. Could this be the Snatcher maintenance facility that Gibson described? I'll open the door. Are you ready? Yeah, go ahead. our place. This looks, this looks fairly innocent. And look at that penguin. <laughs> he does backflips. Keep looking at him. Every now and then he'll do a backflip. Oh! Yes! There it is! Penguin adventure reference, possibly. Kajimbo, well, the first game that Kajimbo worked on. Not really his game, but first game that he worked on. We're in the hospital. This would appear to be the reception area. The penguin is suspicious, you think? The reception area is just inside the entrance on the front side of the building. The receptionist is doing some paperwork behind the counter. Looks like they take insurance here. Then it can't be an illicit hospital. The sign says dangerous or hard to control animals must be on a leash or in a cage. Okay. Hmm, everybody's holding an animal of some sort. That appears to be one of those super memory parrots. People use these birds frequently now when they study foreign languages. 
or have other sounds they want to record. It's a Magellanic Kobe penguin. They were developed in 33 as a breed which could thrive in tropical and temperate climates. That's one of those humming dogs. You know the ones that have uh, that have had their larynxes modified to help eliminate sound pollution? Ah, yes, that's one of those pocket pets, popular among women as a combination of a pet and handbag. They were created by splicing marsupial genes into common household animals. This one would appear to be one of the cat models. Oh. Have you heard any rumors about snatchers in this area? I'm not worried. We keep a dog at our house. So does this hospital. Snatchers hate dogs, right? There is no solid proof, but animals with good senses of smell are said to be able to pick them out. That's right. That's why so many people are starting to keep pets these days. What kind of hospital is this? What? Didn't you know before you came? This is an animal hospital. Sorry, but I don't think they can help your little robot friend. Hey! I'm not sick, I'm functioning properly. The doctor here has a really good reputation. It's so hard to find a good vet these days. Hmm, what about this doctor? What about the doctor here? Is he any good? He's a fully licensed doctor with his genetic manipulation permit. This is about the only place in town that'll, uh, that'll see you without an appointment. Fully licensed, eh? I'm looking for a hospital with this sign. Well, it's not the one for this place. Looks kind of similar, though. Snatchers cannot tolerate dogs. It is improbable that this is their skin cancer treatment center. Looks like we barked up the wrong tree here. So, uh, now we're back to square one, huh? Don't become too discouraged. We still have many leads. Let's head back to the turbo cycle. Okay, okay. Well, how about we give Jamie a call? Hmm. Olean Hospital. Unfortunately, this wasn't the place. You're right, Metal. Okay, let's go. Huh. Okay, 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 okay. Well, I think we can exit again. Oh, we have to move to another area? Okay. Uh, back to Alton Plaza then. Doesn't really matter where we go. We just need we just need to use the video phone, I think. <laughs> DRK twenty nine, please hug me, baby. Did you recently change the name of that account? Wasn't that called DRK twenty nine, please ban me, baby? Before, did you change it from ban to hug? Or is that a different account? Did you just change it from ban to hug? All right, all right. I thought it was daddy before. No, it was always baby. All right, let's use the video phone. Oh! My God, a snatcher! Bet I surprised you, huh? Don't worry, this is just a tape. I'm at work right now. If you need to reach me, please call Neo Kobe Pharmaceutical Labs 
at 391009. What the fuck? Sorry to scare you. Bye. <laughs> what the fuck? She really had me for a moment there. Since when did she start pulling practical jokes like this? No doubt that message is a strategy of hers to deal with your troublesome calling. Oh, Metal Gear, you bitch. Just what is that supposed to mean, Metal? There's no need to be embarrassed, Gillian. I'm fully aware that Jamie has snatched your heart. All right, let's call her up. Uh, fuck, what was the number again? Uh, 391009. Neo Kobe Pharmaceutical Labs, can I help you? Huh? Oh, it's you, Gillian. What's going on? Gillian, please ask Jamie for her assistance. Yeah, yeah, we need to know if she has any ideas about black market hospitals, right? Uh... We can ask her about that message she left. Yeah, answering machine. Jamie, that message on your answering machine, wasn't that going a bit too far? Did I scare you? You bet you did. Were you worried? Yes, I was worried. How worried? How worried? Well, really worried, you know? Good. Would you cut the jokes like that? If the Snatchers ever actually got their hands on you, I'd... I don't even want to think about it as a joke. Okay, Gillian. Alright, let's ask about these hospitals. Olean Hospital. Oh, that's right. That's that's uh, that veterinary clinic, isn't it? They're totally legit. Rather stuffy operation, though. They only treat purebreds and official genetic manipulants. I really doubt they have anything to do with Snatchers. The Snatchers require a hospital which has facilities to treat ultraviolet ray exposure. Do you have any ideas about that? Well, having facilities to treat ultraviolet ray exposure is nothing rare, but we keep records here on the hospital on the island. I'll take a look at those. But don't get your hopes up. If it's a black market place running on its own, we probably won't have anything at all on it. Uh, let's see. I mean, she really doesn't look like a little boy at all. She looks pretty good. She looks pretty damn good. Uh, she's based off of Lindsay Wagner as well. Uh, the actress who's in Death Stranding. That's who they based the, the character design off. Kojima has a long time obsession with, uh, with that actress. Don't worry, if I figure anything out, I'll give you a call. Now I've got a reason to talk to you again sometime. You silly, you don't have to have a reason to talk to me. You know, I... No, I'm sorry. Um... Okay, I think... I think we're good now. We already tried asking her on a date before. I don't think we get anything different now. It was nice talking to you, Jamie. Bye for now. I mean, to be to be fair, you know, she turned down Gillian like 10 times, so he was probably a bit bitter. That's where the little boy comment came from. Talk to you later, Gillian. It still doesn't excuse him, though. But if, if you were to come up with an excuse, that would be, that would be one.
Gillian, it's the emergency line from HQ. I'll connect you. Gillian, I'm glad I got you. I got a call from Katrina. She said she has something she needs to give you. Something to give me? What in the world? She seemed really scared. Kept saying that Alice was barking. When did she call? About 30 minutes or so ago. Damn. Gillian, we should hurry. Yeah, Katrina's in trouble. Oh boy. To Gibson's house. Get us to Gibson's house now, Metal. Set the automatic traffic control system to give us absolute priority. 10-4! God, I hope she's safe. Alright, now heading for Jean-Jacques Gibson's house. We've arrived at John Jack Gibson's house. What would you like to do? Hey, cheers, plate. Katrina, Katrina. There's no answer. Ah, uh, it's not locked. Alright, I'll open the door. Are you ready? Yeah, open it. Uh, we've entered Gibson's living room. What about Katrina? Where is she? I don't see her. This is rather troubling. What's this? I thought this was a window, but there's another shelf here. Why didn't I notice this sooner? A model of a house is on the shelf. It's a music box, but there's nothing inside it. Check out the study. Huh, what the? My goodness, what a shambles! Somebody has turned the place upside down! The Snatchers! They must have been looking for something. Snatcher scum! Oh shit, this is the garden. Huh, where's Alice? So Alice is missing too? There's nobody in the area. It's too dark for standard optical sensors. Night vision sensors don't read anything though. Look, there's a collar on the ground. It's Alice's magnetic collar. Special devices around their yard prevent the dog from going beyond their property if it's wearing this collar. There's nothing unusual. It seems almost too quiet out here. This garden doesn't lead anywhere. It was Alice's own private space. There's no way that Alice uh, could have gotten out without going through the study. It appears to have been torn apart. Alice is a Doberman. That's not exactly the kind of dog that goes down easy. That's true, and she was facing a human. Hmm. The room is in shambles. Things are scattered everywhere. Everything appears to have been smashed and broken. Based on the condition of this room, it looks like they were looking for something. I wonder what. I don't know, but it could be the same thing we're looking for. 
The monitor is broken. The hard leather has been torn to shreds. The machine is a total loss. It's a good thing we had already read the file on the disc. Maybe they're trying to destroy some kind of data on themselves. I can't read it off the disc anymore, but I have it stored in my memory. Don't worry. It appears to have been torn by a claw-like instrument of some kind. They were worried about the location of their hospital getting out. Katrina must have discovered something related to that. I bet you're right. Gillian, that sneeze. Maybe Snow Nine? Wait a moment. Let me analyze the air in the room. Analysis complete. It's a very slight amount, but there are definitely traces of Snow Nine here. It would appear that Snatchers have definitely been here. What about communications? Can you transmit? Yes, the Snow Nine isn't dense enough to block communications. I'm worried about Katrina. Let's see if she's in here. Good idea. Katrina! Katrina, are you in here? It's me, Gillian. There's no answer. Something must have happened. Katrina, answer me if you can hear me. Alice may be in earshot. Why don't you call her? Alice! Alice, here, girl! There's no sign of her. Come on, Alice. Come here, girl. There's no sign of her. Something must have happened here. Investigating everything again. Mm, maybe I missed something in the garden? what I'm doing wrong here. Just look at everything again. Make sure we've done all this. Investigate the area. Investigate the shadows. may have some connection with our investigation. Maybe this is what I'm missing. True. After all, John left search that, that search the house memo. This may be what he was referring to. Still, we have to find Katrina. Uh, it's a bug? <laughs> You're just talking shit? I hope so. no idea what I'm doing wrong here. Let me just check my notes.
Um... Oh, maybe I just have to call for them here. God damn it, we were smooth sailing up until this point. I'm just gonna fly through these options here. Oh! Gillian, I read motion. Use extreme caution. The signal is coming from outside the window. Oh no. It's Alice! is dead. Body temperature suggests it was killed about 10 minutes ago. No doubt the work of Snatchers. Scum! No reason to kill the poor animal. Katrina! Where's Katrina? We can leave the cleanup here to the junk crews. We should look for Katrina. Judging from the mess they made here, it looks like they were looking for something. We're quite upset that they couldn't find it. Perhaps that means that Katrina is still safe. That's true. If they had her, there'd be no need to turn the place upside down like this. Perhaps Katrina took whatever they were looking for and fled. I bet you're right, Metal. We've got to find her before they do. Let's get back to the turbo cycle. Okay, so where do we go now? Back to Junker headquarters. This game's graphic, yeah, the death scenes are pretty brutal. It's pretty gory at times. We, we've arrived at Junker HQ. Oh man, my voice, getting tired. Have you been able to contact Katrina yet? Nope. What? Katrina's missing? Hurry up, Seed. You must find Katrina. Is Katrina here? Come on, Seed. Get serious. Of course she's not here. Check the engineering room. Nico, how's it going? Katrina isn't here, is she? Don't be stupid. If she was here, we all wouldn't be so worried now, would we? Gibson's room, I guess we'll, we'll check. This was Gibson's room. Maybe Katrina's in here. Katrina, can you hear me? There's no answer. She doesn't seem to be here. Okay, I don't think we need to check anywhere else, but we will, just in case. Shooting range. Okay, Gillian's apartment it is. Uh, back out front. Hey, good night, Gurko. Gillian, you have to look for Katrina first. We can visit your apartment later. What? Alton Plaza? Yeah, I guess we can look for her in Alton Plaza as well. Evil Head with the 29, thank you.
Oh, I think this is where we can get another Easter egg. I think, I think, I think. We would have a hard time finding Katrina here if she was around. The shop windows are all displaying goods for Christmas and New Year's. Uh, there's a lot of clothes here that I bet Katrina would love. Katrina isn't here, is she? Hey, over there. What? You see Katrina? Oh, sorry, it was somebody else. Is this Castlevania music? I'm not sure. It could be a, a variation on a, on a Castlevania theme. Or maybe it's just a similar theme. I don't see Katrina anywhere. Numerous couples and families are milling about, enjoying the holiday mood. I don't see Katrina anywhere. Katrina doesn't seem to be here. Let's look elsewhere. Let's split up and look for her. I'll take over here. Okay, I'll head in this direction. Did you spot her? No, I'm afraid not. Alright, let's try the nightlife district. Metal, we gotta find her. Don't worry, Gillian. She won't get past my sensors. This is no good. I don't see her anyway. She doesn't appear to be here. Let's split up and look for her. I'll take over here. Okay, 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 okay. I think if we keep searching here, we'll get a we'll get some kind of Easter egg. Did you spot her? Nope. No, I don't see her anywhere. She's not in this area. Katrina, Katrina, answer if you can hear me. Gilly, Gillian, she'd never be able to hear you in this crowd. gonna keep looking for her? I don't think she's in this area. Metal, you don't happen to know the video phone number for missing persons, do you? That number is not recorded in my memory. However, aha, so you do have something. Now accessing the video phone numbers for all recorded emergency services. Uh, Snatcher 911 256-128 Police Department 911 Fire Department 119 Weather forecast, 177. That is all. Do you wish to call, Gillian? Uh, yeah. Uh, it would be pretty pathetic for a junker to call the police, wouldn't it? Let's try, let's try, let's try. Two, five, six, one, two, eight. This is Snatcher 911. This phone call is automatically recorded. Please clearly explain your situation in 30 seconds or less. The computer in Junker HQ will process and respond urgently to your situation. Please speak in a calm, clear voice. <laughs> oh, great system. Great system for emergencies. Be calm and collected. 30 seconds. Clear and concise under extreme stress. That Metal Gear sound effect. That really sounded like a Metal Gear item sound. Understood and recorded. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Let's try two, five, six. 
nine one one. Oh, was, did I? Was that the last one I tried? That was Snatcher nine one one. But I thought I typed one two eight last time. Hold on, I'm gonna do this 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 again. The number you have reached is oh. not in service at this time. Please check the number and dial again. This is a recording. J T N T Neo Kobe. Hold on. What? The number you have reached is not in service at this time. Please check the number and dial again. This is a Oh, 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 oh. I see, I see, I see. I think you just leave the... I think it's just 911. Yeah, it's just 911. Hey, there we go. I thought you needed the code in front of it first. Hello, this is the Neo Kobe City Police Department. Whoa! Gillian, you shouldn't call if you have no reason. Hello? Is something wrong? I'm breaking the connection. Aww. Okay, okay. Uh, let's try 177 then. <laughs> Frank Colin in the middle of this uh, investigation. Ah, Katrina, she'll be fine. She'll be all right. Fukui 2. Today's Neo Kobe weather forecast. Today will be clear due to a high pressure system moving in from the south. But the National Obs Observatorium has reported that the hole in the ozone layer continues to increase in size. They recommend that if you're going out of the house, you should liberally apply a thick coating of anti-UV sunscreen. Clear day, huh? The weather is our ally. The increase in ultraviolet rays will limit their movement. We should continue the investigation while this weather holds. Okay, there's one more. Uh, 119. This is the Neo Kobe uh, Department uh, Fire Department's emergency line. Please report the type of emergency, status, location, and damage. This call will be automatically recorded, so please speak in a calm, quiet voice. It's very wrong to make a prank call to the fire department. I'm trying to remember if I ever did that as a kid. I remember making lots of prank calls to the Coca-Cola helpline on the school bus to impress all the girls. It worked. As well, it impressed the girls. And, uh, we used to call the uh, suicide helplines as well. Ugh, that, that, that's not a proud moment looking back on that. Still, though, impressed the girls. So, you know. <laughs> uh,. I guess we called other helplines as well, like whatever we could get our hands on. Like, you know, whatever people would be having on the school bus. Bottles of Coke, crisp packets, chocolate bar wrappers. You know, we'd call all those helplines. Who are these girls? Storm, if you were on that school bus, you would have been impressed as well. Don't kid yourself. A, re a fucking rebel like myself. Getting up to all these mischievous acts. Absolutely hilarious. Let's see. Uh, where are we going? Let's search for Katrina again. 
I highly disapprove. No matter how much you look, if she's not here, then she's not here. But there should be another Easter egg here. I just want to try this again. I wasn't really all that rebellious in school overall. I mean, I was I was a I was a little bit of a trickster, but I was I would never be too bad in class in terms of like messing and talking shit. Compared to some of my fellow classmates anyway, I was I was in between. I had a st I had a decent streak of rebelliousness. Okay, I think we can go to Gillian's house now. Understood. Setting course for your apartment. I used to order ridiculously big Chinese Indian takeaways and have them delivered to my friend's house. Did you ever ring on random doorbells and run away? That was that was a that was a game that we used to play. A mischievous game that we used to play. Maybe maybe we added other things to that game as well. Oh, I can't remember. Ding dong. Hmm. <laughs> Uh oh. Wait a sec. My lights are on. That's weird. I know I shut them off before I left. Be careful. A snatcher may be in your apartment. Searching the place, maybe? I don't have any evidence up there. Hold on. One sec, guys. Hard to tell from here, but the lights are definitely on. Metal, check the status of the door uh, of my apartment from here. All right, now accessing the building's security system. Gillian, it's open. What? I know I locked that before I left. I'll open the door. Are you ready? Yeah, open it. I hear something. This time I can hear it too. I read motion. Something is in there. All right, Metal. Lock the front door. We're not letting anything out of here.
Let's check this room first. Okay. Whoever broke in here may have may have set some kind of a trap for you. There are some faint depressions in the carpet that would indicate footprints. These shoe impressions are very sharp and deep. Most of the weight of the person was focused on one point. Something sharp. A snatcher? That possibility exists. Sound seems to be coming from the bathroom. Hmm, what's that smell? A snatcher? I'm not sure, but I've smelled that somewhere before. This is the bathroom. Hmm, it's really hot and humid in here. There's something in the shower. My thermo sensor shows a region of concentrated heat. I would say that hot water is being used. I read movement from within the stall. Should we go after it? That would be a very dangerous move if, if it's a snatcher. Opening the stall is a simple matter. What are you going to do, Gillian? I'll open the blinds by altering the electrical polarity. Are you ready? Okay. Go ahead. All right, now opening the blinds. Whoa! -ho -ho! <laughs> you pervert! Get out of here! <laughs> I hope you learned your lesson, Gillian. Whoa! -ho! <laughs> you definitely had that coming to you. Oh, yeah? Well, I didn't exactly see you close your eyes either. That is because my optical sensors are not equipped with retractable shutters. Oh, shut up. You know exactly what I mean. Here comes Katrina. I can't believe you did that, Gillian! Uh, well, uh, you see, I was just... Face up to it like a man. You shut up! Uh, I'm just glad that you're safe, Katrina. I was so frightened. I just looked up your address and I let myself in. I'm sorry. Did I surprise you? Surprise me? <laughs> you bet you surprised me. I'm sorry. That's all right. Uh, by the way, uh, how did you get in? Hey, I'm the daughter of a junker. I can pick locks in my sleep. Oh, I see. And you avoided the sensors as well. Hmm. You may have a promising career ahead of you. <gasps> Ooh. Ooh. Wow, she sure looks cute like this. What's wrong, Gillian? You're not mad, are you? Let's see what pervy dialogue we can get here. Do I have a big zit on my face or something? I'm gonna need to check out your towel. Don't you ever quit. I know what you have in mind. Stop teasing me, Gillian. Gillian. Lay off. You're about as subtle as the boys at my school. Grow up and get on with your work. How many lines of dialogue do we have here? Okay, that's the last one, I guess. Oh yeah, your dog. Uh, oh yeah, your dog. Uh, let's just leave the whole dog conversation for now. Maybe you should get some clothes on. Huh? I just took a shower, so I'm a little hot. I'd like to stay like this. About Alice. It's about Alice. What's wrong with Alice? You see, Alice is... 
Gillian. Uh, what's wrong? Forget it, I'll tell you later. You're weird. About that phone call, would you tell me what that was all about? That's right, when I was straightening up the living room, I found this inside the model of our house. Oh yeah, there was a model of Gibson's house on the shelf, wasn't there? Hospital list. It's a list of hospitals. It appears to be a list of illicit medical facilities. It lists the name of the hospital, its director's name, its address and area of specialty. Well then, the Snatcher's place, the one that Gibson found, must be on this list. So, uh, so that's what that search the house note that Gibson left meant. He was just a little too clever this time. Will this be of any help? This list has over 3,000 places listed on it. We can never hit them all. We need some other information to narrow it down. And what about the image from Little John's memory? That should be the key. If you type in the name of the hospital, uh, I'll scan the list for you. How old are you, Katrina? I turned 18 this year. Oh, really? Jeez, I can't believe how quick kids, uh, kids grow up these days. Even so, I'm pretty old for a model. Oh, great. So, uh, so what does that make Jamie? Fucking Gillian, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Hold on, I want to get that dialogue again if I can. Gillian, you've got more important things than her age that you need to be asking her. Uh, let's see. Can I take a look at that hospital list? Go ahead, take a look. Hold on. Ah, uh, I missed something there. All right, Gillian, let's see if we can find the Snatcher's Hospital on this list. What about that hospital was in Little John's memory? Why don't you give a name similar to the one on that sign? Give me a name along the lines of the one on the sign. The sign said Olene, didn't it? Input the name of the hospital that you want to search for. So it's actually Queen. Um, and earlier there was a hint that the sign was being cut off so there was another letter. So it's actually Queens. Uh, there's also the chess piece we found from Gibson, which was uh, which was of a queen. So we have a few hints there. Queens, right? Okay. All right, now searching. It's here, Queen's Hospital. Great, you found it, Gillian. So the neon tube was burned out, eh? And there were more letters to the word than shown in the picture. So Queen's looked like Oli. That's what the chess piece was trying to tell us. Hospital's address. What's the address of that hospital? CX District, PHC 77. The director is Chinese. Name, Chin Shu O. Hmm, Chin Shu O. He's probably a snatcher too. So we've finally found their nest. Gillian, please be careful. Don't worry, Katrina. You're safe now. They won't be coming after you. Just to be on the safe side, we will have Kobe police take you into protective custody. Gillian, I'm sorry about the way I reacted in the shower. Maybe if your timing had been a little better, we might have... Don't worry about it, Katrina. I think I needed a cold shower anyway. I'm... I'm just so confused. I don't want to lose anybody else. Alright, let's go, Metal. 
We have to pay a visit to Queen's Hospital. To Queen's Hospital we go. Still doesn't know about Alice. Yeah. We come to think of it, I don't think we ever tell her about Alice, do we? Does she just go back home and see the dog lying there? Because we, I don't think we ever tell her about Alice, and she does go home eventually, I think. I like this screen. It looks like there are it looks like there's someone in the back seat of the car there. The light shining from the sign, it kind of looks like two eyes. That sign. That's the one that was in Little John's memory, no mistake. pillar-shaped building of the kind that were popular at the end of the last century. The only entrance appears to be at the front of the building. The door is locked, but even I can open a mechanism this simple. Don't set off any burglar alarms or anything. Should be able to go inside. Lock disabled. All right, I'll open the door. Awfully dark. There was a, there's a reception booth in the center of the lobby and three doors along the wall behind it. I'm not picking up any movement. There's nobody else in the area. Well, if they're not in business at the moment, what's the neon sign for? If it appears abandoned, homeless and other people may move into the building. They don't appear to be automatic doors. There must be some kind of a control somewhere. solid layer of dust has collected. It hasn't been operated for several months. Uh, what's this? There are some kind of switches here. Gillian, look at this. It says door control, one, two, three. These switches must be for those doors over there. Apparently they're operated from here. Alfonso, how's it going? Uh, for now, I think we only need to go to the third room. Mm, it's totally dark in here. I can't see a thing. I have a light installed just for situations like this. Please use it if necessary. Sir, coming on. The light is now on. I turn control of it over to you, Gillian. You operate the light with the direction key. Press the B button together with the direction key to move the light. Otherwise, the direction key navigates through commands as usual. Make sure that objects you wish to examine are centered in the light's beam. Yeah, I really like the theme for this. Mysterious.
What do we have here? Oh, one sec, guys. It's been a while since I saved. Uh, you know what? Let's save in game as well. Again, I want to finish and then come back in. Just in case it crashes. Because you lose the save otherwise. I just want to make sure I have a few saves. Just in case anything horrific happens. There's something on the desk. There's a box of matches on the desk. Look at the logo here. Outer Heaven Matches. Um, it looks a lot like the Metal Gear 2 logo. And I guess... The Sega CD version of this released after Metal Gear 2. So that's probably what they were going for. Oh my, these matches are from Outer Heaven. Outer Heaven seems to be quite a popular spot with our Snatcher friends. I would suspect that they go there to select their victims. Alright chat, who's a Snatcher? We need to root out the Snatchers in chat. I will store these matches as evidence. Let's see... There are rails on the floor. They run under this desk. Perhaps this desk is designed to slide. Pushing it doesn't do any good. It's a very old photograph. Judging from the condition of the inks and paper, I would suspect that it is at least 50 years old. What's a picture like this doing on the wall here? Metal. What's, a, uh, what's this a photo of? One moment, please. I'll scan my data files. I have a positive ID. It's the Cathedral of St. Basil. It's a famous cathedral that was a Moscow landmark before the catastrophe. St. Basil's Cathedral. Have I heard of that? I can't seem to remember. Come to think of it, there was a map of Moscow on the wall in Freddie Nielsen's apartment, wasn't there? Moscow, eh? What connection do the Snatchers have with Moscow? Anything here? Let's investigate this drawer. There seems to be a scrap of paper caught between these two drawers. The others are empty. It appears that someone tried to straighten up in a hurry. Let me see that paper. Here it is. What? What is this? It looks like Chinese or something. Metal translated. Okay. Let's see. Patient record. First examination. I'm not familiar with the next five characters. It's the first time I've ever seen any of them. I thought you were supposed to be really good at Chinese. My strongest areas are in Chop Suey, Egg Fu Young, and Wantons. Hmm. Rare Chinese characters. Or maybe some kind of code? Gillian didn't get it. At any rate, this is definitely <laughs> part of someone's chart. If we can figure out these characters, we may be able to uncover another Snatcher. What do you suppose happened to the other records? Looks like someone cleaned them out of here. Uh, maybe they knew we were coming. Somehow I get the feeling that the Snatchers know what we're up to. I'll store the fragment of the file. I think I've seen that thing before. Damn, I just can't remember. I've stored this photo in my memory. Okay, now I think we have everything here that we need. Hmm. 
Now I think we need to go back and meet with Napoleon again. Music. Please check the number and dial again. This is a recording. JT and T Neo Kobe. That's funny. I'm sure I got the number right. Doesn't that guy look a little familiar? Perhaps the snatchers have killed Napoleon too. Huh, what's this symbol? It looks vaguely familiar. Where in the world has Napoleon gone? A wolfman. Aha! Now I understand. Remember this guy? Gillian, I know where Napoleon is. Have you figured it out? Let's hurry up and head there. Back to outer heaven. Here he is. It's that doorman with the wolf makeup again. Apparently it's not masquerade time right now. Hey, are you who I think you are? Hey, what are you doing? Lay off. If you don't lay off, I'll have to call someone out here. Okay, okay, okay. You really remind me of somebody I know. I bet that's you, right, Napoleon? I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know anybody named Napoleon. I know it's you, Napoleon. Now cut this stupid act. I'm afraid you've got the wrong man, sir. Come on, Napoleon. What's the problem? Stop this nonsense. Hey, I'm just the doorman. Napoleon, that's you, right? What a bother. Do you have any proof that this Napoleon and I are the same person? You're gonna have to show me some proof, sir. Proof? You want proof? Give proof. Personality. Yeah, that wormy, untrustworthy attitude of yours is just like him. If that's proof, then I'm a policeman. Uh, body type. That's it, you and he are the same height. So what, what's that supposed to mean? Your height is the same. Almost nobody is as short as you are. That's no proof. No two people could have that same personality. Yeah, you have the same voice. That's it. That's no proof. That's it. Metal. Analyze his voice print against that of Napoleon. I'm sorry, Gillian. I haven't stored any of Napoleon's voice data. I won't let it happen again. Well, that's really too bad. I know, the two of you talk the same way. That's no proof. Accent. Your accent and word choice is just like his. Is that the best reason you've got? Okay, time for smell. I've got it. You smell just like him. Huh? Gillian, what did Napoleon smell like? You shut up. Oh, the sneeze, eh? Excuse me. 
Now I've got it. It's that sneeze. I remember you sneeze just like him. He has hay fever. That's you. All right, you win. I've had enough fun for now. I just wanted to play with you for a bit. Nice work, Gillian. You're a first-rate junker. Go on in. Have a seat, Gillian. We're safer in a crowded place like this. Jeez, you really had me fooled. Two rolls in one. <laughs> this in tight. Well, you know, you gotta understand. Being an informer isn't exactly the safest job on the planet, you know. That's why it's important to be a master of disguise, like me. Yeah, but I feel pretty stupid. I mean, all that time I was asking you about where Jean went, I didn't realize I was asking someone who actually worked there. Hey, I was just as surprised as you were. But I didn't know that Gibson had been here. You see, I wasn't working that day. Anyhow, it's not masquerade night today. Uh, why don't you take that mask off, Napoleon? It's a little unnerving sitting here talking to a wolf. Uh, all right. I suppose there's no harm there. Boy, ugh, you really work up a sweat in these full-face masks. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, maybe you should have left that on. <laughs> what? Still, you did a nice job of figuring out who I was. Come on, Napoleon. That stupid phone recording with the Wolfman? JT&T would never do anything that tasteless. Besides, what really tipped me off was that constant sneezing of yours. Sneezes, eh? Well, listen, you want me to tell you why I'm called Napoleon? Because winter gets the best of you. Napoleon Bonaparte sent his enormous army into Russia in <laughs> 1812, but suffered a major defeat because of the snow. Oh, I get it. Yeah, the, the sneezing isn't a cold. It's my allergy to snow nine pollen. So, anyhow, what did you want to know? I've got a couple of questions to ask you. Eh, fire away. <clears throat> All right, one sec, guys. How far into Snatcher are we? Pretty far. I'd say we're pa a little bit past the halfway point. Uh, let's see. You're Chinese, right? That's right, purebred, I might add. I came to Neo Kobe just after I turned 20. My only memories of the place are from after they lost the war. It wasn't a pretty picture. Let's show him this record. Would you take a good look at this for me? What's it mean? You're Chinese, right? Well, well, I'm not surprised that you had trouble with this. What's it mean? These are Chinese characters for chemical elements, hardly in standard use. If I wasn't a science major, I probably wouldn't know them myself. It's a simple code using the characters. What's this about Chinese chemical element characters? What do you mean? The character on the far left is beryllium. The next one and the very last one are nitrogen. Uh, the third one stands for sulfur. And the fourth one is oxygen. Beryllium, nitrogen, sulfur, oxygen. I've got it. Gillian, let's go over the names of these elements, shall we? So if you have to join them together to spell out something. Whose name is on this file? B E Beryllium Nitrogen N Sulfur S and Oxygen O N. That's it. Benson. Beryllium is B-E. Nitrogen is N. 
Sulfur is S, and oxygen is O. And another N makes Benson. The name Benson was encoded on this file. Benson. I sure hope it is not referring to the chief, Benson Cunningham. Or to our friendly engineer, Mr. Harry Benson. No, that couldn't be. No way! No. But it the can't be. The remote does exist. Metal, I want you to cut off all your data transmissions to headquarters now. Understood. Now disabling automatic transmission routines. Done. No further data transmissions to headquarters will be executed. My God. A snatcher in Junker headquarters? We've got to get there quick. Let's go, Metal. See you later, Junker. Today's little information tidbit is on me. Now take care, Gillian. Don't get yourself taken out by some snatcher. I think I'll lay low for a while. You know, after all, you are my main source of income. You be careful too, Napoleon. You get killed and you won't be able to sneeze anymore. What's that supposed to mean? See you, Napoleon. Metal, let's go. Back to Junker HQ. The Chief. Harry, it can't be. Welcome back, Gillian. Glad to see you're safe and sound. Mika, the Chief and Harry, they're... The Chief and Harry are out right now, I think. Oh, really? Uh, okay, okay, okay. I've broken the code that was on the patient's record. It was the patient's name. In other words, I've uncovered a possible snatcher. What? Who? Oh my god, it's not someone I know, is it? I don't know their full name, but the name Benson was written on the file. In other words, Benson Cunningham, the chief, or our friendly engineer, Harry Benson. Harry's out right now. He seemed to be going after the chief when he left. Said he had to check on something. He's been a little restless lately. He seemed to be investigating something. Now that you mention it, he's been gone for several hours. Okay, what about the chief? Chief is out right now. I don't know when he'll be back. The Chief has been really busy lately. He'll be attending the Kyoto Summit next month, and he's had a lot of meetings and stuff related to that. Uh, what about this Kyoto Summit? The Kyoto Summit, what's that? It's the annual summit of the leaders of the world's advanced countries. It'll be taking place in Old Kyoto this year. Okay, okay. I don't think we need to talk to her about anything else. Let's go to the engineering room. So either Chief or Harry is a snatcher. Let's look for evidence. We have to proceed with the investigation with the utmost care at this point. Let's start the search with this room here. ba da ba da da see the entire photo, we could determine who Harry's parents are. Oh, I should have looked at this earlier. It's a picture from Harry's childhood. Uh, there's 
something on the desk. There's a box of matches and a memo. Outer Heaven's logo appears on the box. What? Outer Heaven matches? Harry had Outer Heaven matches? The same matches we found in the hospital? Harry, it can't be. It can't be you, Harry, can it? It says face to face. Face to face. It's definitely a box of matches that, uh, that Outer Heaven gives away to its regular customers. Harry is the only one in headquarters who smokes. I can't believe that Harry might be a snatcher. But he had matches from Outer Heaven. No, I can't believe that Harry could be a snatcher. Let's hang on to these. That will not be necessary. They are, they are identical to the ones we already have. I'm constantly recording everything that happens. It'll be a burden on the investigation. That's an interesting, nice little touch. Let's put them here. Uh, okay, 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 okay. What about the memo? It's in Harry's handwriting. I wonder if it's some kind of message. This face-to-face -face thing has, has to be the key. We have to search in the areas that, uh, that this brings to mind. It probably means either search for face-to-face -face or watch out for face-to-face -face or something like that. Hang on to this memo for me, Metal. All right, I'll store this memo as evidence. Mm, okay, okay, okay. This is the chief's office. He's not in at the moment. So both of them are out. All right, let's try this last room. Wait a minute. Do you notice anything odd about this picture? Look, doesn't it look like a face to you? A face? I don't get it. Look at this. I thought it was just a picture of a vase. If you reverse the background of the drawing, it's two faces. Face to face. This must be the face to face that Harry was that Harry was referring to in his memo. This picture was cleverly designed to take advantage of the human sense of sight. What's that supposed to mean? That you can see it easily if you're not human? Let's search more carefully. Check out the face to face part of it, will you? There's a switch between the two faces. I'll push it. I can't see the face. Can you guys see any face? I'm not seeing any face. You can see them? Ba -da -ba -da -da. They're upside down. I give up. The picture flipped over to reveal a photograph. Oh my god, Chief! I've seen this somewhere before, but I just can't recall. Based on the condition of the inks, I would judge this photograph to be at least 50 years old. Metal, where was this picture taken? Alright, I will now search for data on this photo's location in the Alpha 1 network. I found it. This is a photograph of Red Square in Moscow, taken sometime before the catastrophe. Red Square. What's a picture like that doing in the Chief's office? Store that in your video memory for me, will you? I've now stored the photo... I've now stored the photo's image in my memory. Chief had this picture? Or someone planted it there to set up the Chief. And there were those matches that Harry had, too. Which one is the Snatcher? 
depend on what evidence we can turn up. Both of them seem suspicious. Maybe, uh, maybe it's somebody else entirely. That's true. That patient chart with the Benson on it is quite suspect as well. Maybe somebody wanted us to find it. It seems pretty odd that the Snatchers would have left part of a patient's record behind in the first place. Maybe it's a trap. That can't be ruled out based on the evidence we've seen so far. Oh man, let me take another drink. Uh, let's see. What would a picture like this be doing here? Metal, don't you think this is a little strange? What's that? If I was a snatcher, I don't think I'd hide a picture in a place as out in the open as this. Well, that's true. So there must be some reason why the picture was here, even if it meant some risk. Before that, let me put this photo of Red Square back where we found it. Yeah, we can't let anyone we can't let anyone know that we've learned the secret of this picture. I'm gonna be doing Metal Gear 1 and 2 after this, Jet. Yeah, that's the plan. We're at the reception area. Okay, okay, okay. Gillian, I have a video phone call from Jamie. I'll connect you. Gillian, it's me, Jamie. Listen carefully. You know that oh, Queen's shit. Hospital? I found out that they undertook a major expansion project in 2035 to put in a basement. That's right, they have a basement. Basement construction is really unusual here in Neokobe. That's why there were still records of it. But there's more. The director of that hospital, Shin Shu Ho, has had his license suspended in the past for performing eugenics experiments at an illicit underground facility. Are you telling me Queens has underground treatment facilities? That has to be it, Gillian. Shin Shu Ho is performing skin operations on Snatchers Underground. And that means that Chin himself is also probably a Snatcher. Or rather, the real Chin, the original Chin, was snatched. So, that entire ground-level complex is just a front for the underground facilities. And if we hit that hospital, we can ruin the Snatcher's plans. Well, this is it, Metal. We're heading right into the enemy's headquarters this time. Gillian? Yeah? This sounds really dangerous. I just wanted you to know... I want you to come home safe. Jamie... The reason I left you is because I thought you were pushing yourself too hard being self-destructive and it seemed like the wedding ring you were wearing when they found us had that become tune. a tremendous burden on you i didn't want that to be the only reason we stayed together oh jamie i never felt that way at all i'll be waiting for you we may not have our memories but you are the only one i've ever shared any time with be careful gillian jamie are you all right gillian yeah. All right, Metal, let's go. We have to pay a visit to Queen's Hospital. Her Majesty is waiting. Let's do it. Oh, weird cut there. Emulator issues at times with the uh, audio bugs. They are rare, though, thankfully. We've boarded the turbo cycle. Where would you like to go? Queen's Hospital. Uh, Just where do you think you're going? This is most unusual. The turbo cycle seems to be out of control. Oh, God. Switch over to manual. I'll take over. Understood. I've switched to manual control. Well, how is it? What the? We've got no brakes. 
Metal, check the brake system out. Pronto. Oh God! Someone tampered with the vehicle. Looks like sabotage. No doubt the snatcher's handiwork. Sabotage? But the only one who could work on the turbo cycle. Worry about that later. Gillian, we've got to do something quickly. Oh God. Uh, give up. What? Are you giving up? Oh no. Gillian has given up. Now we're truly doomed. Oh, shut up, will you? I'll think of something. Probably. Uh, jump out. We can't be serious. At this speed, you'd be torn to pieces. We'd never survive it. It'd be like jumping off the Brooklyn Bridge. That's a rather dated image, don't you think? We've had it. There's nothing we can do. Don't give up so easy. There might be some way out of this yet. What in the world are you doing? Pull emergency lever. Metal, pull that lever over there. All right, here goes. It broke off. I guess we've had it. Uh, press button. All right, let's try a long shot. I'll push. I'll push this button here. And a good, good morning to you, my friend. Bud Miller with you here on the big 90.7. Looks like we're gonna have a bright <laughs> You've turned the radio on, Gillian. What are you doing? Press it again. All right, I'll try another button. Oh no, that was the switch for the afterburner. Whoops. You've boosted our thrust by 23%. Do something, Gillian. How about this button? That's the heater. Temperature increasing. 68 degrees. 69. 70. 71. 72. There. It's reached a comfortable room temperature. I don't care about the temperature right now. We're finished. It's been nice knowing you, Gillian. Shut up. There must be something. It's hopeless. We're moving at over 200 kilometers per hour. There's no way we can survive. Damn, the speed keeps increasing. Pray to God. Well, Metal, I haven't known you for very long, but it's been fun. Gillian, let's pray together. Actually, I'm not that religious. I didn't think so. That's it, Gillian. Prayer, look, a new command has appeared on the menu. Pray to God. Save me. If you save me, I promise I'll worship you devoutly. You can pick the religion. Do you really mean that, Gillian? Of course not. We're going to die. We're going to die. We've had it. Oh, dear Lord. Drive into the sand pile. All right, I'll try plowing this thing into the sand pile over here. Hang on tight. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! It's the DARPA chief! Damn, won't anything work? Hit cliff. I've got it. We'll try we'll try sideswiping the cliff. Hang on, metal. Damn, even that won't stop it. Hit control panel. Damn. Uh, what else can we do? Metal, start punching buttons. Any buttons at all? Yes. Yes, push anything. Helium, this doesn't seem to be doing any good. Damn, I was sure that would work. Helium, the road makes a sharp right turn just 1,500 meters ahead. At this speed, we'll never make it. Helium! Gillian! Huh? Oh! Over here! What's that? Gillian, over here! Random! Gillian, you gotta jump over to my bike! Hurry! 800 meters until we reach the curve. Metal, you go first! What? Not again! Move your butt! That curve's just ahead! Understood. One, two, three! 
farther to Queen's Hospital, and you could probably use the exercise anyway. Why don't we just continue the rest of the way like this? Cool sequence. Gillian, a new command has opened up in the menu. So, this is the place, huh? Random, are you sure you know what you're doing? This isn't going to be a field trip, you know. We may not come back. And the bounty for this one will more than make up for it. If you're around to spend it, that is. Gillian, let's get going. Alright, let's head back inside. Alright, now entering their security system. Lock disabled. Alright, random, let's go. I'm ready for anything. Alright, I'll open the door. We're inside the hospital. It's really quiet in here. There has to be an entrance to the lower level in here somewhere. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Back to room number three, I think. Gillian, let's try switching my light on, shall we? Pitch black in here, ain't it? Cool, I weave random joining us now. He's given a few lines of dialogue. Turn on the light. The light is now on. I turn control of it over to you, Gillian. Oh, I never looked at this last time. It's a monitor. It's lo it looks like uh, one for a personal computer. There are rails on the floor. Rails, that's funny. Maybe this is the way to the lower level? There must be a switch somewhere. It's a simple vase. What's this? Face to face. Doesn't this look like the picture that's on the wall of the chief's office? Diddle -diddle -diddle. That's a famous optical illusion, isn't it? I get it, their eyes don't register optical illusions. We better check that out. It's not, so, it's not something a human would notice easily. It could be a sign of some kind. I bet this vase is some kind of switch. All right, I'll try lifting it up. The desk slid to one side, revealing a stairway leading down. It looks like Jamie was right. Queen's Hospital does have a basement. And that basement is the Snatcher's main lair. Out of the frying pan and into the fire, as they say. Well, what do we do now, Gillian? Mm, cool image here of them both looking down. Nice light effect on Metal Gear. It appears to go straight down. The door is visible below. Unlike the hallway, these stairs don't have any dust on them. In other words, our friends use this, right? I don't read anything at the moment. Let's go down. It's a very narrow stairway. We'll have to go down single file. Okay, uh, who's going to take the point? That's obvious. The guy with the light. Hey, that's not fair.
Well, well, what do we have here? It's the hospital corridor. It's the same hallway, but not the one that's on the first floor. So what does that mean? An entire floor of Queen's Hospital has been duplicated underground. So the same floor is both upstairs and downstairs, sort of like parallel worlds. So that desolate setup upstairs is all just a smokescreen. They're making it look like the place is closed down, but in reality, they're keeping themselves quite busy. Gillian, that means we're already right in the middle of their headquarters. Please use extreme caution. Not good. Thank you for the hugs. I hope you enjoy the new emote. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's see if we have the same setup here. There are switches here to open the doors. What's this? Unlike the first floor, there are only two there are only two door switches. Number one and two, then. Okay. Not what I expected for Metal Gear Rising, but okay. The title should have changed. Unless I forgot to change it. Have you just not refreshed in like... 10 hours? not change the title. It is Snatcher? Okay. Uh, the lights are on, unlike upstairs. Alright, let's look over the entire room. It's a Snatcher. Don't scare me like that. It's just a specimen. There's an operating table in the middle of the room. This appears to be their real treatment area. With these lights, it actually looks like a real hospital. Various x-ray devices have been installed in the ceiling. A number of brand new medical monitors are installed. It appears to be a standard operating table. Cables run from it to a number of the machines around the room. It's a model of a human skeleton, no doubt used for anatomical study. Okay. There's nothing of note besides the medical equipment. Besides the standard X, uh, X and gamma rays, they can also project neutron and proton particle beams with this equipment. I would suspect that it is used in cancer treatment. The surface of the bed is still quite warm. It's as if someone was lying here just a few moments ago. I'm not picking up any movement. At least not anymore. There was some movement, but I've lost it now. This is rather grotesque. It's somewhat, dist it's somewhat distorted. For a medical model, it's quite inaccurate. Oh. Hmm. The skeleton is gone. It was definitely there a moment ago. Oh! I read movement. This room, Gillian! Nice. Functions have been terminated. There's no doubt now that this is their maintenance facility. Terminated. This one was probably still waiting to get its artificial get it. skin installed. So this is what they really look like, huh? Yeah, that's the scariest thing about them. You can't tell them from real people once they've got that skin on. Perhaps that's humanity's great weakness. We're always judging books by their cover. And it's just that human weakness that they're out to take advantage of. All right, random. Metal, let's go. The HQ's junk squad can take care of him later. 
We've got an investigation to do. Oh! I forgot about that. <laughs> Sit down, snatcher scum. I think it's definitely dead. Uh, terminated this time. Yes, all its functions have ceased. I don't read any residual energy either. Impressive. Looks like I misjudged you, Junker. That was quite a tough customer. You get a few hundred of those together and that would be it. Gillian, let's get on with the investigation. Okay, okay, okay. Can we smell? It smells like burning machinery. Okay, I think we can check the next room. Just like that last one, you never you never know when they might pop out. Keep your blaster ready, Gillian. Let's take a look in the second room. Oh god, the sound in here can drive you crazy if you stay too long. Look at this. Some kind of testing equipment is running. That's a real nasty sound. It gets on my nerves. Uh, what do we have to do here? This room seems to be their real biotech research lab. Looks like Frankenstein could show up any minute. There are a number of jars for, form for formaldehyde and other chemicals. Okay, okay, okay. It's well equipped with micro manipulators, various types of lasers. It has a micro surgery system. There are a number of machines for biotech, for biotech experiments. It seems they're quite serious about their work. Samples mutated cells and organs with tumors. I don't want to look at this stuff. The room is illuminated with red light. It makes for a very disquieting atmosphere. What are they doing here? What are all these samples? This looks like a lot more than a place to, uh, to treat skin cancer. Argon lasers, argon dye lasers. It's a device for, sele uh, for selectively destroying certain types of cancer cells. They also have the latest gene cannon. Everything is quite neatly organized. There are samples here of monoclonal antibodies. What in the world is that? Antibodies which are said to have beneficial effects on cancerous melanomas. There's no mistake, this is definitely their maintenance hospital. DNA synthesizers, DNA sequencers, a nucleic acid, a nucleic acid extractor, uh, chromatography equipment, automatic pipetting devices. That's a particle accelerator used to generate a stream of heavy particles for a number of different treatment techniques. The machine is in standby mode. It looks like the snatchers were working on artificial skin regeneration techniques, as well as various cancer treatments. Uh... Okay, I think we're done here. Now if I investigate the switches again, I should find a way of opening the third one. It says morgue. Morgue is in where dead bodies are kept. Yes, Gillian, I think so. There are only two buttons. Maybe it can be opened using those two buttons. at the same time. Alright, let's 
try pushing both buttons simultaneously. The two buttons are on opposite panels, so there's no way one person can push them both alone. But if two of us work together, it might do it. That's it, Gillian. It makes perfect sense. It's the same system they used to use in nuclear missile silos in the late 20th century. Eliminates the risk of one man going nuts and acting alone. Well, it's hard to be sure, but let's give it a try anyway. I've got button one. Random, you push number two. You ready? On three. One, two, three. Come on! Hey! You did it! Door number three opened. With safety measures like that, they must have had a good reason for wanting to keep it closed. <laughs> but there are only three of us. How are we going to do this? Impossible. All right. Let's check out room number three. Are you ready, Random? Let's have a look at the last room. human skeletons in this room it's it's their morgue perhaps victims of the snatchers well it doesn't look like whoever put them here was too worried about making sure they would rest in peace no it doesn't these have got to be their victims this is probably where they hide the bodies of the originals they snatch from places like outer heaven they probably picked outer heaven because it gets a lot of vip traffic Plus, during masquerade True. time, they could work the place and still keep their identity secret. Yeah, and the guy who set up the link between them and Outer Heaven was Freddy, that taxi driver. They must have gone after him, not because of who he was, but what he did. After all, with a taxi, there's plenty of chances to milk your customers for information. That's probably how they learned about Outer Heaven and Plato's Cavern. I've been wondering what they had done with the bodies. Wanna hide a book? What better place than the library? Need to hide a body? How about the morgue? And for them, keeping the bodies hidden is crucial. I mean, if somebody who's supposed to be dead is out walking the streets, it wouldn't be too hard to figure out that something screwy is going on. That means that if we can figure out who these bodies were, then we just nailed four snatchers. You know, it is strange that night hasn't been around lately. I don't know. I don't know. There's something going on in Outer Heaven. Knight, he's a snatcher. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm gonna need to get another drink soon, my fucking mouth. Let's see. Let's look around the room. It appears to have been a proper morgue at one time, but now is being used as little more than a closet. There's a ventilation duct on one side of the room. There's a cover on the duct, but it has been weakened by oxidation. One of the bodies is still decomposing. The other three are little more than skeletons. There are a few droppings on the floor from mice who were no doubt feeding on the bodies. A number of different insect larvae have infested the body. And it hasn't been well preserved to say the least. It's definitely a human body. The insects infesting a decomposing body can be divided into eight large groups. Each of those groups work on the body for roughly 15 days making an 8 by 15 day or 4 month cycle. As such, an analysis, an, an analysis of the variety, number and size of the organisms on the body allows a rather accurate estimation of which group is currently present. In other words, you can figure out how long the victim's been dead without analyzing the body itself, right? On this particular body, flies have laid eggs and the maggots have grown into adult flies, so it has been less than 30 days since death. As for the other three bodies, one full cycle has been completed, so at least four months have passed. Phew, what a stench. So that's what rotting protein smells like. The decomposition process releases numerous gases.
cause of death. Can you determine the cause of death? The bodies are severely damaged. Such a determination would require more extensive facilities than are available here. What about the identity of the victims? Hair, clothing, even teeth. Anything that could be used to make an identification is gone. Damn snatchers. They were careful to make sure their identities didn't get out. If we even had some teeth, we might be able to make an ID. What about these teeth here? They've been deliberately misaligned to prevent identification. Then I guess we'll never be able to ID them. There is a way. What? How? We can perform a simulated reconstruction. Fortunately, the skulls of the victims are still intact. Reconstruction, eh? Good idea. Great idea. Do it, Metal Gear. Metal, let's do this reconstruction thing on the bodies. Now performing simulated reconstruction of the head and facial features of each of the four victims. Commencing with victim number one. Now performing craniometric analysis. X-ray and sagittal X-ray. Magnetic resonance imaging and positron CT data gathered. Complete cranial data now being compiled. Craniometric analysis complete. Now commencing reconstruction. First, victim's age. Estimate based on one, presence or absence of cranial fontanelles and chroma of epicranial sutures. Two, area of facial region and cranium. Three, height of upper and lower jaw and development of alveolar part. And four, location of cranial center of gravity. Next, victim sex. Estimate based on one, overall size of cranium. Two, parietal bone angle. And three, development of splachnocranium. Lastly, victim's race. Estimate based on one, overall cranial configuration. Two, volume of intracranial cavity. And three, mass of the skull. Now commencing soft feature reconstruction based on average results of above analysis. Reconstructing. Initial phase completed. Margin of error on estimate of victim's race, 10% based on use of average values. Now adding postulated hair and eye features. Reconstruction of head of first victim completed. It's Freddie Nielsen. Moving on to second victim. Now commencing reconstruction of features of victim number two. Now starting craniometric analysis. Complete cranial data now being compiled using the same techniques as the previous reconstruction. Craniometric analysis complete. Now commencing reconstruction using the same techniques as the previous reconstruction. Reconstructing. Initial phase completed. Margin of error on estimate of victim's race 10% based on use of average values. Now adding postulated hair and eye features. Reconstruction of head of second victim completed. That's Lisa Nielsen. Moving on to third victim. Now commencing reconstruction of features of victim number three. Now starting craniometric analysis. Complete cranial data now being compiled using the same techniques as the previous reconstruction. Craniometric analysis complete. Now commencing reconstruction using the same techniques as the previous reconstruction. Reconstructing. Initial phase completed. Margin of error on estimate of victim's race 10% based on use of average values. Now adding postulated hair and eye features. Reconstruction of head of third victim completed. Who in the world is that? That's the director of Queen's Hospital. Uh, Shin Fui, uh, what's his face? Uh... Shin Shu Oh, <laughs> Gillian. Moving on to last victim. Now commencing reconstruction of features Michael of Gears victim Gears tone there. Four. Oh, Gillian. This one's the most recent. It's still decomposing. Now starting craniometric analysis. Complete cranial data now being compiled using the same techniques as the previous reconstruction. Craniometric analysis complete. Now commencing reconstruction using the same techniques as the previous reconstruction. Reconstructing. Initial phase completed. Margin of error on estimate of victim's race 10% based on use of average values. Now adding postulated hair and eye features. Reconstruction of head of final victim completed. It's... it's the Chief! What? The Chief is a snatcher! The Benson on the scrap of that patient record was Benson Oh my Cunningham. god. Judging from the condition of the body, I would estimate that the snatching took place approximately one month ago. So it was the Chief who sabotaged our turbo cycle. And those matches we found in Harry's room, the Chief must have put them there to try to set him up. No doubt Harry figured it out and decided to leave that face-to-face -face message. Wait a minute. Didn't Mika say that Harry had left? 
to go find the chief? That's right. He was probably trying to track down some evidence on the chief. Gillian, I'd say that this Harry has put himself in a pretty dangerous spot. If it was the chief that sabotaged the turbo cycle, doesn't that mean that he already knows we're onto him? Damn! Harry and Mika are in danger! That's far enough, Junker. Your little investigation is over. <laughs> it's them! Who? Snatchers? Get them! This dude. This guy's voice. Oh, Gillian! My arm! I can't reach my blaster! Uh, I'm hitting the leg! Is that the best you can do, Junker? Who's who's there? Jin! Jin Shu Oh, you scum! It seems you still have some fight left in you. You two are finished, but our plans move forward. We are now entering phase two. And when we do, not only this city, but the entire world will be ours to command. Phase two? What are you talking about? As you know, our operations have been hindered up to now by the flaws in our artificial skin. The skin's shortcomings have kept us away from ultraviolet rays, forcing us to do our work at night, underground, or in the winter. In the end, we had to construct a hospital like this, all because of the flaws in our artificial skin. This was the only difference between us and you humans. But now we have broken this barrier. Huh? We are on the verge of developing a perfect artificial skin. Thanks to the cooperation of a new partner in our plan. Perfect artificial skin? Uh, a new partner? Once we have the new skin, nothing will be able to stop us. And with that, our plan moves to phase two. Our little experiment in this city will end. And we'll move in force to take over the world. Don't be so sure. <laughs> you won't get out of the city that easy. <laughs> you humans are always so overconfident, so naive. What are you talking about? I'm sure you're aware that the Kyoto Summit, being held to decide how to handle this natural problem, opens tomorrow. Metal, is that right? Yes. Countries around the world are concerned about the Snatcher problem. It will be one of the main topics discussed at this year's summit. That's right. Tomorrow, we attack the summit. <laughs> you must be crazy. The security there will be incredible. You won't even get close. Must I explain everything to you, Junker? Aren't you even aware that a fellow Junker will be giving a special presentation oh, shit. at the summit? The Chief! Cunningham! So that's why you snatched him. We've known that your Chief would be speaking at the summit for over three months now. Gillian, the summit is tomorrow. We have to hurry. Listen, we have your Chief. You Junkers are at our mercy, and so is this city. And tomorrow, we move on the world! <laughs> <laughs> Nothing can stop us now. We will finally achieve our long-awaited goal of global domination. <laughs> Who is this we you keep talking about? We? We are an evolved life form. Given life in the depths of the Kremlin by our creator, Madnar. We are a new race. Madnar? Madnar? The Kremlin, those names are familiar, but... Our goal is to snatch all of the world's leaders and then achieve total control of human thought and worldwide racial unification. You're insane. Humanity won't be so easily dominated. You underestimate the strength of the human spirit. I think not. 
In the same way as the Nazis, our <laughs> I think strategy not. begins with the overpowering of the spirit of the people. We will strike at you humans' weakest point, the most primitive part of your psychological makeup, your suspiciousness and fear. By provoking suspicion and mistrust throughout the populace, we will destroy that fragile fabric which holds your society together, that of trust. Fear is you humans' weak point. It is the primitive part of your brains that binds you forever to your animal Whoa. ancestors and makes you vulnerable. That sexy By guitar. By stimulating that part of your atavistic instincts, our plan can succeed magnificently. Gillian, at this rate, they'll kill us all. Oh, You've shit. got to get out alive. You're a junker. Just one of you have in mind. I've got a big fireworks show ready for him. Better that than get snatched. What? You're gonna blow yourself up? No, we're better off fighting together. Hey, it won't work. I'm hitting the thigh. Ow, oh, damn. A bounty hunter can't do anything with a leg wound like this. I might as well have been shot in the head. There must be some way out of here. Hey, I wasn't doing this job just for fun. I stayed ready for situations like this. I've always been prepared to go out with a bang. It's December. A little late for fireworks. So it'll be an off-season show. No, I can't let you. My belt's packed with TNTPX. You know, that really strong stuff they use in the mines on Mars? One push, and this whole hospital will go. No trouble at all. No time to sit around thinking, Junker boy. Go! What are you doing? Get your butt moving, you fool! Get out through this air shaft. I've got a powerful strobe on me. Its flash will screw up their sensors long enough for you to get out. Now you with me? Fireworks are better from a distance anyway, Gillian. Are you two finished chatting? Then I think it's time for you to die. We're quite busy, you know. You ready? When I give the signal, break into the air shaft and run, and don't forget your blaster. Metal, stay with me. Yes, sir. Random. Gillian. Doesn't look like I'm gonna have a chance to call in that debt you owe me. Don't worry. I'll pay it back to the Snatchers with interest. All right, go. Run, Gillian. What now? Uh, oh. Uh, oh, metal. Uh, metal. Uh, oh, okay? metal. Just like that, metal. Oh, yeah. Metal, something broken? Okay, but it appears that language circuits have been damaged somewhat. What happened? Random blew himself up after getting us into this air shaft. Random. Gillian, that explosion should have taken all of Queen's Hospital with it. The thick walls of this duct must have shielded us from enough of the blast. If it wasn't for Random, we wouldn't have made it. Oh, random. Gillian, we have no time for grief now. We must get back to Junker headquarters as quickly as possible. Harry and Mika are in danger. You're right. And I have to keep my promise to random. But first, we have to figure out how to get out of here. I can't see a thing. What should we do? Turn on our lights first, I guess. I guess. Metal, turn on your light, will you? I was waiting for you to ask. Let there be light. Well, let's try moving forward. There could be snatchers waiting for us. Please use extreme caution. Hold on one sec, guys.
Uh, let me just catch up, make sure I'm up to date on subs and resubs and everything. I think I am. Oh, wait. What the fuck? I'm not. Screwy Louie, thank you for the 55. Watfords, uh, thank you for the $10 donation. Uh, four hours ago, the relaxing end on YouTube just posted an unboxing video of an incredibly rare MGS1 premium package made in 1998. 1998, can you watch it with the fans? No chance in hell. But thank you for the $10. Uh, but I'm not, I certainly won't be watching that video right now on stream, no. But really, uh, but I really appreciate the $10. <laughs> uh, let's see. Pure Wexford Beef, thank you for the $5 as well. Dog, take my energy. I don't think I thanked you for that, did I? That was like two hours ago. Uh, Colonel gifted a sub to DRK. Please ban me, baby. Or wait, no, it's please hug me, baby, now. Uh, thank you for that. And I think I'm up to date on everything before that. Maybe I did thank Wexford for his donation. Reaction video to unboxing videos when? I know, what's it? Okay, Watford, is that your YouTube account? It really seems like that's your YouTube account. And you're trying to leech views. You're trying to bait me with your generous $10. Is that what you're doing? Is that what you're up to? I think that might be exactly what you're up to. Uh, but thank you for the $10, I guess. I suppose. Uh, okay, 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 okay. A uh, Jovenstar or Jovenster. 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 Thank you for the sub. Cheers. Mercy Beau Chicken Coop, as those French uh, like to say. Alright, alright. Let's keep going. Gillian, are you sure that this thing has an exit? There's some kind of scratches here. Scratches? Check them out. It's constructed quite well. There are signs that construction to reinforce it has been carried out. Reinforcing bars formed of level 4 hardness steel alloy have been installed. It's quite strong. Uh, and that's what saved us. I guess we should thank them, eh? It seems that this is not just a simple air duct. What's this? There's some sand spilled here. How did this get here? For an air duct, the quantity of the dust is quite low. So that means that this thing is used regularly, right? Yes. There is certainly no reason... Uh, there's certainly, there is certainly no reason why anyone would ever deliberately clean a duct like this. Achoo! Gillian, is it Snow Nine? Fuck, didn't mean to press that one again. Alright, now analyzing this sand. Iron particles, high quantities of phosphorus. This type of sand is particular to the M district in Neo Kobe. The M district, eh? Around the old factory, right? What's that mean? It's quite unusual that the particular sand would be present here. It was no doubt brought here by someone. This scratch was caused by the scraping of a very hard, claw-like object of some kind. A snatcher? Maybe they were using this as some kind of shortcut, or black, uh, or black root. Alright, I will gather and analyze a sample of the air here. Gillian, the results are as I would have expected. Though the concentration is thin, there is definitely Snow Nine present. Snow Nine, huh? Is it okay to breathe it? You will be safe at these concentrations. This does not seem to be just an ordinary air duct. It looks like the Snatchers have been using it to move around. With these scratches and the presence of Snow Nine, I'd say it's definite. 
I sure don't- I, I sure don't want to meet up with any of them in a tight space like this. Okay, okay. I remember this part taking a long time. Like, you have to fucking analyze everything. Uh, let's see. The farther we go, the higher the concentration. It must be coming from that direction. Ah, so now we can advance. Okay. Alright, continuing forward. Jeez, this thing just keeps going. Uh-oh. In sectors? Gillian, watch out! These fights can actually get tricky at the very end of the game. Uh, there's one fight towards the end anyway that I think is actually pretty challenging. Ha! Oh! I'm no longer reading any motion. Phew. They really build a lot of those things, don't they? Gillian, are you injured? Barely. They only hit me once. Those insectors must be the security for this area. Which means that at the end of this duct... I'm not reading any more motion. Let's move on. Don't want to meet up with any more of those spiders. Look. A way out. We're saved, Gillian. Metal, don't let your guard down. What in the world? This is part of the tube liner, the city's long abandoned subway system. You mean Queen's Hospital and this were connected? Yes, it would appear that the Snatchers were using this to move from place to place. This would provide them with the perfect way to move about while still avoiding the ultraviolet rays they hate so much. We should have realized this sooner. The city is crisscrossed by the tube liner's old lines. And since they are abandoned, the Snatchers could move undetected as well. Aha! Uh -huh. That's how those two we caught a glimpse of at the abandoned factory where Gibson was killed were able to disappear so quickly. They must have used this subway. That would appear to be correct. The tube liner passes underneath that factory site as well. That would also explain why sand from the factory was in the air duct at the hospital. So this is the trick they were using to stay out of the sun and avoid being seen while they moved around. Now we know why it took so long to uncover them. Alright, let's follow the subway. We should be able to get out when we get to the nearest station. I always get uh, FF7 vibes <laughs> during that screen. When you're down on the tracks, similar sort of look to it. How far does this bloody thing go? And look at this shit, we have a moving screen now. Look at the tech. We're probably lost. Look at these animations. I like Metal Gear's little light. It's cute. I wonder where we are. Metal, can you see what's up ahead? It appears that the tunnel continues uh, for as far as I can see. That's the area we just passed through. I see nothing out of the ordinary. The only sound is that of our own footsteps. Metal, can you hear any trains approaching? What are you saying, Gillian? The tube liner system has, be has been abandoned for years. I'm not picking up any unusual sounds. Metal, how much farther do we have to go to reach the next station? Since I don't know what our exact present location is, I cannot give you an accurate figure. This part of the system didn't have very many stations. We'll probably have to walk quite a bit further. What part of the city is this? I believe we are probably underneath the MR district. Hey, Metal. Yes, Gillian? Nothing. Just wanted to make sure you were awake. Huh? 
Huh? Gillian, what's wrong? Look, metal, light! Yes, but this doesn't look like a station. There's a ladder. Where do you suppose it leads, Gillian? I don't have the slightest, but let's climb it and see. All right, now climbing the ladder. We seem to have emerged into an odd place. Wait, this room. It's Freddie Nielsen's bathroom. He was using this shaft from the bathtub ah. to get down into the subway. So that's how he did that. Ah, uh, yes. As I recall, after you disposed of Lisa, he somehow entered the apartment without using the regular entrance. Which he accomplished by using this secret passage into his bathtub. The bathtub must be of a double construction. The bottom is actually a lid. When they wanted to hide the passage, all they needed to do was fill the tub. And to get in and out, they would just drain the water into another tank. Jeez. Double bottom bathtubs? Abandoned subways? Snatchers really go out of their way to stay out of the sun. Okay, Gillian, let's head outside. Okay. To the living room. This is Freddy's living room. Do we need to look around for anything in here? Or... Is the whole thing with the map... Investigate the map again, I guess. Might be worth it. It's a large-scale map of Moscow. Moscow, eh? Chin Shuo over at Queen's Hospital had a picture of St. Basil's Cathedral. The chief keeps a picture of Red Square hidden. How come everybody is such a big Moscow fan these days? What's going on here? Moscow seems to hold some clue to this whole thing, doesn't it? Moscow, did that guy say something about it? Before the explosion, didn't Chin Shu Wo say something about achieving what was meant to be 55 years ago in the depths of the Kremlin? Now that you mention it, this map is from exactly that era, isn't it? Moscow, 55 years ago. The key to understanding the Snatchers no doubt lies there. This has to have some meaning. I don't think they'd paste a 50-year-old map up here just as a decoration. It's a late 20th century map. Uh, okay, okay, okay. I think we can leave. <laughs> it's true, Happy. Tape. Uh, tape? You mean this laser beam, right? Don't break the beam, Gillian. You'll have people from headquarters all over the place. It's a security sensor, you know. I see. Gotta make sure nobody messes with the evidence, after all. Yeah, yeah. Jeez, I feel like I'm breaking into the place or something. We're outside of Nielsen's apartment. Thank God. Now let's get back to headquarters. Look, there's a taxi over there. The cab is for hire. Shall we board it? Let's do it. All right, let's board the taxi. Oh, God. <laughs> this is not a friendly looking taxi at all. It looked much better from the outside. I mean, it didn't look too friendly from the outside, but man. We've boarded the taxi. Where to, sir? This is a man cab. I can take you anywhere you want to go. And we're on urgent business. Get us to Junker Headquarters as quickly as you can. Uh, Junker Headquarters, eh? What would you want to go there for? Something going down? We're in a hurry. Is that some kind of a joke, sir? You can't be serious. This is a man taxi, you know. I can't go to a place like that. Metal, I think we picked a weird taxi. Listen, I'm a Junker. Take me to Junker Headquarters and do it quickly. I'm afraid not. You're going somewhere else. You want to know where that is? Where? Straight to hell! Ho! Chin Shuo! Is he dead? He's junk now. Stubborn one, wasn't he? Jeez. He made it through that explosion and was waiting for us out here. 
those things ever get control of the city, there's no way we'll ever get it back. We've got to stop them before that. And to do that, we have to prevent the Chief from getting to the Kyoto Summit. I know. And I have to pay back my debt to random. Let's use this taxi to get back to Junker Headquarters. I planned on it. I just hope Mika and Harry are safe. No subtitles during scenes, no. Oh, this track. Man, I love the music. We've arrived at Junker Headquarters. I certainly hope Mika and Harry are safe. All right, Metal, this is it. The final showdown. Are you ready? Let's go. Now entering headquarters. This is the lobby. What? The shutter on the reception booth is closed. The surface of the shutter shows evidence of having been struck by fire from an energy weapon. I read motion. Something is in the booth. It appears that something attacked this place. The shutter on the reception booth is closed. Is Mika still in the booth? There are a few holes in the shields, no doubt caused by the blaster or cannon fire. Cannon? Then it's Snatchers who did this. Uh, ha, ha. The emergency light is flashing on the door. So headquarters, ha uh, so headquarters has been put on emergency status? Gillian, we have to open this somehow. It's been locked from the inside. The only way to open it is from the in is from inside the booth. How the hell do we do it? has an emergency external connection port, then it can be opened from the outside. Metal, find this external connection jack. Here we are. I've located an emergency external connection port on the, uh, on the side of the booth. With this, I'll be able to open the shutter. Now plugging into the emergency external connection port. Releasing lock mechanism. Now opening the shutter. All right, I'm going to open it, but please use extreme caution. Anything could be inside. Mika! Mika, are you all right? Metal, how is she? Her pulse is normal. The only external injuries are to her forehead, and they are not serious. There's been no significant blood loss. Uh, uh. Mika, come on, snap out of it. It's me, Gillian. Uh, Gillian? Gillian? Mika, what happened? Gillian, the chief. The chief is a snatcher. So he's finally shown his true colors. Harry, Harry's... What's happened to Harry? Harry put me in the pot and sealed the main door. He locked the Snatcher in. That was smart. Not even a Snatcher can get through this shield. So where's Harry? He said keep the door sealed no matter what happens in there. And then he went in. Gillian, please help him. Harry! Mika, open the door. I'm going in. Metal, we're going in. Be careful. That Snatcher could be hiding anywhere. Yes, sir. Gillian, please be careful. The Chief is very cunning. Don't let your guard down. Don't worry. I'll watch myself in there. Just 
We're in the main hallway. What's this? Someone's down. That hat. Harry. Uh, Harry. Oh. Oh, Gillian. Is that you? I'm getting old. Just look at me. What happened? I saw the chief messing with your turbo cycle. And that that weird picture in his office. Ah. Metal, how is he? Metal! I... I do not wish to say. Really? That bad, huh? Gillian. Gillian, when I confronted him about what I saw, he showed me what he really was. I was... I was barely able to even scratch him. That's enough, Harry. I understand. Metal, is there anything we can do for him? Gillian, I'm sorry. Harry, you'll be okay. It doesn't look like you're hurting too bad. This will work out perfect. Uh, you always were working too hard anyway. Uh, why don't you take a nice long vacation somewhere and rest up? Yeah, sure. Nice try, Gillian, but it's my body. I know I... I know I ain't gonna make it. You... You were a good kid, Gillian. Harry! I don't know how to say this right, but... But I've always had a special feeling about you. I've... I've always had trouble talking to people since I was little. Like my father. What I can remember of him... <sighs> Pulse and blood pressure falling. Harry, hang in there. Uh, you and I were gonna go out and tie one on, remember? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's... that's not a bad idea. You, me, and Jean, the three of us... But John is... Metal, quiet! Gillian, I've lived my life alone. I didn't know my parents or family. Always so stubborn, glued to my research. I never really trusted anybody. That was a mistake. <laughs> Blood pressure continuing to fall. Harry? After... After Jean died, I, I felt it. Human warmth. Companionship. I know what you mean. Kelly and I just... I just wanted to get along with everybody. I don't need no Nobel Prize. For 50 years, I've been searching, trying to find something I lost. <laughs> Looks like I'll never find it now. Gillian, he's about... <laughs> Looks like I've been talking too much. It's... it's up to you now, Gillian. I'm... I'm finished. You won't forget this old grouch, will you? Harry! Gillian... Gillian, you've got to believe in yourself. You're... You're... You're the last... Junker. Harry! Harry! Pulse zero. Pupils are dying. Take Mika and run. Then you've got to blow up Junker headquarters. Blow it sky high. You understand me? Yes, sir. I just hope it doesn't come to that. So, where should we start our search? The tunes, man. Too good. Symphonian. How's it going? Good to see you. Oh! Another banger. Tune after tune. R.I.P. Harry.
This is the chief's office. Investigating. What? Oh, sorry, nothing there. Forget how this section works exactly. I think we just have to check all the rooms and go to the chiefs. Oh yeah, this <laughs> this is pretty good. This is the chief's office. What's this? There's something on the desk. Hmm. Something dripping from the ceiling. But we can't see the ceiling, so neither can the characters. There is some kind of stain on the desktop. There was no stain like this a few moments ago. It's... It's blood. There's a pool of blood on the desktop. It appears... It appears that blood is dripping from the ceiling. Yes, blood is dripping from the ceiling. Look. Stain on desk. There's a pool of blood on the desktop. Ha! The stain was not there before. Search the ceiling. Why don't we investigate the ceiling? <laughs> Cunningham! What are you doing up there? Oh! Is he trying to run? Motion readings have vanished. You got past me this time, Snatcher. Headquarters emergency lighting has been activated. Can we find him again? We should go after him immediately. We'll find him. We know he's somewhere inside headquarters. The Snatcher has been wounded. We should look for traces of blood. Good God. Where are we going now? Checking all the rooms again. It's cool with a different light now. Check the computer room. Damn, where's it hiding? There's no way, uh, there's no way for it to get out of headquarters. There's still some rooms we haven't checked. The front. never know. But the main door was sealed off when we came in. We've checked and double-checked everywhere else. Let's go and take a look. The main door has 
has been opened. Did Mika open it? Wait, Mika's not in the pod. Oh, God. What happened? The lighting has been disconnected. Don't move, Seed. Cunningham, is that you? I read motion. He is definitely in here. Where are you? Show yourself. <laughs> I'm right here. I don't need to run or hide from you. Mika! No, Gillian, don't move. It's a trap. A hostage? You cowardly scum! Mika, why did you open the entrance? I don't know. I was really scared. I mean, the emergency light's coming on so suddenly. Seed, go ahead and shoot. But you'd better be a pretty good shot, or this kid goes home in a bag. Shoot, Gillian. Kill this thing. Don't worry about me. Mika! What are you going to do? I have you now, Junker! Oh! Oh, shit! Damn, good RNG. The Snatcher's functions have been terminated. Mika, are you alright? Yes. Yes, I think so. Thank you. Harry? I got him. Random? Sorry it took so long, but this ought to make us even. Junk, 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 junker! You may have stopped me, but it's not over yet. Gillian, this is just residual energy feedback. Its power levels are dropping rapidly. Crane's hospital was nothing more than a maintenance facility. We have comrades operating throughout the city. More than you can imagine. Now our plans will move into phase two. For that, we will enlist the help of Professor Lorraine. You? Your existence is meaningless. As long as you don't get your memory back. Good luck, Junker. My memory? Comrades? Professor Lorraine? Harry! Why, please tell me. Why do so many good people have to die? Mika! This is all wrong. Mika, don't worry. I won't let anybody else die. I've made a promise to Harry and Random. But the city is still full of snatchers. This fight is just beginning. Gillian, I have an urgent video call from Jamie. I'll connect you. Uh-oh. Gillian, I've got my memory back. I remember everything. Your memory? Uh, so what about us, Jamie? Who are we? Gillian, it's terrible. What we've done... Jamie, what's wrong? I can't tell you something like this over the video phone. I would have been better off never remembering. Okay, Jamie, calm down. I'll head out right now. Uh... Where are you? Is it snowing? I'm sorry, Gillian. I can't tell you. They've taken our boy hostage. Our boy? Who? Professor Modner is here, too. Jamie, what are you talking about? I'm so sorry. Snatcher! Gillian! We have Professor Lorraine. We only require her cooperation for a short period here at the Kremlin. So for now, I suggest you avoid doing anything foolish, Professor Seed. Professor Seed? Professor Lorraine? <laughs> I I Emulator bug.
I don't remember getting that one last time. With the start of this year's Kyoto Summit just three hours away, the delegates from the participating countries are beginning to arrive at the conference center. A major poll of domestic and international opinion carried out just last week shows that the vast majority of respondents favor a complete quarantine of Neo Kobe as a means to combat the risk of the snatcher menace. Now that the Chief's death has been confirmed, it won't be long before they strip us of our Junker authorization. They will be deciding how to handle Neo Kobe at the summit in just three hours. There are rumors that they're going to use nukes on the city to make sure the Snatchers are wiped out. That's ridiculous. Come on, this is the 21st century. That may not be as improbable as it seems. The world's leaders are extremely concerned about the Snatcher problem. The Chief was going to calm this hysteria in his speech at the summit, but that'll never happen now. Three months ago, government pressure on Junker operations increased dramatically. Gillian's transfer here was really our last chance. Our own Chief was snatched. It's not too surprising they don't want to trust us anymore. I've heard that the Army and FBI are going to take over operations now. That's correct. That too will be officially decided in three hours' time. Three hours, eh? Is there any way we can find their hideout in that time? If we don't, we and everybody else in this city are finished. As far as they're concerned, we're just like a cancerous tumor that has to be cut out. We have to hit the Snatcher's headquarters before then. Gillian, can you do it? If we only knew where it was, I should be able to manage something. Hitting their outposts like Queen's Hospital won't do any good. We have to find their main nerve center. What about the memory of that Snatcher who was impersonating the Chief? Just like the others, it was completely blanked. It's a form of self-destruct mechanism that they use. Wait a minute. Mental, what about tracing that video phone call from Jamie? It was no good. The call didn't last long enough. Still, it definitely did come from within the city. Damn. Where are they hiding? Gillian, can't you remember anything at all? Didn't Jamie say something that implied you were somehow connected to the Snatchers? Nothing. I can't remember a damn thing. Metal, I want you to tell me everything you know about me. Why was I sent to Junker headquarters? Where did I come from? Uh, Gillian... Metal, the Chief's dead. Tell me everything you know about me. Well... Metal! All right. With the Chief gone, you are the highest-ranking officer here. You knew all along? Of course. Where were we rescued from? Three years ago, you and Jamie were taken into protective custody in the Siberian Neutral Zone by the 17th Siberian Investigative Force. More precisely, you were discovered in cryogenic sleep pods in an underground bunker near Moscow. Cryogenic sleep pods? You mean they were frozen? This is a photograph of the bunker. There is no record of when you were placed there. In addition, the third pod was empty at the time you were discovered. There were three pods? You were revived and taken into custody by the army. Apparently, as a result of the extended sleep, both of you suffered from complete amnesia. However, another theory suggests your memories may have been intentionally erased. This is the only piece of evidence found at the site. That's Harry's picture, from when he was a kid. That's correct. Harry is Gillian and Jamie's son. What? It's been confirmed by DNA tests. Harry? Harry was my son? Using the information gained from the photo, it was established that you are Gillian Seed and your wife, Jamie Lorraine. Both of you are American citizens, born in the late 1960s. The 1960s? In addition, both of you vanished without a trace in 1989. 
There is no other information available about you after that. 1989? Yes. You come from a world that's been gone for 50 years. But what does that have to do with the Snatchers? When the 17th Special Investigative Force was bringing the two of you out, there was an accident. Though the two of you were all right, most of the 17th was killed. One of them was a Snatcher. Of course, before their departure, they all underwent thorough examinations. So, if one of them was snatched... It had to be somewhere in Siberia, right? That's correct. And in order to attempt to determine the origin of the Snatcher, as well as your true identities, you were assigned to Junker Headquarters. The hope was that exposure to the Snatchers would help you regain your memories. Moscow? Fifty years ago? Almost everyone who was in Moscow at the time was killed in the catastrophe. So Gillian and Jamie are the only living witnesses? Harry... Harry was my son. Did he know? No. It was highly classified information. He was never told. I... I was never able to do anything for him. Wait a minute, Gillian. Didn't Jamie say something about taking a boy hostage? -a 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 That's right. They must know about Harry and are using him to threaten her. We have to find their headquarters quickly. We've only got three hours. Gillian, let's think this all through again. We may get some kind of a hint out of it. You're right. There may be some clue in the way they're operating. All right. Let's go over what we know about them. First of all, what's the Snatcher's weak point? Infrared rays, ultraviolet rays, x-rays, sun's rays, cold. Pussy, sun, anus, sex, the dick. What the hell, chat? That was like instant. What? As soon as the question was asked, just these abhorrent uh, answers just slapped into the chat vomited into the chat unbelievable here I was just looking for a normal answer hoping everyone was paying attention infrared rays ultraviolet rays x-rays sun's rays or cold which one is it chat UV rays UV rays? This is the Snatcher's weak point. That's correct. Their weak point is their, uh, is their defective artificial skin. Long-term exposure to ultraviolet rays causes mutations in the melanocytes in the stratum bas bas basal of their skin, which become cancerous. Basal. Basal. Uh, specifically, long ultraviolet rays in the 250 to 350 nanometer range is responsible for causing the cancer. Uh, that's right, and that's the reason that they are so limited as to when they can be out. Uh, they only come out at night in the middle of the winter and wear sunscreen even then. That's the method that John used to figure out what the Snatchers were up to. How ironic. It turns out that, that the destruction of the ozone layer actually had a benefit for us humans. That's right. Now, what method were, now, what method were they using uh, to move and be able to avoid ultraviolet rays and sunlight at the same time? Give me a break, chat. I've been reading for the last eight hours or something. Like, last seven, six or seven hours straight. Underpass, highway, turbo cycle, black taxi. Underpass, underpass. This is the method of movement that the Snatchers were using. That's right. They were using the abandoned tunnels of the old tube liner system to get from place to place. That's how they were able to move around without being noticed. Nielsen's apartment, the old factory, Queen's hospital, all of their hideouts were connected by the tube liner. 
So maybe there is a tunnel under their main base as well. There's a good chance of that. Next, what phenomenon was uh, always observed at any location where snatchers appeared, including the underground tunnels? Cough, yawn, hiccup, sneeze. Sneeze, of course. That's right, and what was the cause of the sneezing? Dust, smoke, snow nine, or cold? Snow nine. This is the reason for the sneezing. You're correct. The sneezing was caused by the presence of the allergen snow nine. Snow nine is an artificial form of pollen developed by the military, and its presence is limited to certain regions. They were using it to interfere with radio transmissions and keep people away. They probably were producing it intentionally themselves. The only regions of the city where Snow Nine is still present are areas around the Ina River. It has been cleared out of other areas because of the danger it presents. So that means that their base must be somewhere near the Ina River, right? That is a fair conclusion. They are probably somewhere near the Ina River protected by Snow Nine. Hmm, accessible to the tube liner and near the Ina River. And we must not forget three photographs that we found the Snatchers with. All of them were related to the Soviet Union before the catastrophe. The map on the wall of Nielsen's apartment. The picture of the temple in the director's office at Queen's Hospital. The photo of Red Square hidden in the chief's office. Why do the Snatchers keep pictures and memorabilia like this? Maybe they're homesick? Maybe that's where they come from? Homesick? Get serious, Mika. They're robots, you know. Let's analyze this a little closer. What city is related to all three of these pictures? Moscow, New York, Russia, or Tokyo? New York. Either New York or Russia. The city of Russia. This is the city they have in common. That's correct, it's Moscow. Moscow must be where they come from. That must be the basis of their programming. You might be right. Just as people have a hometown that is dear to them, their creator may have put a hometown into their programming. They use very advanced artificial intelligence systems so that they have needed, as, so they may have needed something like that to maintain their emotional balance. Yeah, they were born out of nothing, but they needed to give them some kind of image as an emotional base. So Moscow is their creator and their home place and they uh, and the place that they found Jamie and I in other words this homing instinct thing of theirs has led them to set up their headquarters in some place that reminds them of home or their creator what part of this city is like Moscow Moscow's really cold right they get a lot of snow don't they snow no snow has been recorded in Neo Kobe in several years well then that's not it wait what about that pollen? That crystal bioengineered stuff, Snow 9. Now that you mention it, wasn't it snowing on Jamie's video phone call? That's right. Their hideout has to be somewhere close to the Ina River. The Ina River flows for miles around here, Gillian. Ah, we can never search not it all in time. Gillian, let's look at a map of the areas investigated so far. This is an enlarged view of the southwest portion of the city around the Ina River. This blue area is that in which Snow 9 is present. Now I'll superimpose a chart of the abandoned tube liner tunnels. From this we can establish those areas with Snow 9, which are accessible by subway tunnel. Damn. Nice try, but it's still too large. We could never cover it in three hours. Don't give up so fast, Gillian. What about that image of home thing we were talking about? Maybe there's some kind of geographic similarity. Maybe the same view can be seen or something. I'll display a map of Moscow alongside. Hmm. What's this? Look! The rivers are exactly the same shape! This is the Moscow River over here. It looks like we're on the right track, Metal. Show us the location that Jamie and I were picked up from. All right. Right here. Metal, before the catastrophe, what was at this location? The headquarters for the entire Soviet Union, the Kremlin. The Kremlin? 
That Snatcher said something about taking Jamie to their Kremlin. Metal, what spot in Neo Kobe would match up with the location of Moscow's Kremlin? Calculating. This is the spot. It's presently occupied by an old church. It's rather large, but reports ba, ba, indicate ba, ba, it's been abandoned for nearly 20 years. And it's right in the middle of the Snow Nine and Subway area. That's it! That's their headquarters! Their new Kremlin! Gillian, let's go! Wait, Gillian. I want to go with you. Sorry, Mika. Hey, I'm a Junker too, you know. I know, and you're a great one at that. So take me with you, then. You head to the summit to warn the delegates. They haven't given up, you know. The summit's in Kyoto. I'm not going to be the only one to run. You've got to convince them not to use nukes on Neo Kobe. We found their hideout. There's no need now to sink the whole island. Yes, but... It's a tough job. Can you do it? Okay, Gillian. I'll do what I can. Thanks. Thank you, Mika. Don't say it, okay? Let's go, Gillian. Gillian? Yes? Um... Uh... What's wrong? How about dinner sometime? Dinner? Yeah, you know, dinner. Hmm, Mika. Not interested. I thought it would be nice, you know, to kick back, relax. It's Christmas after all. Christmas, huh? I'll be back by then. Gillian, we have to hurry. That's a promise, right? I heard you. Yeah, okay. But I gotta go to church first. <laughs> I'll see you soon then. Okay, Metal, let's go. La ba ba da. Let's do it. Let's save one more time. Well. Before the turbo cycle, where are we going? Of course I know the answer to that question. The church. I've input the map data on the Kremlin's locations. Lift off. Flight configuration, now gaining altitude. Jamie, please be safe. Gillian. Please keep in mind that we're working with a strict time limit. A 50 year debt in three hours. Snow! Snow 9, to be specific. We've entered the Snow 9 region. Please put on your breathing filter. Direct inhalation is dangerous. All right. Radio transmissions will also be impossible from this point on. Understood? Descending. Conversion to hover configuration complete. Gillian, we've arrived. Uh, police knots later? I don't think so, no. Um, I don't think we'll have time for... for um, I don't think we'll have time for police knots. After this, we'll do the MSX games, and then, then I think we'll... Um, then I think the arcade will be taken over for MGS1, then it'll be 2, then 4, and I don't think we'll have time for much else, really. We might be able to fit in maybe another round of PT if we have a couple of hours to spare. We could always run through that again. Um, just if we have time to kill. Yeah, I don't think we'll have any more than a couple of hours to spare. Uh, investigate the building. 
The building is about 50 years old, but appears very well maintained. So where's the entrance? You had a dream about PT last night? Sipster, nice. <laughs> it was fun playing it. On the front side of the building. Uh, let's investigate the area. A sensor scan reveals that a tube liner tunnel passes directly underneath this area. Well, that's no surprise. Looks like we've got the right place. Alright, now opening the door. What's wrong? Won't open? I've scanned it, and it's not locked. It is probably rusted into place. Not surprising. After all, our friends always go in and out through the basement. Let's push it together. Alright. One. Two. Three! That got it. What's this? Oh, I love the sound here. Would appear to be some kind of a chapel for the Snatchers. Are you telling me those things pray? To whom? No doubt to their creator. That portrait on the wall is probably a representation of them. This person is no doubt... Uh, is no doubt the one the snap. Oh wait, no, never mind. <laughs> I misread it. Uh, this person is no doubt the one the Snatchers worship as their creator. This guy. Isn't that random? One moment. I'll compare the picture with my data on random. While the facial bone structure of the individual in the portrait is nearly identical to that of random, positive identification is impossible, as the picture is not a photograph. It just looks too much like him to be a coincidence. Something is written on the painting. The creator, Modnar. So this is Professor Modnar. The one the Snatcher was talking about, eh? It appears to be a portrait of that person. It's all very organized, almost inhumanly so. Mm. There is another room there is another room farther back. It's perfectly quiet. So have they already left for the summit? How's it going, user? I'm alive. I'm doing alright. Snatchers. Look at them all. I'm not picking up any energy readings. They're all deactivated in some kind of suspension mode. So this is their warehouse, eh? There must be a few hundred of them here. They continue all the way back. But still, this doesn't look like a factory to me. There seem to be a number of containers stacked up in the back of the room. Ole. Thank you for gifting a sub to whoever that is. I can't see a translation. But whoever that is, however I say your name, uh, enjoy your gifted sub. There's some kind of a label here. 23rd Siberian Investigative Force. Siberian investigative force. It would appear that these snatchers were brought to Neokobe from the Siberian neutral zone. It seems that the investigative force have been responsible for shipping the snatchers. In other words, the investigative forces have been snatched just like when they found us. These are endostructures which have yet to have the artificial skin installed. The bone sizing devices and skull slits are all still set to the smallest sizes. So their victims haven't been chosen yet. They're all just waiting their turn. 
None of these snatchers appear damaged. All they need is their energy packs. The gender units have yet to be installed, however. I do not see any tools or equipment for maintaining anything in the area. This room would appear to be just a storage area. I see. So the Siberian investigative forces bring the Snatchers out of Siberia and into storage here. I think you're right, Metal. And then the Snatchers just wait here in storage to be reactivated and adjusted after their victims are selected. A rather efficient system. I wonder where the actual snatching takes place. The back part of this room may hold the answer to that question. Ole, thank you for gifting us up to Lord Alucard. Are you ready, Gillian? Now heading for the room farther back. Man, 102 gifted subs now, Ole. Thank you so much. Snatcher's culturing room. The mechanism is operating. Gillian, there are snatchers with their artificial skin already installed here. This is where they fuse the artificial skin onto the snatcher's endostructure. First, they adjust the size of the still skinless snatcher to the size of the individual who is to be snatched. The snatcher's overall shape and size can be adjusted by expansion or contraction of sizing rods. Their sex is controlled by gender units, which are installed at this point. Then, the face is modified to match the intended victim by adjusting the size of the upper and lower jaw, cheekbones, temporal bones, and tooth alignment. Just like Gibson said, that means there are limits to the size of the people that they can snatch. That's right. The limits of the mechanism mean that they can't snatch children, the elderly, or people who are very tall or heavy. And this is where the artificial muscles attach. Is it organic? No. It appears to be coated with a type of plastic gel capable of mechanical response. Like human muscles, it creates mechanical energy through chemical reactions. And this is where the artificial skin is attached. In order to prevent the synthetic cells, developed using biotechnological protein design techniques, from rejecting the inorganic material below, they attach it gradually over a number of days. And this is the stuff that gets cancer if they stay out in the sun too long. Finally, they attach body and scalp hair. The process involves transplant of synthetic hair follicles as well, so the hair will grow back if it's lost. What about scars or birthmarks? It would appear that they make those adjustments at this point in the process, as they would for wrinkles to simulate age. These units are nearly ready to perform a complete snatch. A computer terminal is installed on each preservation cylinder. These cylinders are used to culture the snatcher's artificial skin. Endostructures are submerged within them. Yeah, 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 yeah. The whole area is protected as a clean room. There is a door at the far end of the room. It's locked, but I should be able to open it from this side. Power is on. Look at this, Gillian. The data of people to be snatched is all being neatly processed. So this is where the whole thing begins. The endostructures arrive here from the Kremlin. Then they convert them into copies of their victims. And finally, they head out into the city using the old subway system. With artificial skin maintenance being handled at Queen's Hospital. But who is behind all this? Gillian, look at this. There are some finished snatchers over here. Get a load of this! The U.S. President, the Prime Ministers of Japan, and the U.K. I knew it. Gillian, you're in here too! Huh, figures. They were looking to snatch every VIP at the summit. And the last junker, you. It definitely looks like they plan on moving out beyond Neo Kobe. If they were to snatch every major world leader, they'd practically be able to control the planet. Still, that's odd. With their fluid skin, pulling something off like that would really be difficult. Chin said they had found the key to developing a perfect artificial skin. Maybe they've already produced it. No idea. 
But the number of snatchers here makes it clear that they're up to something new. Gillian, this is definitely their nest. We should destroy everything. Not yet. Not until we found Jamie. Uh, Metal, uh, how much time do we have left? The summit should have begun by now. We don't have much time. And once our legal privileges are suspended, I won't be able to help. In fact, I'll be forced to restrain you. I know, I know. If the military wants to avoid nukes and goes for a surgical strike on this facility, uh, what would they likely use? Probably a phased particle beam from one of the attack satellites. A phased particle beam, huh? That'll wipe this complex right off the map. Everything, including the soil, will simply evaporate. The attack will leave just a large crater. Metal, can you convince them to give me another hour? Even 30 minutes will help. Understood. I'll try my best. And I'll try to find and rescue Jamie in that time. I can't transmit here due to interference from the Snow Nine. I'll have to leave the area and then send the message. All right. Do it, Metal. Gillian, don't forget. 30 minutes. You must get out before then. I understand. Gillian, I'm sorry I couldn't help you better. Don't worry about it. I'll be able to move faster by myself anyway. 30 minutes should be plenty. Go, Metal! Yes, sir. Don't forget! 30 minutes! Stay safe, Metal! 30 minutes? Oh, this is gonna be tight. That room is the only place left to check. Let's take a look. Warble, thank you for the tier one. Much appreciated. Oh shit, here we go. You gotta be careful on this one. Easy to fuck up. Oh, man, he's good. Who is this guy? Oh. Whew. I wasn't ready for that. They almost got me. All right, uh, let's open the next door. Doesn't look like there's anything here. Oh! No, 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 no! Nice, nice, nice. Jeez, these guys are tough. Of course, I didn't exactly expect them to welcome me with open arms. Okay, uh, let's try this next door. Nope. Don't take the bait. Jamie. Are you all right? Gillian, you came for me. Are you hurt? No, they won't lay a finger on me. Not until the new artificial skin is completed anyway. Artificial skin research? You? Gillian, I've got my memory back. All of it. What happened? Tell me, Jamie. They said they'd kill him. They said they'd kill Harry. They forced me. I had to help them with the skin development. 
They said I had to help them because the professor was ill. Wasn't getting any better. Gillian, the engineer Harry, he's our son. He's been living on his own now for 50 years. Jamie, I'm afraid that Harry's... There was nothing I could do. They forced me. But I can't do it anymore. Jamie! The professor... He just died. He was over a hundred. The professor? What? This old man? Don't you remember? It's Professor Modner. Professor Petrovich Modner. What? This old man is Modner? He's been confined here for three years now, just to develop the Snatcher's artificial skin. Terrible. Doing that to your own father. Whose father? Jamie, I don't have any idea what you're talking about. You really can't remember, can you? Jamie, tell me. Tell me who I am. Uh, what were we doing at the Kremlin? Are you sure you really want me to, Gillian? It's all so awful, but if you must know, I'll tell you. Try to remain calm, okay? Fifty-six years ago, you and I were involved in a top-secret Soviet project. It was still during the time of the Cold War. The gulf between East and West was as wide as ever. Everybody was worried about nukes. At that point, the world's armies were at their largest ever. Leaders still believed that a strong military meant a strong nation. There were rumors that there would be an agreement to end the production of nuclear weapons. On the other hand, the major powers like the U.S. began to get involved in a space weapons race. But not the Soviets. The conservative despots in the Kremlin had another, completely different idea for gaining military superiority. A horrible plan, something no one else would think of. At that time, the countries of the communist bloc were facing an economic crisis. Popular movements pushing for democracy were springing up all over. Communism itself was facing extinction. Facing pressure from the reformers, the Kremlin began to panic. And that's when that horrible, childish plan was launched. And that was the Snatcher Project. Replace your enemy's leaders with puppets of your own. Then you control their governments, their economies, take over a country from the inside out. That's right, Gillian. And to develop these robots, they assembled some of the most brilliant scientific minds from around the world. Some of them were even brought in against their will. At the crux of that development effort was a group called the Frankenstein Project Team. You and I were members of that team, Gillian. It was a four-person team led by the late Professor Modner here. The robotics expert was Professor Modner himself. His son, Elijah Modner, handled genetics and microbiology. For nanobiology and picobiology, myself. And for behavioral science and psychology, you, Gillian. Early development was carried out at a lab in Novosibirsk, but was later moved to a secret facility under the Kremlin. At the time, the Glasnost and Perestroika movements were gaining momentum, and they rightly feared for the existence of the program if it should become known. But some of the reformers did learn of the project, and they conspired with the U.S. to block it. Gillian, you were a CIA special agent sent by the United States to infiltrate and sabotage the project. I was CIA? Yes, and the government knows that. That's why you were assigned to the Junker team. What? Who am I? Work on the project continued to go smoothly. But then, on June 6, 1996, there was that accident. A mysterious explosion at the Chernotin facility spread a bacterial weapon that was under development there into the atmosphere, destroying the country and the project. Gillian, was it you? Did you set off that explosion? What? You can't be serious. You think I caused the catastrophe? Somehow, during the confusion, Professor Modner and our son Harry managed to get picked up by American agents. But we couldn't get out in time. You and I and Elijah. In a shelter below the Kremlin, we entered a cryogenic sleep. Our plan was to sleep there until the toxic effects of the bacteria were safely passed. And then, 48 years later, three years ago, we were discovered by the 17th Special Investigative Force. Yes, but when they found us, Elijah's pod was already empty. 
Elijah Modner? That guy whose picture was in the church? The one that looks like random? That's right, Elijah is alive. Elijah is here and working on the Snatchers. Why don't you let me finish your little story? Who's there? It's been a while, hasn't it, Jamie? Ah, yes. And Gillian. It's me, Jamie. Elijah? Is that really you? Random? No. Not quite. So, you remember me, do you? I am Elijah Modnar, the only son of Professor Petrovich Modnar. I'm afraid I've grown somewhat old and feeble since we last met, however. Elijah, why are you doing this? Your father, Professor Modnar, he just... He passed away a few minutes ago. What? My father? My father is dead? Elijah, what... What happened to you? The Elijah I knew could never do anything like this. I've changed, Jamie. These 40 years have changed me. I can't believe it. What happened to you? What happened to me? Jamie, do I actually have to explain it to you? Jamie, it's you. Your beauty is the cause of all that has come to pass here. Fifty-seven years ago, I was obsessed. With my research, yes. And with you, Jamie. At the time, I was still young, having just graduated with my genetic engineering degree. My father's connections got me on the team, and there, I met you. You were working as my father's assistant. Your beauty, your smile, I was stricken. I saw something in you that I never felt with women of my own country. You warmed my cold, young heart, Jamie. You opened me up, and I couldn't stop my feelings. Elijah! Oh, I was so happy. The political situation was crumbling around us, but every day was a joy. I gained my father's trust, and with you there watching over me, I was able to work as hard as I ever have on the project. However, my happiness did not last for long. Gillian, it was you. You showed up and all was ruined. You arrived and joined our project team. Far from home, Jamie found comfort in a man from the same land. Your relationship grew quickly, and all I could do was stand by and watch. Jamie and Gillian fell in love, were joined, and even had a child. Harry. Even then, my feelings for you only grew stronger. Worried about me, my father tried to have me removed from the project, but I persisted. Jamie, I always wanted to be near you. And then, the democratic movements that had consumed the rest of the Eastern Bloc spread to our country as well. The Cold War was over. The hardliners who had pushed for its development were stripped of power and the project was cancelled. The reformers, trying to cover up the existence of such a crazed project, ordered that all materials related to it be destroyed and that we stand trial for our actions. Jamie and Gillian were to be returned to their homeland. That's about the time that I learned that you, Gillian, that you were a CIA agent and that you were trying to pass documents on our research to your military. The country had sold us out. I'm no politician. I couldn't care less about what happened to the country. All I cared about was my research and Jamie. And I was to lose all of that, everything. For someone so young, you cannot understand how great of a shock that was. Elijah. That is when I decided I swore I would see that secret crazed project through to the end. At 
the time the bioroids were 80% finished. The main part, their endostructure was essentially completed. But we still were having trouble with the artificial skin. The area that Jamie and I were assigned to. We called it artificial skin, but there was of course no need to duplicate T-lymphocytes, Langerhans cells, or endocrine cells. All we needed was keratinized cells and melanocytes to provide the pigment. With the artificial protein development techniques that we had in those days, full-scale synthetic cell development was very difficult. Research like this took months, years. The original project called for us to simultaneously snatch an entire country. In other words, a whole nation or an entire city had to be snatched over the course of one night. For that reason, a powerful biological agent which could quickly and effectively kill the population of the country was being simultaneously developed. Lucifer Alpha. That's right. A type RAO11 virus which another team was developing. For someone like myself, who was closely involved in the project, blowing up the lab was quite a simple task. My God, Elijah, do you know what you're saying? That explosion killed half the world's population. I moved all the materials and records essential to the Bioroid project into the shelter and executed my plan on June 6th. After sealing off the lab, I brought the two of you with me to the underground shelter and we entered a cryogenic sleep. But not before I programmed an atmospheric research satellite to transmit a wake signal when the danger from Lucifer Alpha had passed. And ten years later, Lucifer Alpha naturally mutated into a non-toxic form. But the automatic revival system failed to work. Oh no, no no, it worked. Just as planned, it revived me ten years later. A little sooner than the two of you, of course. But even though you sealed the lab with the explosion and everything, you should have been exposed. Why weren't you? Oh, I was. But by that time, the vaccine L Angels had already been developed. So everything went just as you planned it then? Yes, up until that point. But my real struggle was yet to come. My original plan was to revive Jamie as well, and for the two of us to finish the development of the Bioroids. You, Gillian, you were to stay asleep forever. But I just couldn't bring myself to do it. Not after looking at Jamie's peaceful face there in the pod. Besides, I could never have convinced her to work with me on the project anyway. I knew the time was not yet right. So I changed the timers of your pods to permanent on. How? How could you do such a thing? And so for the next 40 years, I worked alone in that cold and lonely room under the Kremlin, trying to complete the artificial skin for the Snatchers. For days and days, no one would visit me. I never saw the sun or felt the changing of the seasons. Still, I always had Jamie by my side. You were always there for me to talk to. Just you and I for 40 years in that dark cellar. Oh, you poor, poor man. And then, three years ago, my research was finally completed. First, I snatched the Siberian Special Investigative Forces to establish a transport route for the Snatchers. And then, to test the effect of large-scale snatch operations, I chose Neokobe City to be my experimental sample. Neokobe is cut off from the surrounding areas, a sort of miniature country in itself, making it a perfect test site. And since it's a melting pot of various races, it would also allow me to gather extensive data on snatcher modification and operational techniques. In addition, the element of suspicion or mistrust, which runs deep in Japanese culture, was another reason I chose this site. But your test revealed a critical flaw in your machine's artificial skin. Yes, quite unexpected, I'm afraid. All my research for 40 years. I gathered data and worked day and night to find a solution, but nothing seemed to work. So that's why you decided to bring Professor Modner here, right? That's correct. I discovered my father in one of the government's hospitals. 
He was old, but still very sound of mind. Naturally, he would not cooperate with me. Of course not. He'd never become involved in something like that. So, unable to receive his assistance, I decided that I had to have yours. But a mistake on my part allowed both you and Gillian to be taken into custody by the authorities first. Just what are you trying to accomplish, Elijah? You must know you can never get Jamie back. I'm only interested in discovering what I can of the human animal. In the past, it was because of Jamie. My motive is different now. It sounds like you're just suffering from the wild arrogance that corrupts so many scientists. Humans are such weak creatures. No matter how much they trust one another, the tiniest speck of suspicion can destroy it all. Look at how the Snatcher problem has caused such wild unrest. No matter how much science advances or how high we set our ideals, we eventually begin to suspect each other, to hate each other, and then to kill each other. The Snatchers are nothing more than a tool for bringing out this reaction. I am simply using the Snatchers to elicit the true nature of the human animal. I think this experiment has shown me the limits of human society. I sincerely doubt it will be able to reach any greater level of prosperity on its own. If human society ever hopes to reach greater heights, what is needed is an absolute leader, a firm ruler who isn't affected by these trivial episodes of mistrust. You're crazy if you think people would ever obey snatchers. Of course they wouldn't. But if they don't know, they cannot object. There has been a time in every age that the people have longed for a god to lead them. As long as they give the people no reason to suspect them, then they can easily become their gods, indeed, a new race of super-beings. We are almost there. Once we perfect the artificial skin, Snatchers will transcend man to become this planet's true human beings. But you'll never get your perfect skin now. Professor Modner is dead. I no longer have any use for my father. I have a sample of the new skin he developed. Once I've analyzed it, I'll be able to make as much as I need. Or if need be, we could simply culture the keratinized cells, epithelial cells, and melanocytes in the quantities that we need. What are you talking about? How could you get a sample of perfected artificial skin? Why don't you take a look at this? We found this in the rubble of Queen's Hospital. Oh god. Random! Random! Oh, an acquaintance of yours? He's... he's a snatcher? That term isn't exactly accurate. This bioroid was constructed by my father without my knowledge. He modeled it after me in my youth. He built it right here in this facility. And not only that, he programmed it to destroy Snatchers. This bioroid caused me serious difficulties. It's designed and built far better than my Snatchers. The machine itself thought it was human. My father input memories for it all the way back to childhood. Those two were apparently mine. Haven't you yet realized? Random Hajil is Elijah Modner spelled backwards. How like my father, silly old man. He did virtually overnight what I could not do in forty years of effort. Furthermore, he makes a bioroid so perfect, even the bioroid itself believes itself to be real. What's more, the cells of the skin he developed are self-replicating. Once in place, no further transplants or culturing is necessary. Is he dead? Its main and locomotive systems are completely shut down. It's just scrap now. But the artificial skin is being kept alive. This we need. With this, we can move to phase two of our plan of full-scale infiltration of the world's major nations. The summit's already over. You'll never succeed. 
What does the summit matter? Nothing holds us back now that we have this perfect skin. We can go anywhere we want, and there will be no way to tell us apart. I will have free control over the world. Nothing will be able to stop me. Politics and free thought will no longer have any meaning. My will alone will decide the course of human history. You egomaniac. Do you think you can snatch the entire population? There's a fully automated snatcher factory under the Kremlin. Even as we speak, scores of new snatchers are being born. But no matter how hard you try, you won't be able to snatch the people's heart and soul. What do you hope to gain from this anyway? Jamie, the human race is composed of fools. But I, I'm different. I will be its savior. Indeed, not just of mankind, but of all life on the planet. I'm afraid that won't be possible. Metal! In ten minutes, this church will be struck by a phased particle beam. I am guiding the beam from the attack satellite. Dear God, GPS metal! He's trapped! Everything in a two to three kilometer radius from me will be destroyed. Stop this foolishness now. I will not have my research destroyed by some souped up pocket calculator. Metal, what happened at the summit? The delegates, worried about the snatcher menace, voted unanimously to allow the use of nuclear weapons on the city. The military is presently imposing a quarantine on Neo Kobe. What? Do they intend to kill everybody? The populace is in a state of panic. However, they have agreed to lift the quarantine if this church is struck by the phase particle beam. This is our last chance. I will handle things here. Gillian, Jamie, you two must flee. You insignificant mass of metal. You will never... One move and I detonate. Gillian, run! Metal, this is crazy! We can't let a single snatcher get out of here. And this new artificial skin has to be destroyed as well. I will not allow some talking scrap pile to get away with this. If you were the aiming point for the beam, then I'll just have you thrown out of here. Grab this little one and take him out of here. You always were a real pain in the butt. Random! What's that? What? How did... You're supposed to be deactivated. I don't go down that easy, old man. Stop this foolish... <sighs> Shut up! Let's try to make our final moments peaceful, shall we? And you snatchers, you touch the little guy and the old man's head comes off. Random. I've always hated being used. Why don't you watch the final act with me? Gillian, you only have five minutes. The turbo cycle is just outside on standby. Use that to flee. Let me go. I'm Elijah Modner. I'm your original. I don't care if I'm an original or a copy or what. You and I are gonna die right here. If we both die, there won't be a copy anymore now, will there? The stupid logic of a simpleton. Of a machine. Whatever it is, it's my will! Machines have no will. Machines cannot sacrifice themselves. We'll see about that. You have four minutes! You must go! And don't forget to take care of the factory under the Kremlin! Stop! Gillian, even if these memories in my head are fiction... Yeah, I know what you mean. Our memories of our time together are all too real, Random. Gillian, you become one hell of a junker. Gillian, it has been most recreational being your partner. Oh, metal! Aww! Okay, Metal. Hurry! You only have three minutes! Thanks! Thanks!
chase you two. Jamie, come on. Pathetic old fool. You don't even know how to love someone. You stupid machine. What is that idiotic grin supposed to mean? By snatching you, I'm finally gonna get my real self back. Random. There's less than one minute to go. Thanks to you, everything will be fine. You don't owe me any thanks. Sorry to get you involved in such a big job. You did great. You're a hell of a junker. Three, two, one, here it comes! Later, kid! So you're really going, aren't you? This seems our responsibility, too. Besides, if I go to Moscow, I may get some of my memory back. And if that happens, I'll be able to love you even more than I do now. Wait for me. I want to be with you, but first I've got to destroy this terrible factory of theirs. Jamie, when I get back, let's try living together again. What do you say? We'll be waiting for you, too. Katrina! Me oh, hey! You're here, too? You better be happy, Buster, with all these beautiful women seeing you off. I'm happy you came. Uh, uh, let me introduce my, my wife. <laughs> Jamie Seed. I suppose it's a little odd introducing myself a second time, though. What do you mean? Uh, you've never met them before, have you? What are you talking about, Gillian? We're good friends. Huh? Uh, since when? It's the first time I've met her in person, but I've spoken with her on the video phone a lot of times. What? Have you guys been talking about me behind my back? <clears throat> Hold on one sec, guys. Second, where is my where did my stream labs disappear to? God damn it. Sorry guys. Hold on. Magitech Warrior, thank you for the 32 months. Uh, Warble, thank you for the sub. I think I thanked you earlier anyway. NRG71, thank you very much for the sub. Much appreciated. Oh, and I lost. What the hell is going on? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, trying to learn more about you is what got our relationship started. I was telling Mika about how lonely it was being all alone, uh, being home alone all the time, and she told me that Jamie was always worried about me. So I gave her a video phone call. Uh, with even Alice gone, I was really lonely. Who told her about Alice, man? Did she just walk in the door just to see her dog dead in the study. We really should have told her.
Katrina. Like, that would have traumatized her even more. We could have told her and, you know, prepared her for the bad news. Before I knew it, uh, we really became close, didn't we? They're both so easy to talk to. It's like I've got two real sisters now. I'm really sorry for all the worry I've caused you. This kid has had such a rough time. She, uh, she lost almost everything practically overnight. I just couldn't stand to leave such a cute kid all by herself. She's done a really great job. I owe, I, I owe her a lot of, I owe her a lot of thanks. I'm getting tired of all the reading. But we do have Metal Gear 1 and 2 coming up, so lots more reading to come. Uh, Jacked Up on Race, you keep complaining. Could, could someone ban Jacked Up? Was that a gifted sub? Was that a gifted sub? Yeah, give him a 24 hour ban. Thank you. wrap this conversation up. I don't be stupid, Gillian. You have a warped mind sometimes. Is he really complaining, though? Uh, yes. Repeatedly complaining. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. The Woody ad. Thank you for the three months. Cheers. While you're away, I hope it's okay for Jamie to come and live with me. Yeah, I have no problem with that at all. It'll shorten my commute as well, so I'll be killing two birds with one stone. Great, I'm so happy. so nice to have somebody else living in the house with me. What was that, Gillian? Would you stop that? I feel like you're undressing me with your eyes. I'm going to memorize every detail of Katrina's lovely face so that I don't forget it. Gillian! What are you doing, man? Gillian, would you stop that? I feel like you're undressing me with your eyes. That was the one. <laughs> don't worry, Mika. This is the one job I won't mess up. Uh, I think we must be... Must have gone through it all by now. So have they finalized what they're going to do about Junker operations? I suppose this will end up being our last mission, huh? Well, originally they were planning on disbanding the team, but now they've decided to keep us in business. So that means... That's right. We've been designated as one of the government's special police divisions. That puts us above the regular cops. So the government has decided that crime by machines poses a bigger threat than crime by humans from here on out, huh? They've chosen the new chief, too. So when you get back, you'll get to meet the new head honcho. Well, it's comforting to know I've got a place I can come back to. Have a safe trip, Colonel Seed. What? Me? A colonel? This I can deal with. For a military man like me, it's quite an honor. Oh! Whatever you do... Just come home safe, okay? When you get back from this job, you still have a dinner date to keep with me, you know. Don't worry. 
I won't forget my promises to either of you. Oops, oh, almost forgot. Of course, I'll want to spend some private moments with my wife, too. Huh? <laughs> uh, what what's wrong, fuck? Jamie? <laughs> Kojima, man, what the hell? This is some ridiculous fantasy, you, you know? Get home. What the fuck? That's Harry's hat. We can do it this time, Gillian. Not some fake couple like before, but with love and trust. I love and trust? Did you hear what he just said? I'll see you, Jamie. Wait! Wait for me! Take me with you, please! You? Oh! Metal? Yes, sir! We He's turned into a Sega CD! Quick. So this is just a temporary body. Just call me Metal Gear. Sega CD for now. So they found your memory chip in one piece, eh? Random protected it from the blast of the beam. Random, huh? Uh, 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 uh. Wait a second. I've heard that sneeze somewhere before. Really? I didn't hear anything. Anyway, I want to know if you'll take me with you. Please, Gillian, please take me with you. Hurry up and get on board, partner. Yes, sir, Gillian. Yeah, I love the voice acting as well, particularly Gillian's. Throughout history, suspicion has always bred conflict. The real conflict, though, resides in people's hearts. This conflict has just begun. I hope you enjoyed Snatcher, guys. Metal Gear 1, up next. <laughs> the fucking Sega CD at the end. That, that entire final sequence is so ridiculous. Feeling? Did I get enough sleep? I, I'm tired, but I'm still okay. I'm not too tired. I got a decent sleep. Yeah, cool game. Great soundtrack. Great soundtrack. I like the whimsical tone of it as well. Schlocky cheese. Whimsical silly banter between Gillian and Metal Gear. Has a cool atmosphere. The third act is pretty rough, I think. The whole reveal with Madnar. That's, that has to be one of Kojima's worst monologues. Maybe Skull Faces is still worse, but, uh, yeah. The ending is entertaining, as, as ridiculous as it is. sequence when your turbo cycle is being sabotaged and you can jump out. That's great. That might be the highlight of the game. 
probably the best sequence. Ivan Rodriguez. It's just drugs, man. I just wanted to win the competition, man. Was Rodriguez mis uh, misspelled Colson? I thought that's how it was spelled uh, during the during the credits. In the credits. Did we get another audio bug at the end? I think we probably did. Let's see. Okay. So I guess we'll switch back. Hold on. Uh, guys, when I'm switching back over to console here, I think... Streamlabs might shit itself, or, or OBS rather, might shit itself. So if the stream goes down, don't panic. It'll be back up in a minute, uh, if it does go down. But yeah, give me, give me a couple of minutes and I'll get Metal Gear set up. Be right back. This game originally released in 1988, by the way, not 94. This is just, that's just for the Sega CD version. Sega CD version came out way later. <laughs> 